Taking risks, yeah, I always go all in Swear to God that I'm deaf to the talking I can't hear it, see the finish line I know that I'm near it, yeah Cut the check and I'ma clear it Ain't nobody out here that I'm fearing Ay. Easy to see things all run away up Used to think it's hard, now I feel just like a layup I've been in the gym, yeah, I'm trying to get my weight up That's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, the way it goes, that's just 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 the way it goes, that's Walk in the room, I know I'ma be the flyest She like me, yeah, it's hard for her to hide it One on one, ain't nobody like this Got this far by doing me, I'm everything I knew I'd be I don't care what we used to be, no, yeah They try and get close to me, you can't get what you want from me I got this vision you can't see, no Easy to see things all on the way up Used to think it's hard, now I feel just like a layup I've been in the gym, yeah, I'm tryna get my weight up That's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes For your mind, we poppin'. One time for your mind, no maybes. Just yes, you'll release the stress. In the place to be, we rhyme. Getting down on the mic, no crime. Hip hop, everybody know it's time. Yeah, we're gonna rock like this. We're gonna rock like this. Yeah, we're gonna rock like this. We're gonna rock like this. Yeah, we're gonna rock like this. We're gonna rock like this. I just can't stop. No, no. Yeah, you got me. Not stop like this, gonna rock the money, not stop like this, gonna rock the money, not stop like this, gonna rock the money, not stop like this, yeah, we rock the money, not stop like this, like rock the money, not stop like this, gonna rock the money, not stop like this, gonna rock the money, not stop like this, yeah, we rock the money, not stop like this.
four six. We like ten and oh. I should probably tell them something that they didn't know. Back then we was down with nowhere to go. Might have been down, but we didn't fall. Now we running and running it like so many of us. What now? Tell me who you see when you look straight up like way who us now? What you gon' do when we pull up on you like ooh, touchdown? You already know what it is when I come through you. Ooh, shut down. Say ooh, shut down. Say ooh, what now? Tell me who you see when you look straight up like way who us now? What you gon' do when we pull up on you like ooh, touchdown? You already know. Okay. 
fly straight to Costa Rica. Yeah. It's, a, it's a whole lot of ice on me. Don't, don't stand too close, cause you don't if you say that you might know me.
like a champion. A champion. Ain't nothing that can't be done. Oh, yeah. I put it all on the line. Definition of divine. Yeah. I feel like a champion. Ain't nothing that can't be done. They told me I wouldn't be nothing. Came on down second and none. I need me a trophy, I need me a ring. I'm not with the bull, but keep it a beam. You know what it is, you know what I mean. Shit. All I do is win, 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 win. <laughs> Haters wanna hate, they ain't made top 10. <laughs> Double, triple team, what they need to defend. <laughs> I do left and I'm gone with the win. I'm gone with yeah, I feel like a champion. A champion, ain't nothing that can't be done. Oh, yeah. I put it all on the line, definition of divine. Yeah, I feel like a champion. A champion, ain't nothing that can't be done. Oh, yeah. I put it all on the line, definition of divine. Feel like a champ, MVP status. Yeah, the win being guaranteed. Snow, let's see about it. If you gon' speak about it, then be about it. If you don't bring that energy, no, I can't be around it. Nah, I'ma shoot my shot. I'ma stick it, watch. At the tippy top, I cannot take no loss. Two seconds on the clock, they gotta give me the rock. I got a game on what? Yeah, I got a game on lock. Yeah, I feel like a champion. Ch 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 a champion. There ain't nothing that can't be done. Oh, yeah. Put it all on the line, definition of divine. Yeah, I feel like a champion. A champion. Ain't nothing that can't be done. Oh, yeah. I put it all on the line, definition of divine. Yeah. I got big dreams, I'ma do big things Yeah, you see me on the big screen, looking so clean I don't move slow, I move fast right past Anybody taking life for granted, yeah, that's too bad I'd be grateful for everything that I have You only got this life, you don't get it back Make the most of it, become the best that I can Everybody look at me, I got a plan You gotta work hard, play hard, do it from the start Cause how you do anything is everything is hard Stay consistent and do it every day Don't let fatigue get in your way Cause 10% of something is better than nothing You better do something if you wanna be something I can feel my stomach rumbling, I'm hungry Big things coming, I ain't bluffing, yeah No, I don't wanna stay the same, yeah So I keep pushing through the pain, yeah That's the only way to make a change, yeah So I fight every day and train, yeah It'll all be worth it One day it'll all be worth it So I keep pushing through the pain, yeah That's the only way to make a change, yeah I've had enough I'm making my own luck Adrenaline, my drug I'm sick of feeling stuck I got this, I got this Will not quit to the top, I promise Cause I've had I'm on the climb to the crown in my prime right now Hear me loud, I've been spitting for a while now I'll buy myself independent DIY now Don't need no help, I've been beating out labels And money and budgets, it's funny I do all the work, yeah, keep it 100 I fight for my dreams, I would die for these things I believe in myself, I refuse to be weak I like to build things 
Empires out of buildings. I want to leave a legacy of helping others finally feel things. Of motivating and killing. Depression, exhaustion, we need some healing. I work through the pain. I like seeing gains. I keep my head down, buried, walk through the flames. Yeah, I do this every day, even when I feel drained. A true man pushes through. You don't hear complaints. No, I don't want to stay the same, yeah. So I keep pushing through the pain, yeah. That's the only way to make a change, yeah. So I fight every day and train, yeah. It'll all be worth it. One day it'll all be worth it. So I keep pushing through the pain, yeah. That's the only way to make a change, yeah. I've had enough. Feeling great now. A hater can't play with my day now. Get that negativity out of my face now. In my city, I'm the man of my state now. Yeah, I'm living life to the fullest. Baby girl, you're talking to the realest. Energy and joy, you can't steal it. Good vibes all around. Baby, tell me, can you feel it? I woke up, so I'm blessed. Just another chapter in the test. I know I'm doing better than the rest. Got a smile on my face, showing teeth for the crest. It's no sweat, I'm a vibe in my own right. Go time in the sun, yes, I'm gonna shine. So fine, got the Betty on my phone line. Feeling good, feeling great, chasing these good vibes. Feeling good, feeling great on my time. Won't let a hate apply my shine. I'm just living my life. Too busy chasing good vibes. Chasing good vibes. Chasing good vibes. Chasing good vibes. Too busy chasing good vibes. soul on that beat i'm ready to feast margaritas with some divas i'm pouring the drinks i'm living life to the fullest the blessings in me don't really care what you say whatever you think nah unequivocal miracles with the lyrical with the homies trying to pop like the cereal lucky charms got a model on my arm go watch on my wrist garlic parm no alarm fireworks i can feel it in the sky i got love in my eyes with this money on my mind i see passion and pride that despise all the lies i've been around the world so i'm down for the ride mm. good drinks good people and good times fast cars pretty women on face Time, more money, more fun in my life. I'm just chasing my shots with good vibes. Feeling good, feeling great on my time. Won't let a hit of blood my shine. I'm just living my life. Too busy chasing good vibes. Chasing good vibes. Chasing good vibes. Chasing good vibes. Too busy chasing good vibes. Friday night putting them plays in, but it feel like a special occasion. So let's go out, go blazing, hit the dance floor, let go frustrations. I might have a hidden agenda, but my intention's pure. I'll give you all that I got, and I hope that you don't need more. It's okay, just take my hand now. Damn me and sweat in your hair out. You got me creasing my sneakers. That's usually something I care about. Couldn't see the path, but it's clear now. You was in my dreams, but you here now. And I just want a little dance and a reason to change my plans. All I want is for you to dance with me. With your hands 
the ride cause I'm going up and there's something mixy going in my cup don't say much cause they know what's up huh. you know it get cold on the late night we getting all close like it's day night you looking so fly you can take flight now I got this feeling that I can't fight your courage got my urges flaring you got me by the collar and I'm not caring you see how the people can't stop staring I'm trying to make your mind and I'm not sharing okay let's bring it back a bit she said you can have whatever if you ask for it well, I just want to have a little dance and a reason to change my plans. All I want is for you to dance with me with your hands in the air where I can see. I don't know if we'll get another chance you'll see. So I hope that you'll just come dance with me. Mm-hmm.
Yeah, get on your feet and move to the beat. Move to the beat. Mm. Pour up some drinks and then we repeat. Then we repeat. Yeah. Chasing my purpose, need a release. Need a release. Yeah. My life's a beach, I'm lost in the breeze. Lost in the mm. breeze. Do this with ease, don't play with my dreams. dreams. Yeah. It's so together, it's not what it seems. seems. Part of a tiger, life of a king. king. Yeah. Chasing my bag, my feet in the cream. cream. Running these laps, not losing my steam. steam. I'm feeling good, this life's what I need. Mm. Don't intervene with my energy. Jeez. Yeah, I'm in her scope like Jimmy Iveen. Yeah, no Superman, but I'm feeling supreme. Mm. This not a movie, but I'm making a scene. Yeah, hey. I can tell you how to live your life, but, hey. but, hey. but hey. you just gotta get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Our life, we paying a price. price. Mm. Piece of the pie, I need me a slice. slice. Yeah. Rolling the dice, the scariest spice. spice. Mm. Sticky like rice, the tricky reprise. Price. Yeah. Love will suffice, I suffer in silence. Mm. All alone, I'm lost on the island. Lost. Let's spread peace and less of the violence. No. Sebastian Block, I'm God's playing violence. Yeah. The flowers violet, give me my rose. rose. This for my city, all for my bros. Rose. Did it alone, so far in my zone. zone. So raise your glass, let's all have a toast. toast. I can show you how to get like me, live your life to you, D-I-E. D-I-E. Yeah, look, I can tell you how to live your life, but, but, hey, but, hey, you, you just gotta, gotta get up now.
I know a place that will break you into a thousand pieces. Stay away from them. Stay away from Lorca, Paco, and Picasso. Don't ask about Lola. I, Caballo Grande. I, Lord Nieve. But, in spite of everything, it occurs to you to visit Andalusia. Don't say I didn't warn you. Be careful of the Andalusian crush. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin, former professional Counter-Strike player and Valorant coach. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle, you're going to be able to fight this. Red Bull gives you wings. I'm out here in the cold night. Run until I barely feel my feet. Wanna see it through my own eyes. There's no going back, and I'm not afraid anymore. Cause I know I'm gonna be the last one standing. Yeah, I'm not afraid anymore. Yeah, I don't wanna wait anymore. I'm ready to fall. Take me down. See that I'm surrounded by predators. It's critical they got me in my element. It's dirty how you're trying to keep it elegant. Keep my eyes open wide. When everyone around me is an enemy. See my life cross my eyes. Too bad you can't take me down
We've been blessed by some surprises and upsets already, and it's time to see what another day of VCTEMEA has in store for us. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Riot Games Arena. We're coming to you live from Germany, uh, Berlin, of course. I am your host, Yingsu, and I'm joined by Kakuka and Steel once again to close out this week. It's been pretty eventful. Yeah, there's been some things happening. We had some questions, we got some answers, but today we also have very important matches. Yeah, we saw a lot of, I guess, all the top teams just looking like they're vulnerable at the moment. Uh, one of them being Fnatic, obviously. They lost to Heretics last week, and they're going up first today. Yeah, 11-team region now, Josh. Not, not a minus one uh, <laughs> team region, as you said. Although this might help your case, because we saw uh, some oopsies, I would say, yesterday. Some funny stuff. Uh, you guys want to talk me through here? Yeah, there were a few oopsies. So I don't on, look at this on this round, again. this was just after. There was like 10 seconds remaining, and Yampi's in the two versus uh, one versus two. Is he able to collect the spike because Artis runs at him with his aftershock out, and then Shao mollies himself in heaven. <laughs> just, when he, he, gets yeah. he gets the kill. He gets the kill. In his favor, Mystic had some incredible ultimates. It's just the the, the movement. Also, that recon is very important from Angel. Uh, sometimes you need the information. <laughs> yeah, you might need the information off How the map. How about you playing on a different patch if there's a jet in. double up drafting? Uh, this this Molly, I don't know where it goes. I think it bounces off his head, lands yellow, so they're able to get out of the fuse in. Yeah. I'm some, not. I'm, is it, is it, are we the only people that think it's very weird to do paper like that? I, Did I, you open I think, your hand? I think you... that's a red flag. I think that's very, a saucy but paper. But the fact that they do it yeah. the same way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're twins, that's twins. why. Yeah. yeah, they're twins, but of course, uh, Eric was the one that came out on top again uh, yesterday. Uh, of course, in that rivalry, we're going to have another rival match coming up today. It is a French derby, of course, between Casey and Gentle. Mate, if we take a look at the uh, standings, this could change a a lot because uh, if I remember correctly, there's only a couple of teams left now, uh, Koi, Giants and Fnatic that are without a win. Yeah, exactly. So for Fnatic, this could be a very, very good moment. Uh, th I'd say to even out with Team Liquid, Team Liquid did play those two matches last week. Fnatic still has to go through that hurdle, and it will be very important because we know that the season is going to be pretty short before heading into playoffs. Yeah, Fnatic needs to start getting their wins here because obviously, like, being... Such for giants, a giant, yeah, <laughs> such, yeah. Oh god, such such giants from last year. They don't. No, that's giant X. Yes. Giant X. Yes. Yeah. I'm talking about Fnatic. Oh, X. you being, said such giants. Yeah, so I the, thought, Fnatic were yeah, the giants okay, okay. last year. Okay. No, giant were giants last year. Um, They're giant X this year. <laughs> stop. We're gonna make okay. Josh leave. We're gonna make Josh leave. It's okay. I'm he sorry. Keeps <laughs> okay. He keeps coming back. Apologize. You keep having me back. Saying we, yeah, yeah, exactly. You keep saying we are going we to in international. We yes. are the <laughs> Um, and I want to hear some of your uh, takes. I've really enjoyed them uh, this week. So we're going to put you to another round of Truth or Cope. Of course, for you uh, guys at home that don't know what this is, I'm going to give them a statement. And I want Kakuka and Steel to tell me if they think this statement is truth or I'm just full on coping here. We're going to get uh, right into it and start with Carmi Core. Your statement is Casey's honeymoon period is over. Truth. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say truth as well, but maybe for for different reasons. For me, the, the honeymoon is, uh, it comes with a curse, right? Because it has an end. But I think that for them, even kickoff was not an easy tournament. They had to go all the long way. They ended up winning the tournament, but for them it's about uh, the hard work. Yes, it is a team that we highlight and we talk about a lot because we've seen them a lot. But I think it's good that the honeymoon period is over so they can also remove that idea from their heads. Yeah, when you have a new team, there's always like this brief period, <laughs> brief period of time where they're just playing really well together. Everyone's meshing well and, you know, you, you get to elevate yourselves over a lot of d different hardships that way. And we saw that during kickoff, but now it's where the honeymoon's over. It's not necessarily saying that they're going to be bad now. It just means that they've lost that little edge that, that brings them more success during hardships. And now it's going to be all down to the hard work mm -hmm. and seeing what they actually have, like see what's under the engine. I mean, today's going to be a really uh, a crucial <laughs> game uh, for <laughs> them to be able to prove that. <laughs> Uh, but let's move on to our next one before these two just completely derail our show. Uh, the second <laughs> statement is, truth or cope, Turkish Valorant is the best Valorant. Wait, has... <laughs> yes, yes, Josh? Cope. What? He doesn't know anything about Valorant. If he knew anything, he'd be playing. You're, you're doing truth? 
Yeah, I'm doing truth. Let's yes. hear it then. Honestly, um, I like the explosivity and actually some of, it, especially how the attacking meta it is right now, it's it's all about going crazy and creating chaos and uh, Turkey is super good at that. I think, I I think while they were on top this week and last week, I think that the overall still there's a, a little bit of leeway because I feel like we could easily be sitting here next week in the same conversation where they're not performing as well because the inconsistencies in the style that they play. Hear me out. Would Alpha winning today change your mind? No, because he's uh, <laughs> he's under the UK leadership of Boaster. Yeah, but he's still Turkish. He's still Turkish. So? Ever heard of CNED, world champion? You're you know? still Canadian, even though you're here. Sorry. Huned? Wasn't sure if you were there at a champs at that time, but 1 he 0 won. undefeated against yeah, it. Yeah, What's your yeah. trophy? What's that? What's your trophy? It's uh, the first strike trophy. <laughs> it was a North American event. <laughs> North America on top, therefore, was the hardest <laughs> event. To be fair, that was actually a really good event. <laughs> like, I really enjoyed first strike uh, back then. Uh, and one more statement. Uh, you guys are home to play along as well. Fnatic are washed. Truth or cope? Cope. Okay, so I want to disagree, but I can't. I think it is cope. Um, I think it is cope. I'm not very, I don't really align with the term washed, but I think that for a fanatic, I think that um, especially with the year that they had in 2023, maybe washed is not the term. I think that they're struggling to adapt to newer times where the meta is changing and teams are approaching the game in a different way. They just need to find that way because I still think that they were on top for so long that they didn't find that opposition to actually improve and find new ways to interpret the game themselves. Yeah, when we use the word washed, I get a little triggered personally, <laughs> obviously. But what like what, what we're talking about right now is we're, we're talking about a, a team that has been great for a really long time that I think when we're looking at what's going on right now, it's not really about like the players individually being bad or anything or like the, the strats being bad or anything. I feel like it's just like the approach to how they're practicing or how they're um, deploying everything in the in the server or or bringing new things to the table. I, I feel like they got a little bit stale and now it's time for them to be like, oh, wow, we've been really messing up and now it's time for us to get into gear because this is bad. It's not good enough. Get out of the slump, basically. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. it's they, they got uh, complacent. Okay, I like the takes. I like the takes, you uh, guys. But before we jump a little bit deeper into Fnatic and Giants, I've got a treat for you guys at home. Earlier, I checked in with the two best buddies of Redgar and Chronicle. Take a look at this. You guys always ask for more Gambit content. I've got you. I've heard you. I'm now joined by Redgar from Giant Eggs and Chronicle from Fnatic. Of course, we're, uh, we're sitting under this very iconic uh, photo. I know Gambit uh, is no more, but you guys, you know, some of you still living in Berlin. I wanted to ask you, are you guys still friendly with each other? You still hang out? You still uh, talk to the boys? Yeah, but I don't remember when we last time, like, meet up everyone together. But sometimes we're meeting as a two or three people together, especially when we have a games, we have a time to speak with each other. I mean, nothing to say. He literally described everything. I mean, yeah. Is we, are, we, are, we are meeting each other like pretty often, I would say, uh, like uh, at least like before the games. And most of the time we also can just uh, meet each other up like in our apartments. There's some stuff like just to chill out and uh, do other stuff. So, oh, yeah. is he coming to your house or are you going to? Uh, I his mean, house? recently he was going to my house and probably he will come to my house, for example, tomorrow. <laughs> yes. I mean, oh. so yeah, like that's how it works. Honestly, all the fangirls and fanboys out there uh, absolutely would absolutely love that answer. Uh, now, of course, today you're going up against each other. Uh, you have faced each other already last year. So, talk me through in your mind what you think about this matchup, you know, what happened last time and what you think is going to happen today. I'll start with you, Igor. Mm, every time when I'm facing like the old teammates I want to beat them and especially when he already win me I think he won me two times right so I need to raise my numbers of winning him so I hope that today we're gonna show not only the good game but also we're gonna be satisfied how we played what can I say good luck to him then <laughs> I mean he did beat you you know in the finals here in EMEA look, last year look 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 <laughs> you know karma is still hearing you yeah I know that's why it was a fluke bro Oh, okay, okay, the trash talks. We're getting the trash talks on already. Uh, I do have to say, though, it does seem like both of you are going through kind of your own challenges, you know, your rosters. You're not getting the results you want. So how is everything going uh, right now? How are you guys kind of working towards getting those results? I'll start with you, uh, Chronicle. I mean, I don't know what to say again. I mean, yeah. All good. I mean, I actually didn't, really, I didn't understand the question. But oh, I mean, things aren't. It doesn't doesn't seem like things are going too well uh, for Fnatic right now. So how how are things going? I mean, things are 
doing, I mean, everything is pretty good, I think. We are doing pretty good on practice and uh, we are preparing very well. It just like depends how good we will, prepare, uh, we will perform on officials. And that's the only thing we need to focus on about. And uh, I mean, that's the time to prove that we are going in the right direction. And what about Giant X? Uh, as you see, like we have a new player in our roster, and right now we are still like on the way to have a good communication with each other to be on the same page because we're focusing on step by step. We can't like just bring everything together, and I think during the weeks it becomes better and better. So I hope that we show what we have on official games. Oh, you get the reps in, get the reps in. And uh, lastly, I know we're just you know a tiny bit of trash talk here, but uh, let's say one nice thing about each other. Just one nice thing about Chronicle Cron. One nice thing about Igor. You're a good friend. You're a good friend. <laughs> oh, uh, you're welcome, guys. I hope and good to... teammate. Oh, uh, we're going to bring you more uh, Gambit content. You guys uh, can have my prom promise. But for now, thank you very much, Eagle, for joining me. And thank you very much, Chronicle. Good luck today. Thank you. Thank you. I know they're playing against each other, but get, get the boys back together. You know what I'm saying? Get the Gambit any, boys back. Any chance that you get, Sue, any chance to bring them back. I completely support that. Hear me out. Uh, I think it's very important that what Chronicle is mentioning, that we've seen a lot of uh, teams also talk about how they're struggling during this year, where they have so little officials to translate what they do in scrims to what they do in those officials. Yeah, let's talk about what Red, what Red Girl was saying as well, uh, because uh, still, he said communication issues. They're trying to get uh, that fixed as well. Do you think we saw some of that on the server? Yeah, we definitely saw that. and like while we're pointing out kind of like Redgar's, uh, you know, individual performance here, like there's little things that are happening where I think the macro overall is good, but then like we're getting these little micro communication issues. Here's the flank, they're breaking the trip. There's no calls still like three, four, five seconds later, he still hasn't figured it out. And it's like, whose responsibility is this? Is this the Cypher's responsibility? Hey, my trip's broken. Is it his responsibility? He was in Smoke World. What's going on? Yeah, exactly. And it, it also like, how is the communication going? And maybe someone is speaking all the time and they don't even hear when someone says something. Yeah, let's move on to uh, the side of Fnatic as well, because Chronicle on Icebox, Kukuka, mm -hmm. definitely a little bit uh, worrying. Uncharacteristic. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The way that he was moving, we know that uh, he didn't used to be on this, <clears throat> sorry, on this Viper uh, here on Icebox, but we know that Chronicle is a magnificent player. He's understanding on the game, he's moving, and definitely, he's a sharpshooter. We did not see it uh, last week. The way that he was moving around the Malhan, he was being caught up in situations that were not favorable for him, and even losing these duels, we know that Heretics is coming in very, very strong, but this is not the crown that we've seen before. Yeah, I feel like part of that was that Heretics was playing really well, made him uncomfortable, and then started abusing how passive he was playing. It does sound like on both sides of what you're saying, it's fixable, right? It's easily fixable. You go back uh, to the VOD dungeon and see what went wrong. And the other interesting thing is, if we take a look at the comps teams have been running here in EMEA, we know Fnatic, they don't like to change anything. They historically don't. Uh, but, uh, but still, Giant X are also not really changing much. Yeah, I, f I feel like a lot of the teams have come into this season, this into this league, basically changing up a lot of things, that whether it be individual roles or agents. And here we're seeing like not many changes to the actual uh, agent pool that they're using on the, on their maps. They're not changing their comps. And, you know, these are the teams that are we're looking at right now. They're not doing great right now in the split. What's yeah. going on? Maybe we need to see more innovation. Obviously, these are also the teams that have not played as much, right? Because yeah. they b b barely, like Fnatic, ma barely made it into the kickoffs playoffs, uh, uh, and Giants were just in groups. But again, that comfort needs to translate into 2024. They need to adapt to the newer times, and they need to act quickly. Is that the win condition, Kukuka? Is it that easy? You being change something, you win. Uh, being surprised, but confident in it, I think that especially for today, between these two, definitely win condition. Yeah, it's going to be a big game indeed both of these teams they are in a dire need of a win and it's time to bring them out on stage it's Fnatic and Giant X it's been a while since we've seen Fnatic take home a win on this stage and there will be a lot of pressure on the shoulders of Alpha Yadurka, Chronicle, Leo and Boaster. It's going to be interesting to see if this slump is going to be, uh, if they're going to get out of this slump even today. But on the other side of this, Giant X, of course, are looking to get their new player, Purpo, a little bit more comfortable here. And we know Purpo is the kind of player that has the potential to turn 
giant X into a great team. But I am looking to the coaches. I am looking at Pipson and Elmer Putty. Elmer, he has to prove today what he's got. He has to come out and show that he is not the reason for this slump. And Kukuka, that is a lot of pressure. Yeah, exactly. And uh, not only thinking about Fnatic, for, for Giants, the team that won the LCQ, I think that this is so, so important because of what you're mentioning. Every single player, or, or most of them, has had such a good debut here when they first came into VCT. For Purple last week, that wasn't the case, right? And the situation is not the same. Most of the rosters were created before kickoff, and he was just the newer addition uh, to this entire region. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right about this, but w when it comes to you know, looking at either of these teams here, Fnatic just has so much resting on their shoulders because they are the team that are expected to just do well here. So they need to really just dig deep and, and figure out how how are they going to overcome oh, this. Yeah, I mean, the yeah. Lotus, it didn't work for them. The Icebox, it didn't work for them. The Ascent looked okay, but what do you make of uh, this map? Or? Um, uh, well, it makes sense. I think that last week they also banned the Lotus for Fnatic. We know that traditionally they just pick one map a year that they do not want to play, right? But in some case, that was also Breeze at the time. But probably they wanted to pick this map onto Giants because of what they saw last week and how week uh, was that double duelist the Yet and the Yoru, how Rekka on the Cypher was not finding what they wanted. But Giant X has decided to go for a map that both teams floated uh, last week. This was going to be the decider for both yeah. of them if they ever made it to that third and final map. I mean, we talk about uh, the, the fact that they don't like to change things, but Josh, on Vine, Fnatic, traditionally, they do try things. We saw them bring up triple smokes uh, at one point. So do you feel like maybe this might be good for them if they're willing to adapt? I feel like it's going to be one of those things that they can catch the other team by surprise, but when you're a better team, you just need to focus on kind of like your own, like w what your strengths are and not really focus uh, on your opponents. I feel like this is going to be interesting to see what Fnatic has in store for us. Obviously, they uh, went for the Breeze pick because Giant X played it last week, so th they're probably looking to do something like, hey, how can we play something that we've prepped the opponent on? And that's going to play favorable to Fnatic. I don't know about Bind if they're going in kind of blind about that. Th that's the thing, right? Last week, Breeze was a pick that Giants chose just to be the surprise. But what is going to happen on Bind since we haven't seen this rosters play? Ooh! Okay. They finally Whoa. bring the Gecko. The I'm Gecko. The gecko. They finally picked it. Oh my goodness. What do you think of this? And, and also, Giant X are doubling down on playing double duelist. They're going to combine the Yoru with the race, double controller, and just Cloud as the info gatherer and also Flasher for the team. But I love to see, and I'm very, very looking forward to seeing Leo on this Gecko. I'm interested to see what the, the pacing Fnatic chooses to do here because they have so much of utility for post plant situations with the Brim Molly, the Viper Mollies. So it's going to be interesting to see if they leverage the Wingman for those spike plants just to play those Mollies on, on the post plant. Yeah, of course, Chronicle had to move to the sky uh, mm. because Leo is playing the Gecko. Of course, they're one of, I think there's only three teams left that haven't shown the Gecko. So I'm very excited for this and very excited to get into game now. Over to you, Mitchman and Tombiz. For them, Giants have come in a little bit weak. They've stumbled, and this looks like it could be Fnatic's path to redemption back into the stage. How do you feel about this, Tom? I don't know. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited to see yeah, what yeah, we've yeah. got, because for a deep GX, I think that we kind of are now starting to put them a little bit lower down the board, and I think a lot of people still have the expectations that, okay, Fnatic, they're going to come back. They're going to Eventually, we're going to get the Fnatic we want to see. They've definitely been closer in some of their games, but last week, they kind of got blitzed out. But I think we're starting to see the, the stuff we wanted. A little bit more imagination, a little bit more creativity. Leo moving on to an agent that, as we've seen, uh, Gecko has been popular. So I'm, I'm hopeful for what they have coming into this matchup. And in terms of them starting off on Bind, well, historically, it was always a great map for Fnatic. Historically a great map, but now they're coming into it facing, I mean, if they lose this series, the, the biggest loss streak for the, the core, for the actually full team of Fnatic that we've ever seen. It would be a big accolade for Giants to take them down and also set them up well for the stage to come, prove that they're stepping in the right direction. This attack side, moving towards the A side, already caught Purple. Player is a little bit more quiet, but we expect to warm up on that stage. And although he's been dropped, it's for a trade. GX still have the advantage to work with. It's, it's only if they haven't accounted for Leo sneaking his way in the corner. And it looks like they haven't, but the shots are missed. Already, trades Last back, Boaster, off to a decent start here, but it is going to be the cleanup. 
Hoodie's able to find the last couple. GX will take themselves the pistol round and get off to the start on their map choice. Now, obviously, the, the thing going into this series is we've not really seen a lot from either of these squads. So, obviously, starting things out, you're going to be over on this map of mine. We've seen neither of them play it so far. And on the other side of things, going into Breeze, we haven't seen Fnatic on that nice, either just yet. Nice. So it's definitely a little bit of a, a peculiar sort of map pool from what we've nice. seen from them so far. Sorry, Damn, Milan, Milan is pumped up today. <laughs> he is pumped up. He went in a little too hard on that one. Poor, poor Pipson's going to have a little bit of recovery to go through. Oh, Bucky play from Durka. He used to be Bucky FC for a good reason. Damage done here, but Redgar, 33. He's barely hanging on to life. But that's enough. You know, that's the real danger for Fnatic in this round. Gone. That was a player who had bought up, who had invested the most. And now Five it's just down, Classics please. remaining with Chronicle and Alpha Yer to try and pick up the pieces. And there's not really much for them to capitalize on. Bar that player, Redgar, who was tagged up earlier. Oh. And he won't be found because he's on the other side of the map. And the Luthia flawless for GX. And a great response in round two. Yeah, I, I'm glad to see as well that, again, GX getting off to a, a slightly better start. I think we have expectations, at least, for people like Cloud. I, I think we know that he's always going to perform, but I'm looking at Purple because we now, as said, he was harshly sort of subbed in with that old mech roster where he got one map of Breeze, he got um, nice a map of Breeze game. also Let's that they go. played last week, was definitely a little bit rough. Like, he, he had a slow start to the game. He's someone I think that, again, if, if, if you have kept up with the streets and their talkings, you, you will know that Purpose is a good player. It's just we haven't really seen it as much. His second map wasn't so bad. Well, that's it. And that, that is also hopeful for the narrative that I come into uh, today with uh, and to GX in general that Purple's got a lot to adjust to playing on this stage with these players against this opposition. And as the time goes on, you expect to see him warm up, feel more comfortable. Kind of showed it with the second series the other day. An opportunity for him to get off to a good start, as it looks like a lot of Fnatic are going to be moving towards him. The gate crash put out towards the backside of A, so Purple has an escape route, but he's looking to take a fight first, and he'll oh. find it for free. Yeah, and the corner not checked. Uh, I am a little bit surprised that there's no clear on that whatsoever. Especially in a bonus round, this puts them off to a great start. Already having that man advantage, Fnatic just running through the utility, and that man advantage quickly diminishes. Trades back, though. Fatinho up above, not spotted either. Puts this back into a 2v3 scenario. Spike still yet to be planted, and the rest of GX has been able to group up. And Chronicle's all out of flashes too, so no aggressive plays. It's gonna be GX that go flying through and find all the kills. Only the one for Boaster, but quickly traded out. The numbers favoring GX and the flash damn near perfect from Cloud. That's three to zero. Not a good start in the bonus, a good finish, as they now have the lead by three. Fnatic are left with no credits. Yeah, some, something else to mention as well for GX, for this map in particular. One of the things I think that's been causing them mass problems when you look at last week was rolls. I don't think they have a Cypher player right now, or at least from what we've seen. Maybe there has been someone who just had a bad game. Hoodie nice. Cypher looked rough. Nice. Redguard Cypher looked yeah. really rough. Breeze was, now, this map, rough. they don't have that. Like, you've got Hoodie playing a Viper. He's happy to be there. Same with Redguard on the Omen. Like, these are all more comfortable picks. Even Fatinho being on that race, his yep. breach... For himself was okay. I don't think the supportive utility was well timed at least. So this definitely looked like a map where I can see how the roles are actually balancing a little bit more. For Fnatic, they've actually still invested a decent amount into this one, especially on Alpha yet. Over on that Viper. We'll see for him if that's gonna be a hit or a miss, because at least from my recollection, normally Viper has been Chronicle. It looks like in the early round here, Fnatic have sent Durka out to just spot the B push. He's playing with the Bucky, so obviously not looking to take a fight on those kind of ranges. But I imagine with that Bucky in play, he, he, you want to be blast backing in towards A on the back of the Viper wall. I wonder if this is just a little bit of a ruse being sold on B as we see the Tiger go out. Three players in position on GX towards the B site. And a fourth, we saw Fatinho thinking about going over. But all the while, yes, that was the plan. Straight in with the Bucky and straight down again. Redgar's not letting them away with that. And after a swift early punish, he's holding on to control with backup to support him. But they're oh. both taken down by Alfier. You gotta be careful of this guy. You've always got to be careful. In the map victories we saw at kickoff, I think one of them, it was him getting like 25 kills and just hard carrying on ascent. He definitely still has the ability as one of the most talented, definitely within EMEA, but in last year it was the world. For now though, 
You get back into the sweaty setups of Fnatic. That was always the terrifying prospect when it came to the map of Binders. They had post plants for days. You didn't want to allow them to plant, otherwise the round was basically over. And it is, it is the second that spike goes down. Fnatic are on the board. I don't know how well the people at home can hear that, but the crowd are definitely on Fnatic's side today. And you can see as well, they, they had more depth to that. If GX weren't running to the other side of the map to save these weapons, you had a Dizzy still to play with for after the Molly fades. There would have been just enough time to get that defuse through. But Dizzy comes in, big swing out of the rest of the team, and your round's already over. Alfier hyped up after that shutdown, and what a great play it was. They had the control, and as the players split to look at different angles, Alfier isolates each and every fight, even punishing Hoodie in the end. In fact, the only kills for Fnatic were nice. his. He's Let's claimed go, the first round. Oh, we've seen players starting to get compared elite yesterday. Claw through them. Having a fantastic matchup, but still a long way to go. Alfie, we know exactly what this guy can do. An instant push through the TP with the paranoia. It's very aggressive out of the side of GX. And again, it's Durka to take the brunt of it. It seems like he's been a little bit unlucky. I guess Bucky blast packs, you can't really call him unlucky. He was trying something terrifying. This round, though, it's a trade-up, but it's for Cloud. And I would say if, if there's a player I least want to lose on GX, on. it's Cloud. That's a fair assessment. Even just for those sky flashes on utility alone, but it's more so the man behind the keyboard that we're most worried about. Him down and out, GX will need a new hero, and the big problem for them is that they're stacked up towards this B site, looking for a crunch as they come towards Hookah, but instead, Fnatic have set their sights on A, and we've already seen what they can do with those post plans. Leo still has the Mosh online, a Molly for Bowser. There's no telling what of that alongside the snake bites. There's no telling what's going to be used on the way through. The Purpo's going to try and slow them down. He'll be late to the fight. Making his way around just now, spotting out one player and TPing. Yeah, it's, it's not yeah. the most value found, but it's cleared the way for Redgar's flank. Yeah, he had to go back. I don't think he was hoping there was a gap that he could potentially play in from behind. Left. Fnatic taking their time, though. Little bro will be the one to get the plant, and now we get into that dangerous aspect of it. A famous man once said, if you want to deny the post plant, you just got to push him. And we'll see if... GX are going to be able to do that. I think that's the important factor of having Redgar in this position to try to play the flank. That Molly's just been heard firing off. So Redgar knows there's a player here. There could be a kill for him, but they're not expecting Fnatic to play to on site. They thought this was again going to be a post plant play that they'd be far back sitting in main. Instead, the fight was taken on the site that's bought so much more time. And Redgar, even now, has not seen Boaster cross back. He has to be worried. Has he gone around the bath? No. There's the answer to his question. Boaster was still there, patiently waiting for his moment to strike three to two the gap down to one <laughs> you know it's funny when you think your opponents are playing a post plant so much that you try and block the molotov directly in front of them it's definitely not the worst idea but like, it kind of shows how the, no, almost legendary the rattiness of this fanatic bind has become already though Finding a resurgence, a, a fourth round victory that remaining. probably shouldn't have gone their way if you're looking off the weaponry and well, now at least, it's not going to be a whole lot to play with. Purpo does have a hero rifle. I'm not sure that was exactly how we saw that going. And already, again, you can just see these slow defaults, Mitch. Fnatic playing it very slow. It's not a bad idea as well, playing that early TP, even with the decoy. Uh, just running that through, so over on that A site. If Fnatic are stacked up outside it, there's a lot of teams, I'm not sure I'd say Fnatic are one of them, but there's a lot of teams that will hear that info and quicken their pace if it is an A take. Look more to, to, to pressure the weaknesses that are there, but especially when there's a Yoru on the other side, you've got to kind of expect those things. Yeah. There's always going to be TPs back with the gate crash or indeed the decoy thrown through. A thrash from Leo. This is going to get them a lot of space, and there's no gate crash to fall back on for Purpo. He's now stuck in the mud, but he's made it back to elbow. Yeah, it's sort of the gamble of players versus the gamble of this one rifle. And hey, the rifle started off strong. A couple of high impact kills, but you have to bear in mind the weaponry isn't there for the rest. It may not matter though. Two quick kills with the pistols. And now Leo, zero kills so far. 30 seconds left. But there's few others you'd want in a clutch. 
especially as he doesn't have to plant. This is going to give him an opportunity to take a little bit more space. And as well, the thrash in the back pocket. He retrieved it, so it's back online and ready to go for this fight. Some dream reality where he catches all three of them with it, but instead it's going to be the rifle that has to take these fights, oh, and he doesn't even win the first. Hoodie is too quick on the trigger. Eight HP left, but a fourth round secured for GX. Yeah, and, and it's both teams now having their... Having their go at low buy rounds, and a lot of that is just off Purpo's individual brilliance. We, we've said it before; we'll say it again. The potential this guy have is off the charts, and a couple of quick picks, which just enabled his teammates a road in. Because that's the thing: if he dies immediately, they are not there in time to go back in through those smokes to fight versus those fanatic players. Even still, though, a very good opportunity for a response. Orbital to strike, Viper's pit, showstopper, all online. And on the other side of things, you have a couple of ults that can get you information, but not quite there on the damage. Did Patino use a show? Very aggressive play. He did. It was used last round. It didn't find anything. Leo has found two, though, off rip. A very aggressive fight on A that has not worked out for GX. Only dropping Chronicle. The TP in from Redgar means the site is still secure, but Fnatic, like I said, the, the, the TP, whoops, the TP, often you're, you're not, you're going to see teams. Flank clear go in for that little quicker play on A, right? Baited by the fact there might be one less player. Well, now they knew there were two less players on A and Fnatic still don't spur forward. Instead, they're moving it back in the other direction and finding what will be, presumably, a wide open B side to play with. Yeah, it had to be a gamble. There, there was nothing more that GX could really do in this round. The initial aggression failed and Again, with Fnatic's passive hold, it, it, it leaves them in a bit of an awkward spot. That's always the thing with this double duelist. You, you lose a little aspect of information by not having a, an extra initiator as you do on the other side. And what you have to do with that, at least on the defense, is get that little bit more aggressive, take more space. And with Fnatic patiently waiting, it, it's, it's depressing to watch a round like this, but it almost has to be a save. Like it, it, Going back in, especially now they've used a Viper's Pit, it means one section of your retake is already gone, and you're already heading in with a man disadvantage anyway. So Fnatic have got away with basically using one ult, and that will be all. A very strong round. And for GX, you know, there's an argument they could send another player in, but what's the point just sending them to die at the end of the yeah. day? This position is much better. They can easily buy up in the next round. We may even see uh, the appearance of the defensive side operator. That could be a difference maker for Fnatic so far. They, you know, they've denied aggression. They've shown, showed in the slower rounds. They can have control over this as well, but they're still tailing. And the game is still for GX, and I think it's wise to take this breather, take this save while they're still ahead. Not let this map slip out of their control, because this is a win that they very much need early on the season. Funny to say that against possibly, or at one time, the best team in the world. Yeah, but, uh, it, it does feel weird. Like, it, it, it's the same for both teams. Like, true. we are now looking at a point where, it, especially dependent on the group, you're, you're only going to be playing, what, five or, or four or five games. It's not, not a whole lot that can really get you over the line if things go that little bit further wrong. So you're, you're kind of sat there with teams that are already zero and one. Going zero and two, it's not a death sentence, but it leaves you in a little bit of an awkward spot where you're going, okay, if you slip up versus, or if you even just lose to one of the better teams, like, I don't know, you've just brought it up, you've got like a Na'Vi, a foot, they look in form well, that's right it. now. And that's the worst part is the last two games for them will be Na'Vi and foot, so they need those, those early wins. Showstopper for Durka as they look to commit all the way to the backside, but it won't find anyone. In fact, they're pushing forward on the side of GX. It's a decoy on Yoru you see flying through to bat, but there is a player there. Redgar is being spotted and accounted for, and those Seekers only going to lock in more information for this attack side squad. They know there's a lot of players here, but the decision hasn't been made yet to go back. Durka falls. The numbers of Fnatic thin out further. Ults were used and found absolutely nothing. Still an orbital strike to work with and the tap to bait them in further. They're waiting for the flank to come through on Boaster, who's also set up with a double post plan setup. Yeah. Molly and orbital strike, but the orbital strike used aggressively to push them forward to allow Alpha to swing on in, and he's found a kill for free. Oh, that's the thing, the adaptive nature of Fnatic. Well, Leo may have got off to a quiet start, but we all know that doesn't last for long. A quick snap back, a swing around, we'll be able to clear out one more player, and this leaves Cloud alone. As said, we've, we've heard in the past that this man was on the Fnatic shortlist when building that super team. We know how good he could be. He can't give him anything, but the trade is immediate. Leo will double up. Fnatic will equalize that scoreline. And although the finances are starting to get a little bit shaky, I still assume we'll see a purchase in this round from GX. 
Well, there's some advantages to talk about for GX. If they can manage to find uh, the full buy here. If Hoodie grabs an orb, Viper's pit. That's going to make it much more advantageous to fight their way back in towards these sites again. I have an orbital strike already out of the round. Seeker's gone. And the showstopper on Fnatic, you know, they invested a lot into that previous round. And I think for Giants, they end up in a better position for it. That's a big oh. tag. Three players spotted if they saw those yeah. trails fly out. And I think that might deter Fnatic from going for any further long aggression. Yeah, but it is just the, the power of the Dizzy. It's, it's become such a high impact flash, not only because you can't dodge it, so combinations with other flashes are just absurd, but more so the information it can get you. Mm -hmm. You think about Sky, right? Blinded. Yeah. One, two, three, how many? Dizzy's gonna let you know. As long as you're paying attention. Scout destroyed. Which you'd, which you'd hope teams <laughs> that the tier one would, would be, but you, you would hope you, so. You never know, occasionally you see some weird stuff. Like a trip being broken and no one notices. <laughs> right now? <laughs> I know that was a hoodie. <laughs> oh, true, 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 true. <laughs> True, it was the other map. The, it was the Chaos the knife that went over the top. That also, no one knows, but let's ignore that fact. Well, we'll move on, we'll move on. That was last week. This is a new week. 35 seconds left. Fnatic, though, in a, a solid position to get into that after plant. I think the only major danger denial. is if we're going to see Fatinho and Purpo potentially swing this together. And he's going to have to swing out, and actually, that, that's kind of going to help them. It's forced him on the timing. Purpo's now there alongside him. Starting to get a little bit worrying. Chronicle's done well to trade things back into an even scenario. And okay, Jake, Boaster looking a little bit better. He'll find both. With 25 HP left between two players, Fnatic just won that round. That was a tight margin. And Purple was looking the wrong way on the initial fight with Boaster. If he turned to his left, I think that round's over in favor of GX. But the lead has gone to Fnatic. And, and actually, another thing I love from GX here was the Blast Pack being left oh. on the ground to gain that extra damage. The Snake Bite down as well. This stopped the plan from coming through. It put Fnatic on the back foot, and they barely managed to regain their balance. <laughs> uh, Boast are getting pumped up. Obviously, everybody um, lost their minds a little bit with his tier list. They went, 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 a, little bit, <laughs> they went, a, went a little bit crazy. But I think now he has a point to prove. And I, I think versus GX especially. I did, the thing is, it's sort of a harsh reality for Giant X. It, it's a scenario where everybody comes into this game expecting Fnatic to win. Uh, I, I think especially after last week's performance, even though against a, a tough opponent, I, I think many people have been rating KC very highly, but even still. And then it, it, I think if they beat Fnatic, that will be the moment where people start going, oh, well, Fnatic aren't that good then. So it's, it's, it's sort of a lose-lose. Obviously, the most important thing for them is the win, get the points on the board, like get themselves closer to making it to playoffs. But it's definitely now looking a little bit dangerous for them. Even though some of these rounds have been close, as you said, 25 HP between them. It could have gone either way. I think Chronicle getting two kills there was absurd. But it's now been five of the last six rounds going in Fnatic's favor. If this goes too much further, you're going to have to have a, a solid attack side for GX, which, you know, with the, with the Yoru comp, you kind of expect it to be better on that attack. But for sure, that doesn't mean it will be. Well, that's when each member of Fnatic will be tested. Looks like a test is upcoming as well. GX done this a couple times last round. Four stack here, three out on long. This time they play more passive, but they're going to be uh -oh. spotted. In comes Thrash to spot him up, but tag him up. Easy kill as Hoodie is caught, putting the Viper's pit up. Big old wasted. Cloud gets a kill, but he's tagged up for it and forced out in the open. A great mosh pit, and Leo's even the one to capitalize on the kill that he set up. GX didn't have a lot to work with here, and they, they've done some good damage, but that Viper's pit being removed. That's, that's the biggest blow to the defensive side. Now just two sheriffs remaining to attempt to clutch this out. Boaster, Leo, and Alpha still standing strong. Yeah, the cloak's corner held by Leo as well. I don't know if they'll check this. It won't even matter. Alpha has found the kill. And with the weaker weapons being left, expectations are fairly low. Let's see if Rekar can find anything. Nice shot into the first. Weapon retrieval seems difficult. He might be able to... I'm hoping Leo touched the ground. I think... He, I mean, I think he did. <laughs> I, I didn't think he did, but it kind of looked like he did it. <laughs> a, little, a little bit. A little bit. The more I I'm think gonna, about it, the less sure I am. I'm going to assume he did.
Maybe we'll catch it. Good, but maybe we will. And that's that the thing. Nasty. I think the utility on the way in was just disgusting from Fnatic. Like, every single angle was just put in an awkward spot for these remainer. Okay, he did. He did. He did touch the, he touched the box. I thought for a second he'd pull off some Leo magic, toes. but, you know, yeah, just about. Yeah, I, I feel so bad for Hoodie here. I, I think his reaction was perfect to hearing the thrash come pop in that ult, but the fact that Durka is so quickly able to blast his way behind him and, well, blast Hoodie out of the round, it's left him in a tough position. He saw how close those fights ended up being and how much closer would they have been. Well, we'll never know. Six Ooh. rounds on the board and after a pretty rough start, I think, GX were building up a lot of momentum. They were starting to farm rounds, put them in the bank. Now it's Fnatic who are thriving with the two round lead and two more to play for in the half. Let's see if GX can tie things up. This is the round they need to do it in as well, committing a lot of their credits to it. And you can see no longer these big stacks, these big gambles, it's, it's much more spread out from this defensive side. Obviously having a buy makes a difference, but yeah. uh, the round before we saw it as well. They've got a lot that they can play off information already. <laughs> Sending it through with the Tiger, but there was no cover. There was nothing, in fact. Carl just tries to walk back across, not expecting that space to be taken, even though it literally was in the previous round as well. Snakebite tried to slow them down, but there's counter utility and vulnerable. He has to peek a nice Five shot down, from Hoodie, at least. Has been able to take down Leo. He's bought some time for the rotation. The rest of his teammates barreling in towards the site, but they are all taking so much damage. Durka comes alive. He's got himself for Every member of Fnatic showing life. And well, over the last eight rounds, they've won seven. What's that jersey doing in here? <laughs> yeah, going on to the defensive side, a good sign for Fnatic as well. Like you say, everybody's showing up. Everyone's having their moment. I like that from Hoodie also. The fact that he waits to the very last second for that nade to be right up close, and then he swings. It catches them off guard. They're already thinking, oh, he, he would have moved out of position. Nope. There he is. Only gets him the one kill, though, and they're not able to follow up on it. GX struggling. They were in a 4-2 to two lead. We've seen bigger leads thrown. That's still have we? Yeah. Well, one of the teams had two. They did. They made it all the way back up to seven. And now, <laughs> looking for that eighth GX Ultimates, though, right? Coming into this last round, you have two showstoppers online, one on either side, and Purple with a Dimensional Drift. Could be an interesting one. Although, the Dimensional Drift hasn't really hit so far, but... It's just being used in situational they, circumstances. Yeah, they don't have a mass amount to combo. I guess the showstopper could be something, but normally you hope, mm. like, maybe you have a Sova. That, that's probably the, the best destroyed. sort of util that you can Here. put into place alongside it. Scout Even the brim on the orbital strike, that's more yeah. attack side kind of stuff, but it works a lot of the time. For now, though, just going to be used for information. Already clearing out towards long probably going to try and make it through the tp as well which actually will put a decent position through though already an immediate opener hoodie does manage to find one and actually cloud holding as well they're going to keep things in their favor for the moment purple Spike down. you don't want to run through a smoke versus this guy that's why i'm learning he'll hit the immediate headshot alpha can actually retrieve left. that spike he's going to dodge the showstopper as well so that's at least a piece of utility out of there it would have to be a pretty impressive clutch. Spike Plant will get him one away from his ult, Mitch. But other than that, doesn't have much to play with at all. Yeah, to get that ult online, he'll have to isolate a duel. And even look at the positions that GX are in. It's the same position. They're stacked yeah. up together. This is the right play. No matter what, they should be able to trade and at least get a, a trade after two kills. Alpha would have to go insanely clear on this. He's dodged the flash for a moment caught one and that's it unlucky even the flash going a little deeper than i expected they were ready to clear that come hell or high water and of course they had a paranoia to back them up as well so if they clear that out it was about to fire through the site yeah there was no way out seven to five two round gap not a bad recovery by gx i'd be thankful they had that good early start yeah i think it's one of those scenarios as well where it's rare that you're gonna have yourself like a flash and a paranoia. Like it's just so much utility that he was going to have to play up against. And in the end, nice. well, it just good ends job, up boys. being good a trade. Nice just grouping up. It was good. The thing good is, for, for GX, like, especially with the composition they have, as said, like running that Yoru raise, you kind of expect this to be built up more for the attack side. Five rounds going in, I don't think they'd be at too upset with it. It's the mana. It's the fact that they had some closer rounds, they had some opportunities that they could have done something. And in the end, it's okay. They, they basically get the early rounds and then don't do much else. Well, that's it. You know, momentum. 
It's definitely swung in the favor of Fnatic despite that last round slipping out of the grasp. This pistol round could inject those rounds right back towards GX. They were good the first time around. Right Alpha grabbing two before being bitten down. And Durka, he snuck his way through, but he's a little bit late to the party with Alpha down. You don't quite want to be emerging around that corner and end up giving the advantage away, especially with the damage done. It's pretty significant. Toxin's Cloud doesn't have a heal, so Fatinho is going to be staying on 47 HP. Still with Toxin's a nade, still with down. a flash and a poison orb to work around. The GX will need to find some space. And that means, again, like we saw in the last round, grouping up as three and looking to so move towards the site. They've just sent the Tiger through mid. So that's already for Fnatic enough information that now Durka is going to start pushing behind. Uh, the puzzle has been figured out by Fnatic. And because of that, when they go pushing into that site, there's going to be three different angles that they have to try and fight from. Fnatic have the right idea. Can they now execute it? And, and it seems like they're even starting to doubt themselves a little. Well, that molly through from Boser comes in with intention. GX know where one player is at least. 21 on Fatinho is being tagged left. further and dropped one eventually by Boser. And as they get just isolated in duels, nothing is found on GX. Eight rounds for Fnatic, a pistol picked up. And they can continue with that momentum. That, that was a perfect mid round from Fnatic. Like, that, that was them getting all the information they could ever need slowly like and methodically clearing out the rest of the map so that they narrow it down to one point even set it like the molotov was used just to delay a little bit more so that then durka can get into position as well and it's a shame because the early fight was fine from jack the fact they get to kill off alpha with that tiger as well but no it was in the end the reef from fanatic that takes things over the line and now unfortunately for gx they're just gonna have to play with the pistols with the classics for the most part Singular sharing for Hoodie. Well, they're playing for some map control, at least grabbing the orb towards A. But definitely very limited in their opportunities. Boaster's gone for the Marshal. Holding it up nice and close. Not getting flashed out by Gecko off rip. Anyone on GX, so there's, there's no information there. But now there is. That's something to work with. They won't be moving off this angle until the shot is fired and Boaster finds his mark, resets further back on the site. Now they have to emerge from a smoke. Flash to do it. Nade as well. Smoke's down. Okay. They've got site control and possibly a plant out of this. There's still a utility. And in particular, that nade that'll force them back for a moment. But look, the chaos they've caused. There's players on every angle, but... There's also players from Fnatic ready to greet them. Even there, looked like someone had a flank on Durka, but as Fatinho comes through the smoke, Leo's holding him. Clinical. Mm, and Andalucia flawless. A, a good way to start off this defensive side. And now we wait to see what the response is from GX. Buy onto the board. Few players with lighter shields, so it might give an opportunity to, or two. And actually, you kind of look at the buy coming out from Fnatic. It's, Rifles across the board, so they're, they're in a pretty damn good position to try and actually challenge for this round rather than the normal sort of bonus that you would see. It was hilarious. Alpha getting a snake bite kill from the B site. Yeah, that's nice good because Cloud was one HP. Yeah, yeah it was so low. <laughs> really nice little uh, lineup for him. It's worked out. They've done a good job of thinning the herd, but that was when GX didn't have a lot to work with. Now, look at the big guns, the rifles out. And at five rounds after a four to two lead, you know, this isn't a bad scoreline. If, you, if you're just tuning in now, you're thinking, oh, GX got a bit of fight in them, but it's been a while. It's been a while spot. since we've seen them string rounds together and put anything up on the board. But well, they won the first three. Yes. I think that's all you really need to yes. know. Yes. 3-0, 9-5. Yeah, it's not, not fantastic. But the good thing is now we get to see Purple on that attack, rifle yeah. in hand, full utility. This is where, at least you would hope, the damage is going to come through. Scout destroyed. Oh. Already looking like they're leaning towards that B side. Three players away. The flash is unbelievable. Only managing to get one kill off the back of it, though. But Leo is still fighting, brawling. A counter flash finally comes through, but it's too little, too late. He's just going to spam his utility. Go back to the gun! And he even gets the final kill with the flash to ace it! Leo back in the server of Fnatic. They are running away with this. What in the world was that? A mosh pit ace. That's a that's a first for me. Seeing a kill with it is rare enough. Well, we had some funny ones. The first flash 
that came out of Chronicle. Like, I, I think he blinded the entire team. Like, that, that couldn't have been better Four times boards. for them. And yeah, it's a good thing that Mosh didn't get the kill because he didn't have the bullet is to that, do it. Is that a one magazine, Ace? Did he reload? I don't think he did. I don't think he had time. No, I think, I think he just <laughs> took the whole team down with one magazine. That's crazy. Ten rounds on the board for Fnatic. Double digits, double the score. Leo's got his off, by the way, just, just in case you were wondering. Oh, does he? Yeah. I wonder how he got He must have been farming orbs, <laughs> yeah, was he? Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, they, they, maybe he in one of the rounds. Must have been, must have been. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh. that's not the start they wanted. The TP in from Purpo spotted by Chronicle just after he'd taken Patino out of the sky. And Alpha still popping off with two. These pistols won't find anything bar Chronicle's death and a little bit of damage, unless Redgar can really pop off with this Sheriff. I mean, a god-tier performance needed, and nothing found. 11-5 to five from a 3-0 lead. This has really gone downhill for Giants. Yeah, I, I think the, the further this is going, the more confident the plays you're seeing out of Fnatic. Like, uh, there's Lonic uh, Leo and Chronicle. I almost said Lonical. That's Lonical. their combination for anybody yeah, wondering. Yeah, ship it. Although I do quite like Cleo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the, the way they played the last round super aggressively, you can see the final kill for Durka, that's just him running it down to try and close things out. Like, it, it's only getting worse, and unfortunately for GX, they don't have much wiggle room at this stage. Building up to again try and take some control towards that B side, but just look at Fnatic again, pushing into the smoke. Not gonna play anything off it. Blinded. Maybe not getting the information that they desired, but. They will have information that there's some players outside that B site already. And Cloud got some info with the flash popping, but he has to clear left, has to clear right, check through Scout garden, destroyed. and somehow, what? somehow, all the while, Here. while the tiger's on the way to clear, Patino's lost his head. I don't, I don't quite know how that happened. Uh -oh. He seems to be in a safe position, but yeah, they're far enough away that that's not really a problem. The question is, does Fnatic want to re-aggress on that angle to claim the thrash back? With a 5v4, there's not really any need. And, well, you can see where Leo is. I don't think he's going to be picking it up. No, no not unless somebody else realizes where this push is coming from. Oh, oh. Poor little thrash. Goodbye. All lonely. Now with 40 seconds left, a player missing in the form of Fatinio. It leaves a lot of the pressure onto Purpo to try and take the space. Oh, they can't really do it either with the Mosh through. The Viper slowing them down as well. Fnatic on the rotate. Now four players in position. Boaster unspotted towards Matt. He's got a prime angle to frag out with two, but his team have fallen apart. Oh, somehow on another. He's only got a couple bullets left in reserve, but there's only a few seconds oh, left. The Molly a little bit late. The spike was picked up, and it will now be planted. At least the attempt will be there. Boaster. Reloaded, so he's got 12 bullets Boys to play with a few more expanded. And Hoodie might have repositioned on the other side, but Boaster was ready. Four kills for this man as he finally runs out of ammunition. And 12 rounds will be found. <laughs> ah, a little bit of an IGL flex there. That, that was, and especially that third kill was just disgusting. Oh no, Boaster! Boaster! Show some mercy, man! Hey, he, he twerks in the server and out of the server. It's, it's That's no, true. It's, it's, it's no different to real life. <laughs> 12 to 5. 5 in a row. Oh. 10 of the last 11 as well. Like, this has been ropes. One enemy remaining. That shot That's well. crazy. Disgusting. On to Cloud, of all people. Who's definitely having a bit of a quieter matchup for him. And, and at this point, if you're Giant X, I, I don't even know what you can say. Like, you've lost 5 in a row already. You haven't managed a single attack round. Sure, you're coming in with a lot of ultimates close, but you also have to win seven rounds in a row, which, while well, the most they've won in a row so far <laughs> is three. He's cold, baby. And you know the best part about this? This guy, I don't think he was in the best of moods after kickoff. You know, that's that's something that's got to, for the entire team, crush them. Not going to an inter international event, somewhere that they've resided. You know, I, I'm sure the graphics were already prepared. And they didn't make it. I think he's come in here with a point to prove 15 The stickers were prepared. The stickers were ready. <laughs> You're right. You're right. The stickers are ready. And he comes in to this game to bind up against GX, a map that GX picked. And he's 15 kills, five deaths, and eight assists. I mean, you've got so many players. Players like Leo. Leo's got an ace under his yeah. belt, for God's sake. And still We've had a trailing. lot of 4Ks as well. We've had a lot of 4Ks. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think pretty Robo's much. Most last round. Yeah, I, I think. 
pretty much everyone's had one at this stage. And and, and this is what we want to see from Fnatic. It, it's it's sad for GX that they have to be at the, the brunt of the other end, but we want our championship winning team back. And right now, Fnatic are looking like it. Those, those big rounds coming out from the individuals is exactly what we're used to seeing. For now, though, we're looking at GX. What can they do to try and make this one competitive? Absolutely nothing. They're, yeah, yeah, call it. Call it. <laughs> They've already lost two players within the first 20 seconds Stunt. of the round. Uh, it's not looking good. The aggressive push is coming out from Chronicle. They're just looking to put this one to bed. But Hoodie and Redgar are still fighting. Oh, yes, they are. Another found. That's Leo dropped. No ults left for Fnatic. There were a few to play with, but all those players have been dropped. The map control is gone, and GX are playing this wise. They're just pumping the brakes. They know some aggression has to come through. Someone has to try to clear something. You ain't going to solo hold each site. Eventually, they'll move together. 50 Boxes seconds on the clock, down. and the A site, the target. Viper's pit online. Yeah, it might even be worth using. Yeah, they might be able to use it just to get them into that after plant, fall back, As, especially with the amount of utility that's already been expended by Fnatic, although saying that, they do still have a couple of snake bites, which is one of the main problems they'd Last have from this position. Oh no! Oh no! They spot the Chronicle! And he just kills off both of that, even breaking a sweat. Fnatic come back to EMEA, week number two, and they have just slammed GX into the ground. A 13-5 decimation on a map that historically was great for them. It was 4-2 at one point, and it finishes 13-5. It is fair to say GX woke the beast of Fnatic Tom, and now we move on to Breeze, Fnatic's pick, and somewhere they'll look to put this series to bed quickly. We'll be going to that after the break. I know a place that will break you into a thousand pieces. Stay away from them. Stay away from Lorca, Paco, and Picasso. Don't ask about Lola. I, Caballo Grande. I, Lord Nieve. But in spite of everything, it occurs to you to visit Andalusia. Don't say I didn't warn you. Be careful of the Andalusian crush. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin, former professional Counter-Strike player and Valorant coach. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle, you're going to be able to fight this. Hey, 
You ain't real, it's like you got a few disguises. Walk in the room, I know I'ma be the flyest. She like me, yeah, it's hard for her to hide it. One on one, ain't nobody like this. Got this far by doing me, I'm everything I knew I'd be. I don't care what we used to be, no, yeah. They try and get close to me, you can't get what you want from me. I got this vision you can't see, no. Easy to see things all run away up. Used to think it's hard, now I feel just like a layup. I've been in the gym, yeah, I'm trying to get my weight up. That's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, the way it goes. That's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, the way it goes. That's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, the way it goes. That's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes. Week. Bang. Goodbye. Good job for the game, you know? Don't worry, bro. We started the same way last year and we came to champs. But it was because of Nacho got messed with slot, right? No, not really. Not really. I mean, we already played against Carnic Corp. They are a good team. Now it's Hanati. It's their good team as well, but it's not effective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, PJ. But you're not wrong. You know, they have a strong players. And for this, we need to think like a strong players, you know? I'm not yeah. talking only about the mentality. Atre has a good aim and a good haircut, so right now is your time. And for you, my little dirty. getting his boobs out. Hey, listen, bro. Your face here, yeah, bro. I'll clap your face back to Birmingham. <laughs> well, I don't know if it was uh, faces, but Leo definitely showed up today on the server. Fnatic, they're back to their winning ways. I'm joined here by Kakuka and uh, Steel once again. We got to see something a little bit different and uh, Steel, it looked like it worked. Yeah, it looked great for Fnatic. They had so many good things going for them. It looked like they really understood not only bind, but their com compositions win conditions. So everything was perfectly planned out for them to approach the map a certain way and approach the rounds a certain way. And it, it looked flawless. Yeah, exactly. And we're talking about a, a map that actually started with Giants getting onto that pistol and also the bonus, right? And, and probably Fnatic not understanding uh, how to play exactly against the Euro. And maybe Leo not using his utility right for literally one round. Yeah, I mean, Kakuga, there was one round that we wanted yeah. to particularly uh, bring up. I think it encapsulated what you're both saying right now. Yeah, exactly. I think that Leo's utility during this game has been the most... Uh, 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 I don't even have an adjective for it. The most... Uh, uh, um, how do I say, conditioning for any uh, gecko that I've seen so far. Every single piece of it. He got aggressive with the moss pit. Uh, the flashes were always on point, never countered by giants. They never had a response for anything that Leo was doing. And this was the first time that he was on the gecko. 
yeah, I really liked what they did here with the, the combinations, the synergies between the, the agents. With the Sky Flash, you have to turn away from that, otherwise you get blind. And you look at the Dizzy, you get blinded by it. And they, it wasn't just like once or twice. We saw it consistently throughout the game. So you need to have good communication. Let's say, hey, we're ready to flash now. Three, two, one, go. And then doing it together and then capitalizing on that space by peeking together. And I think Fnatic was just firing on all cylinders to make that work. Last year, uh, every single time that we talked about Leo was, oh my god, he's so good at not getting killed yeah. first. You know, brilliant utility when he's playing on the Sova. This Leo, the 2024 Leo, if this is what we're going to get, this is what Fnatic needs. A player that knows how good he is and can bring the value that is needed to the team. Yeah, the fact that Kron hasn't played Sky for three years and then they look yeah. flawless on doing this. Uh, but also, I want to quickly talk about Boaster. Here he is in the AIM Labs warm up because it looks like Kukuka, he's been hit in the AIM Labs. Yeah, exactly. I think that especially from the beginning, he is the one that didn't need a warm-up uh, to, to get into the game. He knew where he had to be. He was hitting the shots. And when we talk about Fnatic and the brilliant players that, that they have, even Boaster getting 4Ks, it sounds very scary for the rest of the team. I think it's a lot easier for in-game leaders to also be able to perform well when everything else is falling into place. Mm -hmm. So when all your teammates are make, making correct decisions, when uh, everyone's playing super well, you got all the synergies, like the strats are working out, it makes the everything else kind of fall into play and you can focus way more on your own game and just getting the kills that you need to get. Well, let's talk about Breeze very quick because we are going to see Agent Select and my god, Durka is finally! Brought out his Yoru uh, first time here. It's been a long time oh teasing God, about it. Literally, within months after this, and we're finally going to see Durka on the Yoru here on Breeze. I think that, uh, you know, besides that, because I think that we also gave him the spotlight at the time, let's look a little bit more about Giants and how can they can swap things around. Because they were having the initiative with their on, uh, on Bind. That, this is something that they will need to do also. Uh, for uh, Starting from the defense here on Breeze, they need to start to chain round after round, or this is going to be a quick 2-0. Yeah, I think for the, the, the side of Giant, it's just so many weird decisions on an individual level when it came to re-peaking, when it came to ability usage. Like we saw Hoodie using a Viper ulti when he's getting uh, executed on by Thrash. So we need to see them on this map make way better decisions. And it's not just the individual decisions, but it's also the coordination, the timings, making sure that they're not going at different, like weird timings. They need yeah, it, it's just, they'll get abused by Fnatic if they do that. Hey, but dropping the Vandal to purple, you know, it's worked <laughs> uh, so far. Let's see how things are going to go here. Uh, Mitch and Tom, a new Fnatic, first time Gecko and first time Yoru. Well, this one could be interesting. A Durka on a Yoru? You've got me excited already, Tom. Well, he's, say no more. he's been getting people excited because he's tweeted about 750 different things <laughs> telling us that he's going to be playing this agent and then didn't play it up until this point. So I feel like up until this point, he was just hard trolling. So I'm, I'm excited to see it. I, I think that GX have obviously been comfortable to play this map. Like going into it last week, it went horrifically, but so did a lot of things. I'm, I'm mainly looking at Vitinho here because Purple had a bad map. I know he's a good jet. I want to see if Fatinho is a good Yoru, because it's not something that's really been in his wheelhouse before. I'm excited on both sides. Here. GX, though, the ones coming in with a bit more pressure. We spoke about it starting off the day that Fnatic facing down against their biggest loss streak with their full roster that they would have ever received if they took a loss here. But. After a 4-2 to two deficit, they dominated the previous map, 13-5. to five. Now we come into Breeze, and I'm expecting that Fnatic ball to keep on rolling, but let's see if GX can put a stop to it. No gate crash online for Fatinho. I don't think he's got a way Ooh. out, but he doesn't need one Spike if he's popping off mid. like that. Two quick kills. And remember, there's an extra element to this strategy with Purpo being there waiting in mid, and Hoodie waiting in tube. Has caught Boaster despite being caught off guard. Not a bad start for the old defensive side. Revealing area. Definitely not a bad position to be in. All right, guys, got to be careful walking out. Alpha's managed to find one, but it is just going to be the quick trades in the end. GX will take themselves another pistol round, similarly to that I last map, getting off to a solid start. It's, it's definitely always forward. a little bit more difficult, though. Like this defensive side, Yoru, uh, especially in a double duelist with a jet, you're going to have to have a lot of sort of creative ideas. So again, I, I want to see what they've got. The start at least was good. Like having these aggressive positions, Vitinho looking on point, and then just being able to trade out a lot of these fights in mid. Follow-up shouldn't. 
really pose any danger. Time to jump. Outlaw in play, Bulldogs yeah. and a Spectre. Cloud on the pistol and range is the main thing about this map. You can be taking those fights from very far away. GX decided to go aggressive at the start, pick up an opening, and now it's time to just sit back. One would think, one would hope. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of expectations in this round for the side of Fnatic. Uh, saying that, um, Alfie has just managed to get two with the share. Uh, yeah, that's not that how I was expecting move. that fight to go. And now he's looking to continue that push. Already you can see the potential TP back to spawn if it's needed for Fatinio. As they do now look to group up back towards A main. Now he'll still have the weaponry advantage. They haven't been able to retrieve anything. And his push is actually going to find out for you. Maybe the danger man or one of them at least gone. But this does, however, leave the B site completely open. So it's more so the time it takes for GX to maybe get someone into position here. Although the info can be grabbed by Redgar. Well, it'll be grabbed a little late. They're already on the site thanks to the TP. Tag did land. But Dirk is straight back out of there. Now the post plan, this is going to present a couple opportunities for Fnatic. Especially with the snake bite lineups we're seeing set up by Boaster. One already fired up and over the top. The first players just cause a distraction. The orb goes up and once the snake bite lands, they have to give up that diffuse. So time will be run down that little bit further. Orb goes down, the other snake bites on the way. They're going to wait it out, though. Yeah, that's the thing. It's buying time, but I don't know if it's buying enough. Especially with just the, the classic available. There wasn't really much opportunity to do any further damage in this round. Three players will survive at least for the side of GX. But again, already seeing a, a little bit of bite from Fnatic in a round that they really didn't have much at all. Yeah, I think the real benefit is that both these kills that go down are in fairly irretrievable positions. It would have slowed the round down a lot to go and get them and had a lot of risks with it. So these players are just coming in with pistols. The best hope was to use that utility to force a mistake. But GX stands strong, no mistakes made. And now they've got that 2-0 start. Again, though, Vine started out incredibly well. So we can see how important these early rounds are for GX to build up. Only Alpha currently on the board in that fragging department. But yeah, th this purchase definitely isn't the best for GX. A lot of the time you're going to hope to have maybe a, a couple of rifles here. The push already coming down though. Fatinho is just going to get owned. But Alpha just seems to be the king in this position. Back to back rounds. He's managed to find a double opener for the team. Uh, and if that's a running theme, we could be seeing problems already as he just continues his run of form. They've lost the first two rounds, he still managed to get himself, well, up until that point, the only kills Fnatic had, yeah. and he had Spike six planted. of them. He's not going back, I see. What he is. He? 10 HP, this man's still peaking. They're on the verge of an Andalusia flawless. He doesn't give a damn. Hey, he's had four kills in Tube in, in two, rounds. two rounds, so, you know. And only one of them where he had a rifle. So, yeah, I, I suppose. Take it, King. Durka, though, being dropped. Potential weapon to be retrieved. No cage, God. You'd love to have a cage here and grab that rifle. <laughs> I'm not wild. sure what that. I'm not sure what that was gonna do. I'm sure what it did. Absolutely nothing. Boaster's gonna go looking for the rifle himself. Little upgrade on the guardian player up top. Red guard. The name of the game is damage. And he's got an opportunity with one down below. There's the weapon drop. He knows that player's there. The swing's coming through, and the kill is found. Oh, and he can get rifle the gun. retrieved. That's a win for Redgar. Yeah, no, a big win to end out the round. Being able to kill off a player and then upgrade into the rifle he wanted initially. I'm a little bit surprised that Fnatic don't go to push that one together, but this was the star that basically ended the round. He's taken that fight on one HP because of the decay as well. So a single bullet connected onto Alphia. And while definitely looking like a bit of a, a top-heavy scoreboard right now for the side of Fnatic. I don't think they'll mind it too much, though. For the side of GX, a little bit of damage, and they'll be able to purchase back up to this one. Cage triggered. They're already going to go pushing for that A main control once again. Yeah, pushing a little further is the decoy, but you can see Alpha was ready for that. He's not giving it away. Uh. And then swinging in to try and get the element of surprise, but Fatinho's ready, even for that angle on the right-hand side. Good adjustment by him. And after the kill, the aggression comes in. Purpo and Redgar now claiming that space and seeing that it's wide open. The rotates can begin. These players Careful. will need to be quick getting into this B site unless a retake attempt is going to be made. They're already one player down on the Fnatic side.
But Hoodie is all alone on B. That won't be the case for much longer. Especially with that TP in. The B side has company. Mostly from Fnatic. Oh, you're oh, you're up. Dead. He's absolutely screwed. The utility has worked out nicely. Both are taking a bit of damage, and they've already got the information from Vitinho of where planted. Chronicle is. Hasn't really spotted much else. Just gonna have to TP out of there. They're watching for that flank as well. Purpo, I think he's hit the timing spot on. Just as they look away, he's gonna start rounding that corner. What a fantastic read so far, but Fnatic and up with big kills. Vitinho on his third seems to have locked this one in. The result of foregone conclusion, surely with Boaster's spot, he can't do anything to deny this defuse, and they know it, sticking it all the way, and Jake's best hope is to get out of here with the rifle in hand. It looks like he'll succeed, but the round will swing towards the defenders. Yeah, no, a good round, especially from Vitinho. I think Purple also locking them in helped out with how they were able to aggress and just being able to pick them apart. Also, the Cypher utility uh, in combination with Cloud's dart just meant that Doug had absolutely nowhere to go. Still, Chronicle made it look interesting for a second. Nice, but insane, GX guys, insane. Already off to a better start than what we've seen from them on this particular map. Who's next? Oh, we're off rip with the ult from Dirk. It looks like a quick play towards the B site. Trying to spot out that Cypher. There he is, running for the hills. Redgar's over towards the spawn. Those traps already dealt with on the way through. And Dirk is out for free, so a lot of space taken. And again, you can look at that ult and say it didn't do anything. Didn't kill anyone. It didn't even cause that much of a problem, but it did. It forced them back towards the spawn. It allowed the site control, and now Chronicle's ultimate stops that retake utility from coming through. But the recon was already in. They know that he's here. Not that the ult doesn't give that away. I don't know how he's going to get out, but he's taking them down with him. Two already before he eventually falls, but he's done his job. Yeah, he's made it. Enough time, enough damage, that now you see that wraparound coming in from Alpha. They've got to clear him, and Cloud will do just that. Hoodie's found another one. I saw this at the beginning oh, of the round. Boaster is trying to spam through this with an Ares. He's doing little tickles of damage, but they're just going to defuse in front of him. They're just sticking it all the way. I think he might have cooked a little bit too far with that one. <laughs> the penetration is nowhere near enough. Go ahead, Tom. Ask me what I think of the Ares. <laughs> what do you think of the Ares, <laughs> It's a pretty trash weapon, Tom, to be honest. <laughs> it's it's kind of dirt. I think you'd be better off spamming that with an outlaw. At least you could swing uh. afterwards. What a dirt weapon. And unfortunately, yeah! Boser nice. pays the price for believing in it. That is a round for GX and a 4-1 to one scoreline in a fashion that I can't say I was expecting. You know, we, we talk a lot about Fnatic's post-plan setups. That one might might stay in the books. Yeah. Yeah, I like history books. The funny thing is, is with with a guardian, I think that works better as well. <laughs> like just, I, I like the Tom idea. with a goddamn sheriff, it works better. I'm gonna be honest with you. The idea, I reckon, when he pulls in an Odin, that's gonna be filthy. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it definitely hasn't worked. Fnatic gonna take themselves an early pause. It is GX off to a hot start, and again, like we've seen those explosive plays. Chronicle manages to pop off with a double there. You had the the flank coming in from Alpha, although it gets caught with the cage out. And then the round just kind of falls apart. Like, it, it, they were unable to hold on to a lot of these positions. And the post plan, GX did very well to be able to isolate those jewels and play off of each other. Now, though, oh, Fnatic are coming in with not the best of buys. It's again been a bit of a slower start for them. But this is pretty much the exact point where we saw them come alive in the last map. Decoy. Oh, more GX are going to want to try and make sure that, that doesn't happen again. Time to jump. Looks like mid play from Fnatic, even with the weaker weapons. Assume some ideas to section off this map control, but no, just, just swinging into the open. Durka is leading the mid take with a Sheriff, clearly reading that GX don't have a lot of control around this area. After the pistol round where they played pretty aggressive, they feel this space is free. They test it on the low by round and well, it looks like they're dead right, but the setup is on B. Cam watching for the way through. Redgar very patient, but he hasn't noticed the gate crash come right up beside him. In fact, I'm, I'm now a little bit worried because as he comes out of that cam, you're going to have players swinging through, getting close. Cloud's already got his double, and there's the triple. Okay, there, there will be no space taken for the side of Fnatic. Nothing to fall back on. There's Alpha here. 
I say that, I mean, he is in their spawn. He might get one. Where well, they're not expecting it. But in fact, they turn at just the right <laughs> moment. And Cloud picks up his fourth. Very, very clean indeed. Yeah, good round from him. Alts now building up as well for that defensive side. They are setting themselves up in the right position to put in a, a mammoth half. And they're still waiting to see what response is going to be there from the side of Fnatic. Of course, this is their map choice. This is the map that they've come into. We've heard a lot about this Yoru from Durkra, and I'll be honest, not seen anything thus far. I think it was one kill in the round where Alpha had already won it for them with three. Yeah, come on. And they, they have the rifles on the board. They don't really have too much in terms of ultimates. And Purpo looking to go walkabouts in this early round, but he's definitely got some support. I, I like this. It's like the double up. Yeah, it's, it's the pistol round setup again. Then not only do you have one player pushed close, not only do you have Purpo supporting, but you also have Redgar ready to fight on the back of that. It's a very nice setup, but one that they've gone a little bit too aggressively pushing into. Purpo's about to lose his dash, oh! but he's not losing the fight! It's another for Purpo! And he's sticking around! Cloudburst eventually used to cover his retreat, but look at the setup again. Redgar coming down to double up on this angle, and Hoodie is ready to drop. In fact, they do. They pincer the mid play, grab the info with the hat off the head, and they almost lose their life for it, but Redgar reacts just in time. Oh, that's nice, And it's left on to Chronicle, but Purpo is not missing a beat. We are seeing big play after big play from the side of GX. Such a, an aggressive stance this defensive side in Purpo. Those are the exact sort of plays we're excited to see from this guy. Six and one. I think, I don't know if we'll get the, the cam reaction from Durka, but he was definitely looking a little nice. bit confused after nice. the connection of the shots was not quite there. <laughs> Very different reaction. It's like Purpo <laughs> looks relieved of it. He's just like, yeah. hey! <laughs> He's living his life, man. Yeah, I love the adjustment, the conditioning of GX. Noticing yeah. that in the last round, Fnatic had gone for that mid control, so they stack up. They play the, yeah. the closer angles. They even lose the opening fights, but they still come out on top. This time, a different taste to it, as Durka is once again dropped in the early round leaving GX with the advantage. And they already had an advantage, a pretty significant advantage coming in. Ultimates in their back pocket, but beyond that, they've got rifles in their hands. And that's not something that the majority of the Fnatic players can say with two pistols still in play and one player down. That said, in Alpha's hands in two, that Sheriff's just as good. Him and Chronicle have been the players that have looked like, well, they, they still play for Fnatic. I, I guess that's the way I'll word it is, They've had moments that shine within this map, but hasn't really been enough. Now, Alpha's done incredibly well here. They have no idea where he is, but unfortunately, he didn't know there was already three players around that angle. Hoodie under pressure. But the timing oh, almost catches Jake without a gun in hand. It won't actually matter too much. Everybody will fall within a matter of seconds. 7-1. Giant X look phenomenal on this defensive side. As they are cleaning this up. I mean, it's... We might not have seen Andalusia pop up, but it's been pretty flawless from this GX side so far. Four ultimates in the tank. Fnatic have Viper's Pit and Hunter's Fury, but they need a lot more than just that to get a round win on the board. So far, this team has been quiet. Boaster dominated Here. the last map. I mean, he, he was on fire on levels I'd never seen him, but they've doused him with water. Leo and Durka as well. All just sat there on the one kill. Eight rounds in. Yeah. Almost unfathomable considering what we saw just 30 minutes ago. Yeah, looking like a different beast. Yeah. Uh, both teams having problems on their own map choice. Again, this one-two punch up close. But they've already managed to find the openers on the other side. Viper's pit going to be put into play. That's actually where the majority of players are. But with kills coming in, in mid, Alpha's now starting to push. They're going to leave Hoodie actually somewhat alone and tagged up. But they now have the information that Alpha's there. The thing is, the full team are now rotating. The A site's going to end up completely clear, but it just depends which way Fnatic decide to go. And I, I don't blame them for walking towards Alpha. He, he's basically cleared the site, or at least he thinks he has. He should swing for info, though, before they're out. I, I, at least I thought he might. 
Instead, it's going to be just a swing in from Main right into the heavy numbers of GX. Quick return, though. And only Hoodie left, 49 Four HP. A few of them are low. It's a headshot on Alpha, but the follow-up not found. A trade out for Leo leaves Fnatic with two. I, to be honest, the, the team I want to praise in that was actually GX. Like, obviously, the, the start of the round, Alpha getting an opener, Durka getting an opener, and Hoodie being tagged up, you kind of go, okay, this one's ropes from the get-go. That was Team TP towards their spawn. <laughs> Didn't even note that in the moment. But it's more so this re-aggression. They, they use the fact that they know Alpha's there to quick rotate. They leave the pit, they leave everything behind, and they gamble. And it almost pays off. A good mid-round from GX, but unfortunately, the early Who's round was next? what cost them. Cutting through. Oh, we can see Durka were on board with him in a different dimension. Peering into ours and attempting to find Hoodie. There he is. Unfortunately, that info was already found by Alpha. Hunter's Fury grabs one tag, but 40 HP. Never mind. He's down and out. The return of the ultimate, though, is Fatinho now plays on site to rotate a little bit quicker. The flash to Blind oh, Chronicle, oh, no. but somehow he loses that fight. It's anything but pretty. And the advantage now sits towards Fnatic Hunter's Fury, blindly fired in, hoping to find something and getting absolutely nothing. Shot missing for Purpo as well. Everything's going wrong for GX, and they've got the disadvantage to play around. Spike still to be planted, 50 seconds, but the Viper spits the big death. Danger! How is this man evading death again and again? Seven HP! And Purpo, the word save must be racking around this guy's brain, surely. Spike planted. But he's. But, but no, it's not. He's gone out wide into the open. I'm questionable. And I'm more just bit like, how does Chronicle survive this round? I don't know. Magic. I do not know. That, that's my only option. Magic. I mean, he was 7 HP in that 3v1. And he goes, guys, I'm going to swing. I'm going to swing him, see where he is. It's just, uh, I, I think that for Fatinho's sake, we have to delete the VOD. I, I think that's the only acceptable. Oh, oh it's just, man. I, uh, uh, Look at this. I'm 7 HP. I got him. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, after what he just, just happened, I think I'd start to believe I was invincible oh, yeah. at that point. Those bullets aren't tagging you. You're all good. Seven and three. Chronicle has bailed them out. And this round. The playing drone. And again, the setup comes into fruition. The same combo in mid. But obviously, it's been played in a multitude of different ways. So. That's something that Fnatic definitely has to be wary of. It's a nice ping, but actually, the counter spray is even better. That's not the same guy. Where's the guy from the last round? Like, and it just looks like Fatidio has bounced back immediately. I'm, I'm, I'm so <laughs> confused. He saved it all for this round, Mitch. That's it. That's it. You know, he's getting the, the bad karma out of the way, so the good one will come in here. Perhaps an economical play towards Fnatic. Maybe he let Stevie play that round. But Stevie came Stevie onto the stage, sat this down one. in the chair. No, Th no, no, this no. One. No, the round before. I'm not sure about the that. The massive whiff round. Stevie would have gotten four kills. <laughs> Don't you ever disrespect him like that again. <laughs> but yeah, for GX, this is a great resurgence. And you know the thing that's baffling to me is that this mid setup that's about to kill Alpha in a moment is being taken at the start of the round with no gate crash down. Fitinho does not have an escape. Seconds left. Uh, that's wild. Like, even after the second kill, he's only then thinking, oh, maybe I should put one down, just in case. And the idea is that no matter what, he's not bailing out. He's not getting no. spotted by the drone and going, oh, no, I'm running. He wants that fight to be taken, because even if you take him down, your guns are looking left, two teammates swing from the right. It's a good idea, but it's ballsy to not even well, the, have an the, escape route. The funny thing is, the, the whole game with this setup, a lot of the time, is that he will die, but he will be traded. Yes. But it, it's got to a point in every round where Purpo has actually had to swing wider because his teammate is oh. killing everyone. So there's actually no reason for him to be the trap because they're never getting close enough to the trap because Vitinho doesn't die. It's just been a really tough attack side from Fnatic and a great sign for GX to pose this kind of a threat to Fnatic on a map that they've been hyping up, that they've been excited to play. And they've come in with some new things. Patino finally puts down his game, crashes an escape mechanism, but something tells me he's not going to need it. After the few pop-offs from this guy, he has got support as well. Hoodie on his way, Cloud here. Durka forced back. The initial fight going to Fadinho. 
The spam's back. Okay, back and forth they go. The updraft at least. Get him up above that wall. Chronicle trapped in the corner though. Hasn't really got a way out. Durkin and himself have to fight their way through this side oh, and he's just nice. about made it the a site taken by alpha as well they've secured a plant and the element of surprise tom it's everything for alpha he could go huge here yeah the thing is i have a feeling that they're gonna suspect that this might happen because alpha has been on those hard lurks in the majority of rounds and again gx have been very good at sort of grouping up as a unit they'll definitely know it now i think alpha even realizing that he has to try and get ahead of where they'd even predict left. him to be Planting. I don't think Neural Theft's going to be a, a massive benefit at this stage, and any other alts are not even close to being online. Especially with the trap behind, right? Camera They're hardly camera. going to have pushed down tubes, so there's no point really using it. Nowhere to use it right now. And no chance to with Alpha down. Durka on the clutch. Flash, though, is good, and he's gone! Oh! Four for Fnatic! A Red Bull clutch to close out the half, and all hope is not lost yet. Where was, where was that guy for the first 11 rounds? <laughs> I did just out of nothing. Like that was what, I think he was on two kills. He's more than double just, his kills. Yeah, just managed to pull that out of the bag and around the, honestly, Fnatic desperately needed. They were really struggling against the proactive setups we've seen from the side of GX. Again, a lot of the struggles I felt like GX have were over on that attacking side. But at the same time, that was, Again, Purpo's first map playing for the team. I, I think we can give them a little bit of slack with the mistakes that they made. And they're also things that you'd hope GX have learned from. We'll see though. Of course. A pistol round actually fairly important if Fnatic are gonna turn this around. It could be the boost that GX need to close out this map. Oh no. And he's gone again. Unfortunately for Dirk. He's done damage though. It's not being followed up on. Three versus four. Redgar and Purpo sharing a life almost. And Hoodie's lost his. Now it's a little bit more competitive. The numbers even, but the HP drastically in favor of the Fnatic side. And they're looking to group up. But the TP used by Fatinho is near perfect. He has thread the needle. GX now hold the advantage. And the gate crash on its way back through. He can just reunite with his teammates and play this post plan together. Not only that, but Redgar has taken advantage of his low HP with a nasty little spot. He's been caught by Boaster, though. Uh -oh. 19 Last HP. And on the way back out, okay, he slipped through. Purple That's barely so holding on to life, but he's going to use Fatinho to try to close this one out. The two of them together already sticking to halfway, but the read. Oh, the read is perfect one, by Boaster. Eight. He's got one. Baiting him out for the final oh. fight, but the ammo gets the better of him. Only one bullet left and only one bullet needed, but it was a little shy. Yeah, nine to four. I, I, some good adaptations. Again, it, it's something that worries me that I, I think Fnatic have even used the fact that there were problems with the flanks last time out. Look how far they get. And there is a cam, there is utility, but it was because Redgar was planting that he's unable to pop the cam and check the flank. And there was no one else checking it either. So definitely still those issues, but it was Fatinho's reposition. That was what won them the round. That was what saved them. 15 and 9, I said, is he going to have a good Yoro at the beginning of his map? So far, yes. He's up there. 15 and 9. And while for Fnatic, Stop it's Leo. For the Ghost, nothing else. A very, very light buy and a retake on B. About as bad as it gets. Pretty wide open sight. A lot of ranged angles for GX to hold on. And again, addressing the buy of the attack side in round two, they've got themselves uh, a lot of room for error. The margin for error is wide because they've got two pistols. So even losing a player or two, not going to be the end of the world. As long as they can carry those rifles Here. through to the next round, they'll still have credits to fall back on. Fnatic, I mean, the decision seems to be play exits, and jump into that spike in the end. Yeah, I, I think... You can already see Purpo is just scouting out in towards the spawn. Just making sure that if he's the one to go down, that's fine. Extra orb for Jet and also only has a pistol. And Fnatic have just decided to die to the spike. Not the most exciting finish to this one, but ultimately one that at least gives their opponents the least possible. Uh, the thing that's scary though is just, again, it, it's clean enough for the side of GX that they can go into this one with basically full rifles, like maybe one missing. Yeah, they could even buy that up if they really wanted to, but I'm sure wanting to make sure they have everything 
going into that next round and with the scoreline already so heavily in their favor, even if they drop like three players here, they are in a great position. 10-4, Tom. Have we seen Fnatic call a pause so far? I don't think so. We had a GX pause earlier on, if I'm not mistaken. But this is a team that clearly has the, the ideas ready to go. They don't need to go back and reread the notebook. But with 10-4 to on the scoreline, this idea better work out, or you're already going to be thinking about split. Also, I, I feel like the rounds Fnatic have won have been mm -hmm. off individual plays. It's been alpha. It was yep. Durker in a clutch. Like these, these, there's not been a round that I can say was clean from Fnatic at any stage, which is a rarity. Or maybe not as of recent. Already, the setup. Ooh. Crossfire play, it's already been spotted by Alpha, but they have lost a lot of space. Flash through, he's gonna have to hide at the back of this site, and already, Chronicle is gone. It's left on Alpha to go huge here in the corner. He's gonna find another. Again, the individual doing great, but the trades are there. Guns can be found. Mitch, it's a 3v3. Yeah, they've already done the work on the side of GX. I like this attack, the flash through the wall. It got them so much space. And now they get to capitalize off those advantages. Watching Sitting down with weapons in hand, ready to take this fight. What was a disadvantageous round is now one that you could argue even favors them. Yeah. The utility at a disadvantage. They don't have a lot to fall back on, but with another kill found, That's it's looking like Fnatic friendly. might be in the dirt. 11 seemingly secured and now locked in for GX. And this lead, I mean, hey, I am actually getting flashbacks to the last <laughs> map, Tom, but it's on the shoes on the other foot now. Yeah, it is a completely different looking match. I, I think the fact that, even just look at the way that retake was played, you had GX coming in, working as a unit, looking to try and just basically trade out kills. And on the other Spike side of things, Durka game. runs in, another player runs in, another player, like it, it's much more individualistic, like just hoping that they can find something. Like a, a solo peak there coming out from Boaster, like yeah, this is looking nice, scrappy, nice, nice, nice. but also GX are looking good. That's the thing I'm more excited about. Vitinho on point, Purple. As said, last time I, he played this map, I think he got five kills in the whole map. It was, it was a rough start to him and I was getting flashbacks again to him in mech. Now he yeah. looks like a different beast. 14 and seven, having a great game. Barely been dying most of the time. Rengar as well, he was in a similar boat, five kills, now doubled that already. And versus Fnatic, someone that, uh, I'll be honest, I think if, if you are a Fnatic fan, you probably weren't expecting GX to even get close, especially after that first map. Oh yeah. I mean, even if you're a fan of GX, you probably weren't expecting them to get close after that first map. It was starting to seem like just another week at the office, but well, they've definitely woken up. They've brought a fight to this stage. And, and to address, actually, that pause there was from Fnatic, and I believe, based on our graphics, I was wrong. I'm stupid. Uh, it, earlier on, it wasn't a GX pause, it was a Fnatic pause. So they have been scrambling to try and figure this one out. Definitely puts a different taste in my mouth uh, of how this one has gone so far. GX in complete control and needing barely any touch-ups or tune-ups to hit their stride. 11 on the board and a pretty steep investment from Fnatic. They look to stop GX here and now. The decoy is already allowed to walk through, but oh no, Dirk is not able to capitalize. It's Bowser oh, instead, exactly popping off on the back of the site that's given them a chance. Yeah, it's given an opportunity, especially with the remaining players having Guardians. That was the one pistol that was in play. Still, Cloud standing. Redgar alongside him. Utility definitely favored to Fnatic at this stage. You've got Chronicle's belt just being put into play. The drone is still available for Cloud, but I'm not sure if there's necessarily a position he'll be able to use this. And I think instead it looks like Redgar's gonna be that sacrificial lamb, just looking for the contact. He's already gonna manage to find one. The second goes his way as well. And now he's heading up against Alphia. A cypher battle that you'd expect to go in Alpha's favor and it will just about Getting that frag, and I think just about getting that defuse as well. It's going to be close, but not close enough. Redgar's got to be feeling pretty redeemed. As far as uh, the other week goes, Yeah. not a bad attempt from him. Impressive by Boaster. I think the snake bite helping out. Luckily for him, he missed the decoy. Ends up hitting the real one. But those three kills, not quite enough this time around. There's a decent investment from Fnatic. They put credits into it. They gave themselves an opportunity. And now, 
Well, the reward is there. 11 to 5, rifles in their hand. And GX, well, they get another shot at it. They've got plenty yeah. cashed up thanks to that lead. And Tom, you never see a team lose a lead like this. No, no. I, it, the thing is, you joke, but it's like, I, I don't know if right now Fnatic have the mental fortitude to do it. Like, I don't know if there's a team other than Na'Vi that do, like, in this in the league. Yeah. In EMEA. I, I, I just, I don't know if they do. So I, I'll happily be proven wrong, but I, think I, I feel like GX are just in control at the moment, and it, it is just players like Alpha saving Nice them. knife. That's a drone cancelled out completely, but take his drone away, and the man gets angry. Two quick kills for Cloud, and they're steaming in towards the site. He's jumping around like a lunatic. As Two of them were jumping. Pity gets the kill. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Boaster and Alpha left to do it all, and that is a spectacular nice. response from GX. Their initial utility cut off, and it didn't look like there were any oh, struggles no, no. there. They're both isolated. Fatinho might take this, but he doesn't have a flash. So he goes all the way into the spawn and then just TPs Plays out. Safe. Just a paranoia play. And there is a flank underway from Redgar. In fact, they're going back to clear Fatinho and they're going to run right into Redgar. Oh! It doesn't matter if they're looking for him. He'll find him anyways. And Andalutia flawless. And I, honestly, where, where was this guy? Where was this guy? 15 and 6. Redgar is having a field day. It, it seems like a lot of the issues have been fixed, but also just, again, Opportunities, oh. but not quite there. This is just ridiculous. <laughs> Two players dancing, the other does the work. Whoa. 17, 15, 14, 12, 12. Everybody is there on the side of GX. The same can't be said on the other yeah. side. I feel like I've been fed a lie. Yeah, Dirk has Yoru. <laughs> it's not been... He got three of his kills in one round, and he has five total. It's been rough. And the expectations on that man are always going to be higher than anyone else, to be honest. Again, Viper's Pit now being used actually in towards the tube, maybe to deny the split, but instead, they're just going to go straight out. Now, this is a, a very old strategy as well. Look at where Redgar is. We used to see this from Giants quite a while ago. Oh. Too many walls in the way. And this is going to be a, a, a bit of an issue because the rotates are underway. The steps are being heard. Redgar knows there were players running towards the spawn. I don't know if he's going to catch them on the way through. It looks like he's a little bit out of range to hear those steps. He'll sneak his way through the door. And it's as the spike is being planted. Look, they're, they're looking the other way. Alpha picks up one, but the cost is great. Now the ult used for the final pieces of information. And this puzzle has come together nicely for GX. They came into this 13 to 5 down on the first map. Boaster was fragging out. The GX, well, they've done the exact same. Redgar leading the charge for this squad in many, many rounds. Pulling them out of bad positions and leaving Fnatic with only Chronicle here in a 1v4. Seven straight rounds needed and they won't even get the first kill. 13 to 5. Deja vu. Shoe really is on the other foot now and it's only split that can separate these two teams. Yeah, I honestly, I don't think many people after the first map, me included, thought that it was going to go this way. Luckily, we have a decider. Split, the best place to end it. We'll be back after the break. I know a place that will break you into a thousand pieces. Stay away from them. Stay away from Lorca, Paco, and Picasso. Don't ask about Lola. I, Caballo Grande. I, Lord Nieve. But in spite of everything, it occurs to you to visit Andalusia. Don't say I didn't warn you. Be careful of the Andalusian crush.
Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin, former professional Counter-Strike player and Valorant coach. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle, you're going to be able to fight this. Red Bull gives you wings. Giant, they hit back and they hit back hard on Breeze. They bring the series to a third map. I'm your host, Yingsu, and I'm joined once again by Kakuka and Steel. This Breeze, we had a lot of questions on what Giant X were going to do. And uh, Kakuka, do you feel like they answered all of your questions after KC? They definitely improved a lot, right? Uh, maybe it's also on, on KC's side, but we saw them playing together way more. We saw more comfort and also more strategy behind playing the Yoru and the Jet. And they also understood the map 
much better this time around. Listen, I'm gonna keep the Fnatic Copium alive for your sake, okay? I, I'm, I'll, I'll take the hit for this. Cause I feel like they had a lot of really good ideas and they were just like missing shots. And that's what Giant X was primarily capitalizing on. And they were kind of getting these miracles handed to them in a, in a sort of sense. Oh, you mean they, they were just hitting every shot and Fnatic were whiffing all the shots? I mean, that happened a lot, yeah. I mean, we can talk about some of the situations that came down where, oh, there were some good plans here or there, but a lot of the situations came into they were caught with their pants down straight up and Fnatic just missed. Yeah, let's take a look at a few of those situations first. We have uh, a couple of rounds just felt like deja vu. It happened over yeah. and over again. This is so important because this is after a Nico for Fnatic and a pause coming from them on how to address the aggression that we saw on Bind that we're also seeing on Breeze here. And it's so well and meticulous planned how Purpo is going to have the action and just put that kind of pressure on to mid. And Fnatic, even though we can see from the positions that they're prepared for it, they cannot take the duel in their favor. I think also that Purpo, even though Jet's utility is something that we do not highlight a lot because, you know, we've been seeing it from the beginning of the game, it's like nothing new under the sun. Uh, I think that also his smokes when he came from the side of Fnatic actually trying to do a micro onto them, it was very surprisingly good. I feel like, did I see a team flash there from Fnatic as well? It, was I seeing that no, right? No, from no. The, no? Okay. I was I'm, just I'm making... Think, I'm gonna say no. I think that was 50 I think, yeah. You it was 50 yeah, Okay, yeah, yeah, I thought 50 I was so. already dead at that's that time. that's why it on the floor. Okay. I might be wrong. Well, it's what we're seeing there, though, are a bunch of brawls, and they're going in the favor of Giant X. And the only times that I really saw Fnatic really getting a, a, a strong take, yeah, this is like one of the rounds I'm talking about, though, is that they had a perfect double flash, the Yoru flash going in with the KO flash slightly staggered. Five Giant X members, fully blind in main. Durka go, uh, um, yeah, goes in, and he just misses like ten ghost shots in a row. Tries to get away and dies. Like caught with their pants down fully blind for like three, four seconds, and then they still come out on top with the traits. It's like, you run that play 10 out of, like ten times in a row, 100 times in a row, and we're gonna see Fnatic winning that more times than not. Right here, this is like the distinction between uh, a good play that, that didn't work and a bad play that did work, and we're also talking about, did they play good or bad? I feel like they played pretty well, it's just the performance was bad. Actually, yeah. I'm going to ask production if we can run it the clip again because the beginning is, is so important and actually ties back to what I was mentioning about Purple. Eric was saying yesterday how important it is to, faith, to fight for a main control. And the moment that they get flashed, Purple throws the smoke on yeah. the floor and actually denies all the vision that Fnatic needs to get on all to all those kills. And also, it opens to the fact that you know it's people inside the smoke, you know there's more people uh, approaching from there. And also, in this fight, Fiti uses his utility to go back all the way uh, uh, to be and have that second wave of action onto them. I mean, this is the thing. They have reps on this map. They know what they're doing. So now they brought out the Yoru for the first time uh, and it just felt so, like uh, flat. Yeah, actually, we <laughs> We're a little bit like excited uh, on what we're going to see, but definitely this needs to change for a split, especially if we see changes. Yeah, let's take a look at the agent select, like, and we do see changes. Oh, yeah. yes. I was uh, I was gonna say because obviously we have not seen Giant X playing with Purple here, and definitely we haven't seen Fnatic in a while. Yeah, and Alpha, you're back on uh, the race. Okay, this I'm vintage. so down for this. I was doubling. I thought the Giants was going to double down on the double duelist also for split, but seeing Fnatic doing it and putting Alpha, a player that especially there on Breeze, had also that huge impact. I think that this is going to become a fan favorite from the get-go. I, I find this uh, composition a little bit interesting here with uh, Fnatic. Obviously, their composition is going to be really explosive on attack side with a double duelist with the Breach. But going into the defense, they have that Cypher camera and tra trap wires to play with the Breach and the raise combo utility with. I'm not seeing that from Giant X. We see the double uh, controller from them. So their defense is going to be a lot of like blind gambles and stacks. And I wonder if that's going to kind of like make it difficult for them to rack up a lot of rounds on their defense and, and primarily work on their attack. And of course, Chronicle is playing the Cypher on this map as yeah. well. I can't <laughs> wait to see it. Uh, let's just hop right back in over to you once again, Mitch and Dom. Well, quite a Chronicle ahead of us here. A split is the final map in this series. GX just dominated Fnatic with a, well, pound for pound answer back. 13-5 traded out each other's map picks. Coming in to split, Tom Fnatic, bringing some new stuff to bear. 
How do you feel about their chances here? More than five rounds or less? Higher hey, or lower? Hey, you know, I, I, I'm hoping both teams get more than five rounds because otherwise they, I, I don't want this to teeter out. I think that we've already seen success with a, a composition similar to this. Like obviously Dirk up running that Yorum. We've seen Martin do that. Yeah. So it, it's not like it's anything crazy new. I, I do. I am interested to see what it's like without having something like a Sky. A lot of the time you're going to have those leading flashes. So you're going to have to now look someone like Dirk are really leading the charge in that regard. Well, Fnatic will start this one out on the attack side, and you can see they're using the cage to cross, but damage has been sustained. A few bullets hit for Cloud, and the decoy planted, but not yet activated. Fnatic ready to follow up on the back of it. Counter utility on its way. It looks like GX want to fight ahead of this execute, and that's a cost that they are willing to pay. One player down, the trade's in, but they're not finished fighting just yet. Counter flash Good coming count. out of the side of Leo, and that has kept them back. The advantage sits with one Fnatic, but the remain. damage is done. Someone has to capitalize on it, though, and there's no one left. One to zero for Fnatic. Yeah, off to a, a hot start. I think we're seeing what sort of game we're going to be getting already. The gloves are off. GX wanted to get in there and brawl. And, well, Fnatic, I think especially Leo, those counter flashes somewhat saved them there. Extra pieces of utility that helped them survive what was some pretty decent aggression in the end. But Fnatic take the pistol. Obviously, for that reason, GX are not going to be able to put anything in here. A few pieces of utility will be purchased alongside. Purple even going to pull in a Sheriff. Of course, that's one of the major sort of role swaps that we've seen as of recent in maps where they don't run the double duelist. Vitinho is going to head over to that breach. Again, it's a change I'm not too sure about just yet. It, it feels like this map almost sings for them to, to run a double duelist on themselves, but I guess Pipson has other ideas. I'm sure Pipson has a, a lot of ideas. Not sure yeah. we get to see them all. Voices of reason sometimes come into play. That trap's a little nasty. Good luck to Hoodie getting over it. Attempt a little jump. I believe just jump and crouch at the same time. Oh, yeah, he's done it. He's up and in, but that flank's going to be a little late. Players down in vent, biding their time. I really, I really want Fatinho to try and fail. Yeah. Oh, there we <laughs> go. He's actually waiting just in case he did. That's a good teammate right there. I'm yep. not going to screw up your flank and have one of my own. Eventually, it's only going to be the one kill. I honestly think, though, like we have all these changes, all these differences. The thing I'm most excited about is seeing Alfie back on race. Because I still remember that the day on Fracture, he came in, it was like the, the first tournament he played, and he just absolutely pounded on race. Unbelievable performance. And then after that, well, that was where we sort of switched away from the, the chamber meta, and he had to go back to Pioneer Sentinel again. Ah, nice even distribution of kills for Fnatic as well. 4 3 2 1 0. We love to see it. Won't be long before we see Boaster on the board. If it's like map one, he was dominating. But Redgar, well, he was able to match that performance almost exactly on the previous map. It's been a very fun series despite it being so quick on each map, so dominant as well. Here on Split, though, I'm expecting the distance. I, I think GX deserve certainly to make this a closer one. And to be honest, coming into today, I viewed this as Fnatic series. It was going to be theirs all the way. Coming into map three, though, I have absolutely no idea where the expectations yeah. should sit for both these teams. GX astonished me on Breeze. Yeah, and I, I think that that will lift the spirits quite a bit. I think if they'd even struggled through that map, I would still probably be putting this in Fnatic's favor, but it really is an unknown. Purpose nade should do a little bit of damage, and well, Alpha trying to be aggressive has been caught. Fatinho has found Fight another. Of course, some weaker weapons in this round, but when you close the gap, kind of hopeful that you'll be able to get something. An aggressive position from Boaster, but at this stage, and I think GX know, okay, there's no real value in us over-facing here. And in fact, Fnatic are spamming away all of their utility left. to clear absolutely no one. Fatinho has lost a lot of his health. He'll be playing the stun for this round. Cloud might be in the same boat, but he's got no utility to help out with. Just go heal Fatinho, maybe. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like he has it. 12 seconds, though. They've got to pick up the pace on Fnatic, and it's right into this site. Left. The site with the lower HP players. But, they've, uh, but I mean, there's four seconds left now, and well, they're not going to get this one planted, are they? Killed their own yeah. 
Uh, interesting. I, I, I guess maybe they decided that they were just going to hold on to the guns and just see what they could do, but... <laughs> then they ran forward? That was that was like an almost Na'Vi-esque round of just like completely running out of time. That is peculiar. They've got rifles for the next round at least uh, in terms of like uh, bonuses. They haven't given away anything. GX yeah. have to invest for the rifles they take. But uh, I, I'm extremely peculiar. You could watch 100 rounds of split. You probably won't see one like that again for a while. Yeah, it's definitely... Sick a little, replay. Definitely a little bit odd. <laughs> Oh, two to one. Fnatic are still going to have a purchase with the couple of saved guns. I'm hoping that's not a sign of things to come. Bomb but the GX, well, they'll, they'll take those last few players surviving as well. Keeps them in a strong position for this next round. Neither oh, team really having anything in terms of their ults. The gamble here from GX is to try and fight into middle. That's going to leave Redgo with a lot to do. Now, he does have Paranoia available to slow them down. Yeah, off rip. They wanted to actually fight on ramp. They were expecting Fnatic to maybe send Alpha Air up top. There was a stun being held in case those blast packs came through to get an immediate punish. But when they see nothing, the players move back to middle, give up that control, and now they have to fight for it. But Fnatic have already taken it. Chronicle able to hold on strong with Fatinho down in the swing from Boaster. Perfectly timed. Stun is good. Purpo's in the open. No choice but to take that duel, and he's lost it. GX. Well, they won't be denying this plant, I think. The orb goes to Alpha here, now just one away from a showstopper. Planted. Yeah, for the other side, it's, I think, a save. I, 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 just the weaponry that they have left for the next round is not enough without these two guns. So Fnatic are going to be converting this one. I don't think there's anything that GX can do about that. It definitely seemed like a, a bit of a mishap in terms of timing for Edgar. Just completely caught in the open as they look to push into the site and no real chance for the remaining defenders of that A site to have any level of interplay. For Fnatic though, a good response. Patience was key, timing even better. And they're gonna get out of this one with four players alive. You can see Alpha's still trying to hunt down the remainder, but with both towards mid, it would have to be a, a pretty catastrophic error at this stage for them to give up any of those guns. So we should still see somewhat of a purchase into the next one, but uh, even still, actually, it's going to be really poor if they gamble it. There'll be some serious pieces missing. Yeah, I think GX had some ideas here on how Fnatic might approach the map, both early A and then a little bit later on, the mid plays they were trying to deny. Try not to die. But Fnatic perfectly read the gaps Time in that. Jump. Whether I, I can't think, I don't think you can call it reading the gaps, but certainly taking advantage of them. Now they set their sights on the B site, and well, look at Lee for them. One of the main things you're worried about going in here is always going to be the traps. Don't have traps to worry about, so straight in paranoia. TP on back site. But this player's dropping out of heaven, and that's the real danger. Three, in fact, around this position. The Spectre already finding the one, and Patino's not looking to stop anytime soon. Prepping his utility as Purpo just flies ahead of it, picking off one, picking off three so far. And it's only Boaster. He snuck to the back, but Cloud up top is easily able to find it. And the round win goes to GX. Yeah, it seems like their game plan is basically just play mid in the early round and quickly try and rotate into the site that's being executed on. That was a risk, though, from GX. Came into the round with two Spectres, basically forced around the rifles that they'd saved. But again, it is going to be that sort of fantastic round from Purple. That, that was the thing. He's been so good in these nice. sort of scenarios where just explosive rounds come out. I'd say individually thus far, he might even be the best player on the server. Yeah, you might be spot on there. And it's great to see as well. So early on, when we already talked about the pressure and how it could get to those players. We've seen a lot of teams suffer with that very same thing. Even Koi, that's what they put a lot of it down to. Showstopper was activated, but yet to be used. It's a little too deep. There's not really an angle from there where you could find the value. Nate goes through, but most importantly, up goes Boaster to take oh. that space. How has Leo gotten away with a double? Both were headshots, and he knows exactly where Cloud is, both himself and Chronicle looking to take the fight. And they know that player's stuck in, but you also know it's a sky. Probably, you're going to see some utility fire around. Still both flashes ready for Cloud, but it's a contact play. Leo's ready to swing. Alpha here as well, and... Neither of them are needed in the first fight. Very clean from Fnatic. Having not lost a player, I don't think they will. Because Redgar wants to get out of here. Take your gun out. Okay, well, he's made it. God, just about. They've heard the steps, though. It is now a race against the clock as they will try and hunt him down. 
This time, the aggression of GX punished by Leo. Again, a, a huge job. He definitely went a little bit more quiet in the last map. That was the thing. We didn't see those explosive individuals when it came to the Fnatic side on Breeze. Already going to start things off well. That's the thing, though. It, it does feel like, especially as of recent, well, I, I obviously, we got a little bit of recency bias in my head after what we saw yesterday on Split. But we have seen some very attack-sided <laughs> halves of this map, so. Yeah, yesterday was... I wouldn't say it's ropes, even if things start a little bit slow for Giants. Yesterday was pretty attack-sided, what, 10 and 11 rounds, respectively? Not sure we'll see that repeated again and again, but, uh, well, so far, it's working out well for Fnatic. Again, though, they pick up the pistol. When it comes to outside of that coin flip, it's been a pretty even fight so far. I don't know that GX will feel so comfortable, though, with their composition when it comes to the attack side, finding the same space that Fnatic will be able to. And so far, again, I don't think I've seen anything from the Yoru that I'm amazed by, that I'm blown away by. I think there's still quite a lot left in the tank that we're going to see in the next couple rounds. You have to hope so. <laughs> After the last map, maybe. I think that's probably why you see GX call this timeout. They know there's a lot ahead of them. And they've seen, even on map one, how quickly that early contention can turn into domination for your opponents. Also, the buy is going to be pretty mix and match. But a showstopper for Purple will help out a ton. And very close to getting a lot of these ultimates online. Two away from the, the big ones. One away from the From the Shadows, which, if it's Mystic, I'd be very terrified. <laughs> Seems to have that down to a T. I've never seen him at TP almost in front of a player, and that Time player not, not even oh. realize what's going on. Here we go. Dimensional drift. Again, this was what I was talking about with having that lack of a, an information gathering initiator. It's going to be that space taking. And um, well, I, I think that GX may have just gambled on the retake. Now, bear in mind, Purple is a showstopper. There's a few alts pretty close by. Paranoia in hand for Boaster to try and find something instead, though. It's actually Purple again, winning the duel. Gonna bypass the rest of the players. He kills Boaster. Was he on top or did he drop down? I think he dropped down after the aftershock. He did. And because of that, he's ended up getting a couple of kills. Durka needs to get back in there. They are just sticking this defuse and it is being held. There is nothing Chronicle can do. Another big round from Purpo. They've had a couple on the board that you could almost solely put down to him. Wow. Uh, quite a round from GX, you could say. The swing on the side alone, dropping Alphier, someone we've praised again and again and we've already seen activated in this series. But speaking of Purpo warming up, look at that. Yeah, you're exactly right. We saw Boaster give up that control, fall down below. And unfortunately for them, that's exactly where Purpo went hunting. Probably even heard the drop down, reacted straight to it. Eighth round about to be played out, and we could see GX tie up this scoreline. Fnatic go back to what worked, a play towards the B site, a TP in towards the spawn. It's committed on as well. Boaster spotted by Redgar, an awkward fight, and he's left with a sliver of health, but the trade is good. They managed to take enough space to make that loss worthwhile, losing out their main smoker. It'll be a little tough, but oh, I, they want GX to retake. They want GX to come barreling in so the rolling thunder can catch them all. Set up and ready to go. Just trying to find a spot where it's not going to end up being more of a curse. It seems like the rest of the players are getting ready to barrel in off the back of it. They haven't quite been able to capitalize just yet, but Cloud is not long for this world. Hoodie, though, has quickly found tradebacks. The time being bought, but still enough for them to get back in onto this. The trade from Alfred is actually going to end up with both. Bringing things home for Fnatic. Just about getting that round over the line. And the back and forth continues, by the way. Yeah, one for each. Sharing is caring. They're giving rounds over to their opponent. Great attempt from Hoodie. I thought that could be it, just the overaggression of Fnatic. They get two kills, hunting them down. Everybody's swinging on the back of the Rolling Thunder, but it had only hit three players, and Hoodie up top very nearly punished them and found that round win. But an Alpha Clutch gives five to three over to Fnatic. As we said, back and forth, and GX have three ultis to work with. As soon as barriers go up, the first is used. Viper's Pit locking down mid control. And then with that one way smoke on B, and a lot of information on the back of it, there's a big stack on the A site where Fnatic are currently gravitating towards. In fact, all five 
Looks like they're gonna have to commit. I think it's... Red guards playing aggressive. If they go back oh. the other way, Purple is just so clean with it. I thought he, he might start this round without a gun as they were a little bit low on finances. I'm glad that was adjusted because he's the last man right now you want to have with a gun missing. Do you think they planned that gap? Like there, there is a tiny gap in that Viper wall. I, I don't know, but it's pretty big actually. I don't know if the, the intention is that they exactly what happens happens or if that was just a happy accident but yeah. either way they're happy about that opening pick durka big danger man for this squad down and out flash didn't catch him gone. He's, he's opting to try and cover the gap around the viper's pit make sure this teammate's safe they look pretty committed to this a site right now there's still three players here rolling thunder is available and it is very well timed it's gonna blast out for into the air oh! but he still gets two kills i don't know how he's managing to pull this off and even still there's a fight for fanatic redgar hoodie trying to still stop them the plant can't be denied at least for now redgar might be able to take a little bit of extra space you got hoodie up above but they know exactly where these players are the neural theft gave all the information away. GX getting back in is going to be tough with the crossfires. Fnatic have set up and it's Boaster to take point of contact. Leo swings to get more and there's no more to find. But he's out of here. Saving this weapon for the next and giving Fnatic a sixth round. The back and forth ends here, Tom. <laughs> yeah, the most brutal of fashion again. Like you look at the initial setup in that round from GX and it, it was nigh on perfect. Like you had them locked in a box. You had a rolling thunder to hit them as they execute in the last 20 seconds. And then Alphia just does that. Like Alphia just gets two while stunned. I do think there was an unbelievable flash that just went through just in front so that the player there is blind and the other player is not ready to come around the corner. That Cloud didn't know where the hell he was. That's nice it. Cheers, boys. Let's go. Nice kills. You said that? <laughs> what do you mean? And I feel that, oh. Elma. What, what did just happen? I, well, that's the question GX have got to be asking because the Rolling Thunder was perfect. The timing was impeccable. But the execution, something else. We heard Steel talk about that earlier. It's not that they play bad, it's just that the results are bad, essentially. Yeah. The performance wasn't quite there. And yeah. in that round for GX, it's which, a which very big mistake. <laughs> Depends on which map we're yeah. talking about. But when it comes to this, pistols for the majority. In fact, the showstopper used already kind of good for GX. They'll be smiling about that one. Durka, where are you going? He, he's gone walkabouts, runabouts, in fact. The paranoia won't catch him. He's oh, he's gonna get so much value from here. Dirk already with the first, the second, in fact, clocked up, and there's the third. It looks so aggressive, but he knows when to tame it in, when to stop and wait, and let his opponents walk right past. Beautiful play by Durka. Yeah, that will be now seven on the board. What started as a, a back and forth uh, opportunities for GX with Purpo giving them a couple of rounds. Now divulged into a pretty dangerous scoreline. A response here needed. The only seekers online, which yeah, will be able to help them out with information. But I think it's more important that they, they try and get themselves that fourth, fifth round, like get themselves close to... As said, we know that on the attack, a lot of teams have been having mass success. Some teams even get 10 rounds and lose. All right, Tom. I mean, it's 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 too soon, to be honest with you. It's too soon. <laughs> Is it? There's no need. There was no need. There will not be a need. Cutting but through. for Fnatic, you know, if I was to pick the teams most likely to throw this one away, these kind of leads, it wouldn't be Fnatic. Don't ask me who it is, Tom, because I can already hear that question coming. A little TP in, good control, and Durka has support too, and it's Alpha backing him up. So of course the kills come through. Two trades for Alpha, but he might need to do a little bit more. Fatinho goes running in and running into his death. The spike is down in the open. That's the only advantage here for GX. I don't know if that was necessary. Last player oh, standing. Luckily, again, Purpo is there to bail them out. Ace needed. Yeah, who else? Who else? I said that maybe Purpo's the best in the server. I, I, I would have to eat my words. It was a raise. I just guessed the wrong one. <laughs> and actually, Thirty seconds he's got left. the timing spot on. An afterplant, almost guaranteed. Unless you're going to start seeing GX rotate right about now. 
very quickly at that, which, as you can see, they are not. A realization is going to be made that this is going to be a play for the other side of the map, but they are as far away as humanly possible. Ten the plant left. will be coming through. There's nothing Spike that the GX planted. players can do about it, and only now are they going to start this rotation. Alpha is going to buy such a ridiculous amount of time. I think the only thing that will actually potentially bite him in the back is just how long it's actually going to take them. Well, I think, you know, from Alpha's position, that plant spot is perfect. He could be in spawn, he could be in heaven, he could be in main, and all of those positions will be viable. For him, though, he's going to take a bit of an uncouth position. Instead, looking to take that opening fight, this is a man that wants to duel. He doesn't want to win on the clock. He wants to win with a gun in his hand. And all five kills in his back pocket. An ace for Alpha Year, the best of the best. As Fnatic push up to eight. He said it at the beginning of the map. Hey, we're seeing a Yoro on Durka. That's cool. We're seeing Purpo in the team on a race. Yeah, that's pretty cool. We've even got Chronicles' first ever Cypher. Mitch, that's kind of cool. Isn't it? It's awesome. But the thing I'm most excited about is Alpha Yet back on Raze. This man is a tank on this agent. He's a tank on most agents. But an ace to give them their eighth round on the board. Fnatic might be having troubles, but this man certainly isn't. I love the start of this round, Tom. Everybody gets stunned on Fnatic except Boaster. And what does he do? Does he stand there, cover his team? He just runs forward. He's like, all right, you want to push? But no, <laughs> they didn't. It was just a bit of preemptive utility. And Fnatic, you know, it's, it's, I actually like that stun as well, because often you're going to see like a nade thrown through or something from them to deny your aggression, and you're just burning up utility for a piece of util you get back for free, this probably by the time they push. But after early B presence, GX moved to the other side of the map. The stack is perfect. If they're yeah. going to win a round here, Tom, well, it is the last round, so it's their last chance, but this would be the one. Yeah, they, they have read this to perfection. One from Showstopper on Purple too. Yeah, the same could be said for Alpha, yeah. Mm -hmm. Both raises with an opportunity cloud. But if there'd be spam, there is. Maybe a little late. 40 seconds left on the clock. They know where this is coming. It is just going to be a straight up fist fight when it comes to this final round on the A site. Oh. It's Fnatic now. 30 seconds to make their move. 30 seconds left. Time is most certainly of the essence. They've not even made it past the choke point, but they have breached into heaven. A little bit of control found as Alpha goes flying through in the back of the orb. The shot has found nothing. Showstopper, and the show has ended before it can even fire off for Purpo. Here's the spray from Chronicle for another three versus two. This was looking dodgy with the time remaining, but just about they've gotten that plant in. Losing Durka, but Chronicle and Leo still stand. And that breach utility not online. Leo's a duelist here when he's most fearsome. The player up top will be caught by Chronicle. Only Fatinho and the double swing closes it. Nine rounds on the attacking side. A huge lead at the half. And GX, they haven't seen a round win for quite a while. Ah, what do you mean? After yesterday, nine rounds on the attack? It's not, not, not a lot. <laughs> oh, I, I wish I wish you could see Mitch's face right now. He's not very happy. It's but... only been one day, Tom. I'm just thinking <laughs> how many weeks we've got ahead of us here. Oh, Weeks. God. I'm remembering that for years. <laughs> God's sake. Oh, you think I've forgotten things? You know, like Logan won before him with the Sheriff? I never forget. Remove Split from the map pool. Just get it out. Just get it out. Get it out of here. I can't take it anymore. But I think GX are going to have my, my, my back on that one after this. Unless their attack side has got some fruit to bear. So far, Purple, 11 kills. It's rare you see a uniform five for everybody else. It's been slow. It's not been so steady. A bumpy ride for GX as Fnatic now sit with a pistol round up for grabs. If they take this on the defensive side, well... It's not going to look too good for GX getting back into this one. You might even see that second round force out of desperation. They are onto that attack. A chance for them to set the pace. A chance for Purpo to be up front. Never mind. Fatinho with his quasi duelist right now as he takes the lead. And Alpha, I can't believe he's just trying to kill them all off from the top rope. It would have been maybe even more impressive than the AC got a couple of rounds ago. Yeah, going full Matt Hardy on the play. I respect it, but, well, it hasn't really worked. Chronicle, Durka, and Leo. 
The last remaining, and it's the A defense that Fnatic have put all their stonks into. Unfortunately, we can see GX are taking it elsewhere. It looks like a plant, almost secured. And Well, honestly, if you're a fan of Valorant, this is how you want to see the pistol round go. Fnatic take it, and we're going on to Series 2 pretty quickly. But for now, GX seem to left. have bought themselves a lifeline. Unless there's a big performance out of some of these players. Remember, Leo had an ace in the last map, and Durka on the Oru. There's no stopping him. Chronicle popped off in the previous round as well. There's no shortage of dangers for this attacking side, but the advantage is theirs with the time now ticking away on that Spike's explosion. Yeah, they're on the clock, that's for sure. Aftershock available, a stun as well, an extra piece available as well for Fatinho, and he has made things so awkward for Papa goes down. It's starting to look a little bit dangerous. Leo, just with the full swing, full sprint attempt at classic kills, it's not going to happen. GX have bought that lifeline. And well, as you saw mentioned, I don't expect much. It seems like, although it's been a long time since Buck EFC, that is something Fnatic are trying to bring back when they're running a, a raise. If they'd put it in on Breeze, I would have been questioning many things. But on bind yeah. and on split now, we're seeing a raised bucket. I don't mind it, really. I, I, we haven't seen the value from it just yet. Damn no. sight better than buying an Aries, let me tell you. And the thing is, you can get a lot of value out of it. If you do get up close, which, you know, you're pretty damn good at doing when you're on a raise, I think the only issue, well, the only issue previously is that we saw it essentially is like Bookie go in, Bookie try kill, and Red Guard denied it every time. This time, though, with this composition between Durka's TPs, his flashes, and obviously Leo's utility on the breach, you can do a lot on whatever position you want to dive into. Because the main problem was Red Guard was able to react so quickly. Not so possible if you're blinded and or stunned. I don't know. I kind of just look at it as an expensive shorty. It is, it is, <laughs> but I think it has that mid-range capability, right? Whereas a yeah, shorty it is really doesn't. range I agree. Right. <laughs> Didn't hear you go this hard on the Ares earlier, Tom. Well, a great gun. Keep note of that. Great well, gun. Okay, go en fight. Enzo uses it, so it must be good. Everybody makes mistakes. Wow. <laughs> it, well, after yesterday. <laughs> All right. Okay. There. You laid me off. I can't, I can't not take that one. I, don't, I don't, didn't even want it. The alley -oop. Here we go. Not much in this round at all. They're, obviously, they've gambled their, their heavy weaponry to defend the B site alone and put everyone else with the classics. I hope he makes you eat your words. They are actually going to walk directly into the bucket. He should be good for one. Anything more and I'll be sad. And well, that's about as good as I expected that to go. Yeah, all right. Good flash from Cloud. Let's give him the credit. I don't think that's a downside of the bucket. No, I think that's, got it. that's an upside of GX go, playing well. We'll see what Hoodie can do. Ten Maybe he'll left. pop off. Going to keep the control over heaven, I thought. And nope. then I see him drop down below. <laughs> all right, makes sense. You got to create as much distance as possible when using the Bucky. That's that's what they always say. But it's, in fact, he's just going to be close on B main on the walkout. B main? I, won I wonder if he side. actually goes pushing just to try and get orbs. Because yeah, at, at this I stage, so. you can deliver them the Bucky and no one will care. And they're not going to bring that into the next round. Alpha will use it next round, probably. No, They've actually already not. stunned. Nope, never mind. They're, they're giving it oh. over. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so what's better, an 850 credit weapon <laughs> or a free one? Situational, Tom. <laughs> Situational. <laughs> Unfortunately, you know, it's uh, run that back 10 times. Fatino probably loses at nine, but one of those will get him. Good attempt, but I think we all knew that Diffuse was <laughs> nowhere near. Ultimately, dying to the spike is the name of the game. And Fnatic, now well, the gap is Custom four rounds. Eh, they don't have to panic just yet, because now they get their rifles out. GX have a decent bit of cash to fall the back on. Shouldn't be any struggles. The funny thing is, there's a... There's actually a, a clip in the past of Flusher in another FPS game doing that, where he runs in late, sticks the defuse, yeah. knowing he won't get it, and you see a load of players actually die to the uh, not spike. To the planted the utility. The planted device yes. that is not called a spike. The dangerous device. Mm. I see. Nine to five. Still a long road back from GX, but definitely not as far as it once was. They've got that opener. They're going into this round with a pretty hefty buy. They've not cleared Durka, and he's out straight away. Not what we've seen from Fitinio in the last map. He sticks around. Durka's not about that life. of Papa going down is rough. As I said, he has been a saving grace for GX throughout both maps. At least the ones they were competitive in. 
That was a, an attempt from Fatinho, right? He, he put the stun down for the player up in heaven, but wasn't expecting there to be a player tucked in that box. Gate crash put out by Durkin now, Stop expecting the play to come through. 50 seconds on the clock as GX look to make their way in. Stun, not quite gonna catch him. Chronicle, ready to fight as they come through the elbow. There's Durka doubling up. They weren't expecting him. He can get out. Well, not anymore. Bullet to the head will secure that. And GX, advantage, not quite. Still a player to the good over on Fnatic, but the plant will at least be secured. Not really any utility for it either. No flashes for Cloud, no snake bites for Hoodie. They're gonna find it very difficult to recover on this one. Remaining. And especially with that opening pick from Alpha Hoodie, playing the real gamble inside the smoke, paranoid up in the ready. They, they yeah, expect they them to be there. Yeah, I, I think realizing that if you got one player that close yeah. and the other isn't on a swing, mm -hmm. it, the other one is probably there as well, unless GX were just really playing off the most gambling Trolling. of yeah, risks. Still, it was a bonus round. Still, it had quite a few weapons to it, though. So GX definitely were hoping to get a little bit more from that one. But again, the, the one-two punch of Chronicle and Durka. Sight. Nice. nice, boys. I think it very much falls good. back to what Steel was saying as well, though, about it being a, a good attempt, bro, 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 bro. a good bro, idea, you hiding, bro? good play, but poor execution. In this, uh, in this instance, there was a flash going through in towards Vence. The idea was that guy on the left is stunned, he'll fall back, you fight Vence on the flash, you get a kill, you get control. But the guy wasn't in Vence. He was hiding behind the box like a little rat. And that's the problem when Durka has a gate crash, he can go into those nasty one and done positions and he's out for free. Unless someone trades him, but that's not going to happen when you blast pack in. No yeah. one else can keep up. Again, we've got this double up in mid. It seems like the Duelists, at least for now, are looking to try and challenge this. There's a stun as well available with Leo. And actually, they're, they've stunned deep. Alpha's managed Spike to catch out Fatinho. I, I think that was actually an attempted swing to maybe save Purple. Instead, he's actually gifted his own life over. Yeah. And this time, actually, they, they have stuck around. Oh, it's... I don't Spike understand how Dirk is catching that again and again. What read goes on in his head? How does he feel and hear the breath of the round like that? The second they turn from the angle, both players looking at heaven as they clear it. There was, I don't think there was any utility and he steps right. to give it away and he just goes, I think I'll check now. They go, oh, there he is, not looking at me. Easy kill, TP out, 5v3. GX just being picked apart piece by piece. Left. And with 30 seconds yeah. left, it looks like they're saving. Yeah, no, it just has to be holding on to the weapons, it, getting close to crunch time in this matchup if they are going to have any ability to turn things around and while well, making sure they go into the next one it, with weapons is so much more important. I wonder if it was Ten seconds left. anyone but Fatinho and Cloud down, would they even contemplate going for it? Because obviously once you yeah. see that your, your flashes are out, your stuns are out, any CC You'd is gone. The best paranoia ever. Yeah, 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 exactly, <laughs> you right? You have to like curve round in a circle. <laughs> you basically have to use it like the some sort of high tide, yeah. yeah, just, yeah. Just, I'm just gonna drag this around. Oh, I, please never do that. I, I'm, <laughs> it would be the strongest ability of the game. So 11 to five, Fnatic now, two rounds away from having a victory on the board. It's definitely not in the cleanest of matches, especially with their map choice of Breeze, but on Bind, they look good. Split, they look good. Concussing. For now, at least. We're looking at GX once again. One away from having that Rolling Thunder. Something they can utilize Durka and Alpha. They're not giving up mid. They've had no reason to thus far, but the level in which they're pushing it is a bit of an absurdity. They've gone all the way through. No resistance yet. And they might have a flank. Bear in mind, there is no utility to catch them. There's no cipher. So if they just keep walking, there's nothing they can run into other than a player. And look at the setup. That, that is the spike player at the back right now. They might catch oh. Fatinho. They, they're going to catch Fatinho. That's the spike down. Then now oh. everything is it's going wrong. It couldn't go any worse. Oh, it's falling apart. Last player it's, it's falling to pieces. My god, Hoodie. Standing against the entire might of Fnatic. There was no chance. 13 to 5. The theme of the day, apparently. And it's on the cards yet again. If Fnatic take one more round, the script is complete. The Holy Trinity, Tom. 
He'll come full circle with the 13 to fives. And what a timing for Alpha Yair as well. Unbelievable that they just time it to a T. And it's like yesterday with Cena. It's just, you could choreograph a round, the perfect round for Fnatic. And that may well be it. <laughs> Dropping bars. But no, it, 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 it's one of those things push. where. Yeah, <laughs> Chef's kiss. I agree. They couldn't have said it Chef's better. Chef's kiss. Mwah, nice. Exactly. But that, but that is the thing. It's like. This is the problem of not having that sort of information. Like either leaving a lurk or having that cipher on the map. It's become a pretty common theme for teams to have that in play. And I think Fnatic just realized it. Yep. That was the perfect round to abuse it. It's the only time that we haven't seen them properly pressure mid. It, that's been a, a big part of the sort of gameplay of Giant X is holding onto that middle control, fighting for that middle control. The one time they try and go direct is when they get wrecked. It is unfortunate, but for Fnatic, it just proves the reads they've had. Sublime, 12 and five smiles on their faces, thankfully, because it has been a rough start. Them not here. making it to Madrid was a surprise. Mm -hmm. Them losing their first match here as well didn't make it look any better. I do think it's a, it's a small thing, but the idea that losing this series would put Fnatic on the worst losing streak ever. That, that's in the back of your Bar mind. One. Bar one. Okay, worst losing streak with the full yeah. roster. Yes, yes. Because they yes. had subs in the last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, like, for Good. that, that's yeah. unbelievable. Zerka, well, he's going to flash this and finish the TP right after the nade. It's blinded them. A second flash just... primed them ready. In fact, it's going to come in afterwards by the looks of it with a close play by Alpha Yeah, That nade, oh, it's caused problems. He'll lose a bit of his health to that. And the flank up from Spawn gets Hoodie a kill. That rotation working out perfectly. But even despite that punish, it's a three versus three. This, this round felt like a, a split death match. Like that, that's yes. what I'm watching yeah, yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, it, it's just like you've had a player had to get a kill from the spawn. You've, you've had a push all the way through B to fight mid. Like that's been the defense for Fnatic is just fighting mid every single round. And this is the best case <laughs> the Giant X have had. And wow, they've still got plenty to walk into. Look at the read. Fnatic already have three players within this B side of the map, and they are walking straight into the stack. TP out for Durka. Oh, Gatecrash is gone. It just, it just faded. He has no opportunity but to stay here. Leo's there to support with the Rolling Thunder's gonna put pressure on him, and with Durka down, Leo surely soon to follow. After the pause, the last pause available to GX, that discussion with Pipson, they finally found themselves around. Six more in a row to bring us to overtime. Yeah, th the problem I have though is that's the first time the aggression has even traded even. And it was off such a, a ludicrous display of aggression and the fact that one of the players was still in the spawn. So I, I don't know if that's a round that I can really look at and say, oh yeah, that's gonna happen again. I, I, I would be surprised if I see that happen again in the next three weeks because it's just such an ab absurd attempt at something from Fnatic. Now they come in with the operator. We've already seen Durka take these fights and duck out immediately. Sure, GX are gonna fight for it. They know this player's here. The first doesn't work Ooh, out. Okay. The second is just the same. Rengar with the punish, the wide swing, the one tap, and Dirk is down. And Fnatic needs someone to recover these advantages. Six in a row. It, it's a lot for GX from this point. You chip away at it one step at a time. They need to make this round look convincing. Viper's pit online, but with these advantages, you would hope it's not going to be needed, save for a rainy day. The aggression of Boaster being watched for all the while. Yeah. GX have to commit players to this, not having that cypher. That means sometimes you lose the fight. The numbers back to just a one-man advantage, but the B site is uncontestedly theirs, and the Viper's Pit makes this extremely awkward for any retake. Yeah, they'll have to go through it Spike at planted. their own peril. They found my wife. Trip going to be broken, so they know that it's close and going through that snake bite would just be almost certain doom. It seems like every player from Fnatic has decided in a different avenue that they're just going to try and escape from this. There might be an attempt to try and lock some of these players into the site. They've got some spare finances to do so. Any players they drop will make things more awkward for GX. And it's definitely going to get a little bit awkward in a moment. The angles that they have to hold will be almost a perfect spam. Poor Chronicle to play with. And there you go. He's just waiting patiently. 
They haven't even managed to destroy that trip. Finally, they get around the corner, but they're getting wiped out as they do. Chronicle with enough to buy in the next round. He'll take so much out of this and, well, technically a Red Bull clutch. But the round was already over. It was. It was already cemented, but you got to be thankful then that that Viper's Pit was put through. If Chronicle had something like that, locked and loaded. Who knows if he could have unleashed that earlier and on the side, obviously a difference when they're pushing out of the pit yeah. into your trap makes it a little bit easier and a good reposition is slightly late paranoia, but either way, very well played late round. And interestingly, Fnatic, remember I said GX had used both their timeouts. Fnatic now come in with what appears to be the last of theirs. Five rounds to defend this and well, they'll have those five rounds mapped out in the next few seconds. Yeah, I, I, I don't mind this. Uh, stem the bleeding before it gets too bad. And then the last couple of rounds, I think, again, I, uh, that one at least was more so just them catching that aggression again. Like, I, I do think we need to see something a little different now from Fnatic, even though it was massively successful in their three victories. The Durka, Alpha, yeah, one-two punch in mid has been figured out. Two rounds back-to-back -back where it hasn't had the success they were hoping for. Now, I will say, there is still like a 50-50 chance that Alphia would just run down mid this round and kill them all, but I don't, I don't think you want to play that. You can win the round in other ways, and you're also allowing some of those ults to build up. Showstopper one away for Purpo, Seeker's available as well. And if GX are just directly looking to counter, I can almost guarantee that's what Pipson was talking about. Like you can't allow them that space. We have to fight for that control. Even if we want to do other things, we have to hold it. And that's what they've been doing the last couple of rounds, and no surprise, that's what they're going to do again. Well, the gap of six down to five, still quite a big task for GX, having used the Rolling Thunder and Viper's Pit not long ago. But one away from the showstopper on Purpo, Seekers online for Cloud and Redgar. Well, situational to say the least. For Fnatic, none of those big ults online are even that close. Not expecting to see them online in this round, but the rifles are out and Durk is off. Didn't find any value last time. Taking a look at the minimap, you can see Pretty unlikely that he ends up finding something this time as well. The A site wide open and the gate crash, also an A. So no quick rotations for him. Instead, the pressure on B will sit firmly in the hands of Chronicle or on the backs of Chronicle and Leo. The spray is good oh. for two! Chronicle showing up with Purpo tag blow. It's an easy conversion for Leo. Who goes out for all of them? 13 to seven. And a domination from Fnatic on the final map. We were worried coming into this, but their hands didn't leave the reins from the moment we started. It turns out Fnatic will just win the maps that they don't pick today. Yeah, <laughs> it's definitely, definitely a bit of a weird one. I think there's a few things that might need to be workshopped. And again, I think it's proven that GX definitely still have some fight in them. They're, they're Breeze especially. Purpo was a, a shining light. Someone that I, I'm definitely excited to see more of. The only problem is, is where it puts them. That zero and two mm. leaves them in a tough spot in the group. There is still time to try and turn things around, but for the Fnatic fans, okay, they lost in their first week. They lost to Heretics. They had some problems. They put a smile on Benji Fishy's face for beating the guy that he wanted to sort oh, yeah. of play with at a time. But now they've responded. They've managed to show some resilience and shown some dominant maps as well. I, I feel like that's going to be the major thing for teams going forward. You've got to be careful what you pick not what they do. Well, finally, Fnatic have tasted victory once more after a long gap. Get up on the stage, Kojo. Get up there, boys, and celebrate. Bask in it, because this is a well-deserved win. GX put in the dirt on this last map. They had some fight to them, but the Fnatic of old, they might be back. Next game's going to be against Gentlemates. They're playing later on today as well, so they can watch them from the crowd. <laughs> There we go, both sides. I think if he dance off, then he can't get called out for the stuff he says. That's, that's, the, that's the brilliant oh, idea. That's how it works. I see. I see. Uh, I think that's it. You, did, you just continue to do that, and then you can't have any problem. Maybe we should do the same, you know? Maybe sometimes when your team's winning, you should just be quiet. <laughs> All right. All right. I was yesterday. Yeah, that was yesterday. Don't that have you noticed. Yesterday. But it was an incredible display here. I think, you know, the, the first 13-5 trade backs, that set up a very interesting final map. You said they were going to get past five rounds. They did. Yeah. But only by a narrow margin. I think there's still some potential for GX, but Fnatic, their ceiling seems to go back up. Who yeah. knows how high it can go? Time to go down to Boaster to find out how he felt tasting victory again in the arena. <laughs>
Thank you very much, Mitch and Tom. That's why I'm joined by Fanatics IGL Boaster. Uh, it's been a while since you've uh, managed to get a win on this stage. How did that feel? Uh, yeah, it's really good. You know, um, I was a bit... Uh, I don't know if I was anxious, but I'd say I just wanted to make sure that we win today so then we can like start getting the ball rolling, the momentum, and uh, maybe show some signs of uh, uh, hope for Shanghai. Oh, you're, you're looking at that already. Uh, it's going to be a long road. It's going to be a long road. I'm just going to riff off a few things because there was a lot of new stuff uh, we saw today. You're not really a team that usually changes up a, a lot in a short period of time, so this was very surprising. I'm just going to start with Leo Gecko. Why is it taking you guys so long? That man is insane on Gecko? Mate, we've had the Gecko since January or December, but um, we just didn't know where our bind... We, honestly, we don't even know which one maps are a good one. Like, we, every map we pick for Vito, we end up losing it, like, in a terrible fashion. So, I don't even know. Like, I, I go into scrims and I'm like, yeah, we're looking pretty good. We're looking comfortable. I even asked the boys this week, like, what maps do you want? And we're like, etc, uh, etc. Et <laughs> yeah, I was going to about to leak it all. Um, but no, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was cooking. We were cooking. Ah, it looks like you have been. Uh, speaking of cooking, the, the Yoru, you guys were teasing it for a long, long time. Finally brought that out as well, but it just didn't seem as convincing. What were your thoughts? Um, yeah, it, it was a weird one because I felt like our reactions in middle, when they were, we, we just lost rounds when they were in middle and then we wanted to go middle. Uh, I could have said, yeah, let's go back to wherever and not fight them, but we've practiced like our little flash plays. Uh, it's just when it came to the official, uh, Fatinia was just in that bottom left-hand corner and he was just nailing us and it was just uh, a bit frustrating, not going to lie. And then some of our XX, our post plants, again, like post plants 2024 Fnatic, it's just like a, a thing that I'm, we're just constantly trying to work on. But when we get on stage, it's like... I don't know, some of it goes out the, like, we're, we're ready, and yeah. then we get on stage, and it's like, it's gone. Hey, you didn't miss a single lineup. You didn't miss a lineup today. Uh, and yeah. uh, last but not least, Alpha Your Rays. We're going vintage, uh, OG Fnatic now. That seemed like a very, very nice adjustment. Uh, yeah, I mean, Alfia, uh, I think I even said it one time that I think in our little podcast, <laughs> I think Alfia's raise is uh, really good. Um, he's just that Turkish aimer, mechanically gifted. Um, luckily, we can put him on anything, but yeah, he's been begging, like, please put me on raise. I don't want to play Killjoy. I don't want to play Cyber, <laughs> please. And I'm like, you know what? There's a map that we can do on its split. And um, yeah, I think it was just... I've been wanting to do that comp for since January a little bit, so it was just nice that we lost in kickoff, so then we could actually do the comp switch. Um, yeah. Uh, last but not least, you heard the crowd, they were cheering as uh, Gentlemates and KC came out. A French derby coming up. Who you got your money on? Who's winning? Uh, KC versus Gentlemates. Gentlemates. Yeah, 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 they're all listening to you. They're all the listening. Way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Magnum's giving me the eye here, so I feel like if, if I don't say KC, then Magnum's oh. going to beat me up. What do you guys think about that one? Both of things KC are going to win. Oh, just we, okay. just we, just we, Desolé. There we go. One person agree with you. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much, uh, Bosa, for joining me. Uh, you heard from the man. We have a huge French derby coming up. After this break, it is Carmichael taking on Gentlemen. <laughs> Come on! Nice. Nice shot, bro. Good job, bro. Come on, stand up, stand up. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on. Where you go, bro? Where you go, bro? Bro, go, on, bro, 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 bro. Aim left, baby. <laughs> I know a place that will break you into a thousand pieces. Stay away from them. Stay away from Lorca, Paco, and Picasso. Don't ask about Lola. I, Caballo Grande. I, Lord Nieve. But in spite of everything, it occurs to you to visit Andalusia. Don't say I didn't warn you. Be careful of the Andalusian crush.
Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin, former professional Counter-Strike player and Valorant coach. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle. You're going to be able to fight this. Red Bull gives you wings. Came on now, I'm second and none. I need me a trophy, I need me a ring. I'm not with the boo, but keep it a beam. You know what it is, you know what I mean. Shit. All I do is win, 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 win. Ha. Haters wanna hate, they ain't made top 10. Ha. Double, triple team, what they need to defend. Ha. I do left and I'm gone with the win. I'm gone with it. I feel like a champion. A champion, there ain't nothing that can't be done. Oh, yeah. I put it all on the line, definition of divine. Yeah, I feel like a champion. A champion, there ain't nothing that can't be done. Oh, yeah. I put it all on the line, definition of divine. I feel like a champ, MVP status. Yeah, the win been guaranteed. Snow, let's see about it. You gon' speak about it, then be about it. If y'all don't bring that energy, no, I can't be around it. Nah, I'ma shoot my shot. I'ma stick it, watch. At the tippy top, I cannot take no loss. Two seconds on the clock, they gotta give me the rock. I got a game on wet, yeah, I got a game on lock. I feel like a champion. Ch 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 a champion. There ain't nothing that can't be done, oh yeah. Put it all on the line, definition of divine. Yeah, I feel like a champion. A champion. There ain't nothing that can't be done. Oh, yeah. I put it all on the line, definition of divine. We're here for the French Derby. We got Gentlemates versus Carmine Core. And <laughs> what we're trying to figure out is who's got the better fan base. So I'm standing here with James, Alexi. James and Alexi, and we're gonna do a, a baguette off, and we're <laughs> we're gonna do a battle to see whose baguette breaks first, to see who's the <laughs> the stronger French fan. You guys ready? All right, three, two, one. <laughs> okay, yours is hanging on by a thread, so Carmine Core wins <laughs> one round. <laughs> All right, ne next contestants. Can I get your names? Manon. Miu. Manon and Lilu? Milu. All right, are you guys ready? 
<laughs> All right, on three, three, two, one, go. Oh, oh, it's, 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 this is, this is longer. Casey's is longer. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, normally if it's, if, if it's a BO3, then it's already over, but this is gonna be a double or nothing now, okay? The winner of this takes the whole thing. <laughs> we make up the rules around here. Can I get your names? Leah. I'm Tim. Leah and Tim? All right, are you, on three. We, we need to make sure we're holding the baguette at the same level, okay? Okay, sounds good. On three. Three, two, one, go. Oh! 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 <laughs> and gentlemates, sneak the win. All right, thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you there. Hello, I'm PM. I'm here with Zaish. He's the assistant coach of Carmin Corp. How are you doing? Ou comment ça va? On va le faire en français. Ça va. Ça, ça va. va? Un peu fatigué, mais ça va. Ouais, fatigué, forcément. C'est le début de la saison, sans qui mmh. déjà. Ouais. Euh, ça fait du bien de te retrouver à Berlin. Ça fait du bien longtemps. de te retrouver cette année chez Carmine. <rire> ça fait longtemps, ça fait longtemps. C'est un grand sourire. Euh, ça va mieux cette année. Il y a des mmh. super résultats. Champion du kick-off. Ouais. Masters. Mmh. Que, comment ça se fait que c'est vraiment beaucoup mieux et qu'est-ce qui a changé euh, Je dirais un peu c'est la dynamique de l'équipe. Je pense que <coughs> bah, de toute façon, c'était là. L'année dernière, on avait du mal un peu à faire marcher euh, le groupe, à faire en sorte qu'on ait une bonne cohésion, etc. avec tout le monde. Euh, on avait des profils différents. Je pense qu'avec une équipe de rookies comme ça, c'est beaucoup plus facile de construire. Tu vois, c'est souvent des pages blanches et c'est des gens qui n'ont pas d'expérience. Donc, euh, tu peux écrire ce que tu veux dedans et ils vont juste te suivre parce que tu as plus d'expérience d'eux et, et ils te trustent. Ou ça change de l'année dernière où c'était vraiment des vétérans pour la plupart, des joueurs euh, <coughs> qui ont déjà fait leur route. Et forcément, quand tu as des joueurs comme ça, c'est un peu plus dur de leur inculquer une euh, idéologie d'équipe, une synergie euh, générale. Et euh, je pense que rien que là, j'ai déjà fait, euh, fait un peu beaucoup de différence. Tu vois. Et puis tu as, as changé de, de head coach, tu as changé de patron. Enfin, l'année dernière, je sais plus que c'était. Le clown, ça ne marchait pas des masses avec lui. Euh... Ouais. Ah non, c'était ah ouais, toi. Ouais, c'était pas si mal. En vrai, il ouais, y a eu ça. des bons moments. Ah ouais, euh, on quand a quand même travaillé trois ans ensemble. On a ouais. travaillé trois ans. Il n'y a pas eu que le projet VCT ouais. qui a été effectivement raté. Mmh. Euh, trois ans avec moi. Euh, comment tu te sens là Je sais que tu avais fait des déclarations euh, publiques où tu avais dit bah, avec Eng, justement, il faut que je trouve ma place. Parce que je suis ouais. un assistant coach euh, standard, je suis bien placé pour le savoir. Ouais. Euh, on, tu prends de la place, tu crées de la, du lien avec les gens, tu crées de la cohésion, mais aussi tu veux prendre des responsabilités. Mm. Euh, donc forcément, il fallait prendre tes marques euh, pour passer euh, bah, deux mois à Eng. Comment ça s'est fait cette affaire euh, En fait, euh, tu vois, Eng avant, je pense que tu savais, mais chez Gambit, il travaillait pour la plupart des choses tout seul. Et du coup, forcément, comme il est habitué à tout faire tout seul, il avait du mal à déléguer au début. Et moi, comme tu as dit, je pense que j'ai le rôle d'assistant coach, mais moi, je ne me vois pas du tout comme ça. Et même, je pense que pour le marché ou même pour la scène, il ne me voit pas du tout comme ça. Je suis plus un second head coach ou voire coach, pas vraiment head coach, mais coach, on va dire. Un coach, mais sans les responsabilités du head coach. Un coach assistant avec de l'écho <rire> non, non, non. coach qui aime les caméras <rire> Non, non. Non, non j'aimerais bien, j'aimerais bien. Mais en vrai, non, c'est... En fait, je pense que justement, mon ego est en train de se construire parce que Eng est quelqu'un qui est respecté par tout le monde et il me laisse de la place. Et justement, en fait, ça me fait construire un ego, mais pas forcément un mauvais côté de l'ego. C'est que j'ai plus confiance en moi, je vais plus de l'avant, euh, je demande pas vraiment l'autorisation pour faire des choses, je, vais, je fais les choses comme je veux et il me full trust. Donc, euh, en fait... Comme j'ai dit au début, j'avais vraiment du mal à trouver ma place parce que j'ai une personnalité, comme tu as dit, qui prend de la place, mais de la bonne place dans une équipe. Et là, au début, j'avais du mal à trouver mes marques et il m'a tout de suite mis en mode, quand on a eu une autre discussion, il m'a dit « fais ce que tu veux, t'inquiète, juste préviens-moi sur certaines choses, etc. » et c'est tout. Mais c'est tout ce que tu n'avais pas avec moi, en fait. <rire> c'est terrible. Non, ouais. non vraiment, bah, fr franchement, euh, comme, je, comme je dis toujours, bah, est-ce que je serais là aujourd'hui si tu m'avais pas donné ma chance à l'époque chez Vita J'en sais rien, tu vois, tu sais jamais de quoi le destin est fait. Et malgré l'année dernière catastrophique, on a quand même fait de très bons résultats avant. Avant, ouais. Genre, euh, ensemble, euh, à part euh, un split, malheureusement, on a eu énormément de problèmes euh, en interne, etc. Mais euh... Moi, je veux te demander un truc. Est-ce que enfin tu dors la nuit avant les matchs filles ou est-ce que tu continues les prépas nuit blanche Est-ce que enfin est il... mes cernes, regardez mes cernes, la réponse Vraiment est non. Yuen te fait pas dormir et te force. Bah, pas en fait, il me force, mais c'est comme d'habitude. Tu me connais. Mon, mon envie de n'avoir aucun regret après un match et genre me dire que je m'en fiche de dormir 
quitte à avoir le truc parfait au point près, je préfère faire ça. Et de toute façon, j'ai pas besoin de jouer. Si je jouais, bah forcément, je prendrais plus de repos, etc. Mais comme je joue pas, genre je me dis que c'est pas grave si je suis fatigué. Je préfère faire le truc parfait pour mon équipe et comme ça ils ont toutes les clés en main pour gagner le match que de euh, bah, toute façon tu me connais de travailler trois ans avec moi ça c'est sûr que ta détermination n'a pas changé ça me fait <rire> tellement plaisir de te retrouver Ahmed avec un grand sourire et des super <rire> résultats merci à toi pour, euh, pour ces petits échanges c'est assez marrant quand même de se trouver comme ça ouais. et euh, ah well you've heard him he's very motivated and still working at night so you know him and good luck to gentlemen they will need it no way he said that <laughs> wow Wow, they are here. They are hyped up. Ok, Carmine, est-ce qu'on a encore du monde qui peut faire du bruit Vous avez déjà plus de voix. Là, franchement, gentlemen, je ne sais pas s'ils sont assez pour vous. Faites du bruit, Carmine Ok. It will, it will be the same on the server. Oh, this, this the same. kind of energy. Yeah, yeah, same energy. It will be too really easy. Just energy. All the way on the right will crush them. I love this side of you, PM. I love this side of you. Uh, Casey fans, you are doing amazing here. I hear all of you. Uh, but I want to throw this over to Tom and Steele. How's the Gentlemates Corner doing? I don't know, Sue. I think we've definitely got more Gentlemates fans in the house today. Yeah! I, I can't even hear anything else that's being said over the top of these guys. Steele, you excited for this match? Yeah, it should be a good one. I've been competing against Existence for, uh, I don't even know, like 14 years now, and he's always cooked up the strats, so I'm expecting some more of that. Well, should we give it over to the, the French pretenders over back on the other side? Oh, come on, guys. Are you gonna let, you gonna let him have that? Come on, come on, Casey fans. We're louder than them. We're louder than them. I didn't hear you cheer there, PM. Go on. I don't need to. I actually coached <laughs> existence back in the day, oh. about 10 years ago, so won't be an issue to beat him now. Oh, okay. I like this energy we're giving so far. Uh, but there is a reason that we are here, Monster fans. There's a reason that we're giving this level of energy because, of course, we have the French derby coming up. Casey versus Gentlemates. Some of these players are doing uh, so well in the league right now. Uh, of course, PM. Casey, they made it all the way to Masters Madrid. Some of these young guns coming in are looking so, so, so good. So talk me through your views on uh, Narrate and Martin right now. Well, for them, it will be easy. There is no, you know, backstory for them. But actually, Thomas, he, he was uh, beaten by gentlemen in Ascension. And so was Takas. And Takas was kicked out of KC back then. So the rivalry is really, really strong here. Yeah, we have a, we have a deep rivalry here. But as I mentioned, uh, Tom and Steele, uh, these boys, they just came back from Masters Madrid. What were your boys doing? Having a nice vacation? <laughs> I think they were working hard. They were preparing for this game. They're looking good and strong and solid and thick and tight. <laughs> 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 we got baguettes back here as well. Like we're, I think we're on point. We're ready for this on this side of the table here. And we got, uh, we got the... What is this? What does Enzo play? Oh my god, he we got to... doesn't make it into the French derby. No, we, no, he doesn't. <laughs> He's not good enough for that one. <laughs> well, I think all we need to do really is just... I think we have the sound on our side. Gentlemen fans, you're going to make some noise? Yeah! I just don't think you can beat that. Like talking about the fact that existence is on our side. They've had to bring in people from across the globe. Is it even really a French team anymore, Sue? Oh, I mean, a, a win is a win, I feel like at this point. And there's been a lot of wins uh, for Casey. Let's talk about the French player, Shin. Of course, he was there when you were there as well. Uh, talk me through how he can maybe come in and disrupt some of the gentlemen's game plans today. Well, Shin has the experience of VCT previously, obviously. And He has no issue to play against former teammates and friends. He will teach them what he's teaching them on the team speak after the games. He's telling them how it's done and he will show them to them now. Oh, uh, they talk on the server, right? They save the talk on the server. They don't, uh, they don't need to do all this noise jump mumbo jumbo. But I'm going to ask one more time, you guys. Are you guys really going to let Gentlemate fans out scream you? Come on. Come on, Casey. <laughs> Go on, Tom. Be that. You know what? I'm on this side right now, but you know, I like how Casey oh, plays. No, God, just oh, get this man out of here. It's not the first time the he's Casey betrayed side. someone. Gentlemen, fans, give that man a boo! Give him a boo! Let's go! Let's go, John.
Josh, where are you at? Come join us. Come join us. <laughs> the absolute traitor in the server. Ah, well, uh, we have two teams ready on the side. Let's send it down to Lou to bring out Casey and Gentlemates. Welcome. Welcome to the VCT EMEA French Derby. In today's match, the stakes are high, with two communities engaging in a clash of titans. If your heart beats blue, you'll find in K-Corp the freshness of young blood. But if it beats pink, then you might want to look up to gentlemates, the heroes of EMEA's ascension. This challenge is for the fearless. It's not about participation. It's only about victory. Cette rivalité passionne la France depuis des semaines et ça y est, nous y sommes. Carmine Corp face à Gentlemates, c'est maintenant. Mesdames et messieurs, l'heure est venue de choisir votre camp. Chaque, chaque semaine, l'épisode est attendu et ça y est, nous y sommes. Le Shonen Kakor n'aura pas fini de vous surprendre. Pour commencer, qui de mieux que le personnage principal Au shérif, au marshal, Narrate Chaque histoire a son méchant et du FC dueliste, il est le président, le seul et l'unique, Mordu Que des numéros 10 dans cette formation et l'IGL ne fait pas exception. L'incomparable Magnum Derrière ce sourire malicieux se cache la malveillance max. Pour passer sur son site, tu dois payer la taxe. Thomas Chou France et l'Algérie n'ont Dieu que pour lui. Au sein de sa jeune équipe, il maintient si bien l'harmonie. C'est Chine À la sueur de leur front, ils ont dominé l'ascension. Fraîchement adoubés chevaliers, gentlemates viennent assiéger le VCT. Roi de France, deux fois sacré, c'est désormais à l'Europe d'y passer. Il affronte son ancien club pour triompher. King Takas Un gentleman qui sauve tous les routes comme les princesses en détresse. C'est bien lui, le de Turquie, meneur d'un maguerri, sur le serveur, jamais il ne tarie, le capitaine Beignaz Une race qui persiste à surprendre, un phénix qui chaque fois renaît de ses cendres, c'est le petit prince Na Il est le cadre incarné des clutches, il est le plus grand chevalier. Wellers Ils font l'unanimité, ils forcent le respect. Accueillez avec moi deux coachs 5 étoiles qui vont aujourd'hui nous faire l'honneur de s'affronter. up in front of us here, Mike. I mean, these two teams, it's uh, got the crowd on their feet. They're Definitely, riled up. Yeah. Um, but we need to start talking about where this is going to go down, right? These two teams should know each other very well, but yet have never officially met on the server like this in these sort of environments. 
No, they haven't. And to be honest with uh, the veto coming up here, it's yeah. going to be really interesting to see. Uh, I mean, obviously, bands aside, actually where we end up playing here. We're going to see a Scent and Bind taken out here. Okay. Kicking things off on splits, where uh, KC have shown a lot of a lot of talent, uh, but actually we haven't seen Gentlemates play actually either here for Icebox as well, That's Lauren. That's huge. Mike, I, oh, now now talk to me. Split and Icebox never seen from Gentlemates. That's ridiculous, right? Like, if we're talking about this, we're walking into the unknown. And is that a benefit for existence? Is that a benefit for Aang? Where do you sit on this sort of stage? I mean, if you, if, if you kind of look at KC from, a, I guess, a stylistic standpoint, it's it's all about structure, right? So mm. these being real curveballs in terms of there being no tape. There's no tape. Yeah, there's nothing really for for KC to really prep from. So that, that could give Gentlemates the upper hand, I, I guess, initially on the start of these maps. Whether or not they can run away with them, we'll have to wait and see. But isn't this the perfect example of what we can hope to see, right? You've got Eng, this mastermind, always touted as such a great mentality towards the game. Hopefully his boys are ready to go on this because, again, for KC, we haven't seen this in a hot minute either. They don't have recent reps on these maps, but no. at least they have some. No, they, they, they don't. Obviously, we saw uh, Split versus Sentinels over in Madrid, yep. uh, and also, obviously, Icebox versus FPX. So yes. uh, there, there is definitely something to take away from that. Obviously, the, the other um, appearances being back at kickoff as well. Whether or not things have changed massively from them, I, I think Casey have probably established themselves in terms of the way they want to play Valorant, in terms of the compositions. We're not necessarily going to see massive changes in that regard, but do we see Gentlemates follow through? through with the same sort of ethos. But this is the canvas, right? We've got now Gentlemates with a real prospect of painting this how they want to. And they're fired up. Both of these sides want to prove a point. Again, love a derby match when you get to see these kind of regional sides clash. They normally end up a bit topsy-turvy. They always seem so aware of each other, so hyper-aware. But now, if you're going to tip this one side or the other, are you going to wait till you see the comps? Because, hey, if Gentlemates are in the server, you don't know quite what's coming yeah, out yet. Yeah, I mean, it's... It's difficult, really. Obviously, with that, 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 that performance versus foot from KC, there's probably some questions about how they came away from Madrid. I guess feeling about yes. themselves, feeling about their own performance. But um, I, just based on the appearances we've seen, you, you've got to give the edge to, to KC here. Yeah, Unless gentlemen's come out and they can run away with the same sort of uh, dare I say, Phoenix sort of compositions well, in the tank, absolutely a feasting once again. Those are the sort of things that will catch them off guard. Once those kind of tendencies are question marks and gentlemates can really kind of toy with that idea, then KC might struggle. Hey, you spoke it into existence. The tank locking in the Phoenix here. First time we're going to get to see them Double run jewelers. this on split, and you're absolutely right. Dakas as well, sitting towards the jet. So we've got quite a nice old composition, very gentlemates-esque, right? I think if you're facing this team, you're somewhat expecting it. How do you look towards Carmichael here, though? What is standing out to you? Anything that's really tickling your fancy? Do you think this is more standard from them coming in with a good adjustment? Uh, I mean, it, yes, it, it feels more standard, like I said, in terms of the way that we know KC like to play. Um, obviously, Martin and, and Narey have been absolutely the headliners for this absolutely. roster. Alongside that as well, obviously, the switch-ups between Magnum, Tomazzi and Shin here, I think it still buys into that same sort of game plan. Or if we'll be on the server. Next couple of minutes now until we get ourselves ready to go. But again, I, I think by all standards leading into this, yes, Casey should have, I'd say, the upper hand. But if there was a situation, if there was a circumstance you could create, Gentlemates have done that. They've walked Carmine Core into the unknown. They've got tape on Carmine Core. There's none to be had on Gentlemates. So it's learning on the fly. This puts a lot of pressure on the likes of Magnum in-game leadership in the server, Absolutely, live in yeah. front of you. That's a lot for him to handle. And it tests that recovery factor, which I guess we haven't necessarily seen uh, okay. kind of on a macro level from Correct. KC previously. Bigger picture maybe, yes. but yeah. Which again, with um, KC definitely establishing themselves regionally this year, you need to go through series like this to really run the tests and, uh, and actually have those outcomes, right? Have, have that to go away and prep further on. Well, lights out and away we go. Diving into this Carmine Core will be on that defending side and that means the gentlemates get to set the tone, set the tempo. And I want to see how they look here. This is completely new to our eyes. How well is this crafted? A slow start here. Martin wants to kind of shoulder. We'll try and deal with the dog, but actually forced back a little deeper here. Got to avoid the stun coming through. It actually does TP out. Back up to, down to 40, actually. Look towards heaven. Look to the amount of rotations there. They're putting so much stock and faith behind this. They have pulled everyone over here, but look to where the spike is. Other side of the map. It's all a ruse. And they've succeeded, and then some. Well, they've they'll sold get a plant. It, yeah. 
but I'm looking for maybe a late lurk in middle, because of course now the penny's dropping for Carmine Core. They're going, guys, there's no one else here. It was just in a tank running at us. But I like this deeper positioning coming out from Takas as well, trying to get a foothold towards CT. Pain Shell gonna come in. That should catch a bit of damage, but it's actually Takas to fall. That's an issue. Losing ground towards CT could cause problems here. That's tough though as well with the paranoia available. Definitely could have made the play off that. Whaler's revealed also. Cover so has to respect this pressure coming through. Gonna be oh lovely paranoia. Didn't quite catch the earlier players dropping down, leaving Logan with it all to do. And it's five standing from Carmine Court. Collected, worked as a unit, diligent on retaking that space towards CT, playing from heaven as a collective. It all lined up there, Mike. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love the approach here from Gentlemen. It's like I said, able to sell that fake really effectively. Unfortunately, can't really convert that into, you know, space taken away ahead of the rotation of KC. Whether well, or not another, you know, three or four seconds would make the difference here. Set an opportunity. Takas and Whalers to get something done on the back of the paranoia here. I mean, even no! the, the dash pop preemptively sort of signifies the, you know, Takas's intent in that situation. Whether or not, I mean, initially they're expecting somebody still to be there ahead of obviously no, no spike audio cue given away on a site. It's looking like we're going to be in for a game of the fakie boys here. The vast majority of gentlemates posturing towards me, but I kind of like this approach of taking space, some commitment from Carmine Corp. Apply that pressure, force gentlemen to use that very limited amount of utility they'll be coming in here with just to clear through B main potentially, but again, the spike is trying to bury its way through towards A. Nothing seen so far for Martin, however, you can see where that spike is. Bayaz up towards heaven now. And if they can get a plant, maybe cost a, a body or two. You'd be happy enough. Well, gentlemen, it's probably just testing the waters here. Oh, God. Well, testing the waters to try and get that orb in the tank and Shin. Quick on the punish. She gets a ton of damage onto wow. Takas. Well, was tagged up earlier in the round, but down to two HP now. They're just not being given chances. Look how deep Carmine Cora is sitting towards the safe yeah. side as well. Maybe noting, obviously, the flash that came through. So they are aware that someone was on this side of the map, but I like this, left. playing very, very passive, not allowing them to close that gap. Yeah, the pro this is sort of a pro ground for gentlemen. and Casey don't really want to give too much of the game away here. Don't want to show any of these deeper setups, so... ...to force their hand in that regard. They can work for it a little bit. Get away with the plant here, though. It's not bad. Ten seconds is going to fall in the meantime. He was Spike tagged up very planted. early. Can they cost Carmine Core a body? Keep in mind, the first lap round was flawless. Well, they get two back to back. Still Whalers. two sheriffs here. Yeah, Whalers does have one, Logan the other, and we know what Logan can do. Yeah. That's a throwback, if you remember it, but man's got talent, and it's Tomasi to find Whalers. Logan is going to find some damage and need a lot wow. more. He's going to take down two. I mean, plant two kills. You're not too upset, but for Carmine Core, business as usual. I'm not necessarily sweating too much just yet. No. Numbers advanced on the way back in, so. It's that tough to really make anything happen with these two sheriffs. Enemy down. Down. Spot that one from Tom as he just yeah. straight one through the smoke. Remaining. Yeah, this is the one here where maybe an inkling how gentle mates want to approach in terms of the bigger picture here on the attack. Early on, obviously, trying to pump a fake in the, the pistol, which was effective, but I guess lost out in terms of capitalizing elsewhere after the plant comes through. Toxins going up. Okay. Same, similar wall towards A. Logan. So we're going to try and keep that maintained. And the early pressure towards middle as well. So Dog going to be committed up towards heaven, sees nothing. Tomasi will be waiting on the other side towards Vent. So again, just cycling through the smokes. It's the early pump now. I wonder if Casey clear off the back of this or if they pause. I'm looking to see if they retake this space. They are gathering up towards heaven. Maybe a pop flash through the smoke here could force Tomasi off the angle. Yeah, fully blinded. Shin and Narate, though, in unison. And Gentlemates just walking into a trap. Carmine Core will re-clear that space. They will double-check for that. Both duelists fall as well. So it really takes the punch out of any further attempt that Gentlemates will have here. Logan, I guess initially himself in alert, but he will be the front man for the remaining three of Gentlemates. Poison's off. 
Again, Martin not giving anything away here. Happy to commit towards a retake. Playing so disciplined. And I guess that's the F. It's going to be kind of this double front line from Gentle Mates. Uh, Carmine Core are going to look towards mid. They're, they're going to look to remove seconds. that pressure point so that you know, the site retake is a little easier. Well, actually, any site execution after that is a little easier without your duelists. Again. You can already see the early utility being used by Magnum as well. Very aware they'd want to take that space towards CT. So going to force them away, push them a little bit deeper towards the side. Whalers needs to over deliver here. He can only get one in a trade for Tomasi. Now Carmine Core removing all of that safety, all of that space. Logan overwhelmed. It's all on Bay as he can only do so much. Carmine Core, so regimented. Mike, I, I, the last couple of rounds, they've looked disciplined, they've looked diligent and they look well rehearsed how to deal with a team like Gentlemates. Yeah, and like I said, with these two duelists, that's what, that's what ultimately what Gentlemates want to achieve, is to really, you know, kind of get themselves into a pressure point and, and remove that structure, remove the comfort that KC have from playing like this. Unfortunately, Gentlemates lose now, here in the buy round, early on in mid. Like I said, it, it, it takes away that, that bite towards any sort of execution. This place is still going to have uh, some funds to invest here. Logan's going to be the one to struggle. At least, oh, call it rifles across the board. And coming into round four, still no ultimate for the tank. He's been well handled, well controlled so far, and even here, yeah. Magnum denying this orb. And, and again, it feels like Carmine Core have come into this with a priority list. And, and again, yeah, there's no tape on Gentlemates here, but their play style is still their play style, right? You still know what you're kind of coming up against when you're against Gentlemates. That high priority on getting the ult on the tank, the high priority on how they play the splits, the fakes they love to try and pull. So again, they look prepared. Magnum's got to be careful. Could have been overwhelmed there. You can see on the X-ray how close to danger he was, but again, the tether really hindering that. Yeah. Perfect application. Eyes on the right here. He's only one off the showstopper. And as he tested on ramp, and Logan actually comes out on top. Now, yep, that's not bad. That's an upgrade to be had. And now they're losing some of that space, some of that safety. Taking over heaven. Dakas going to find Magnum taken away from the side of the cross. Isn't secured. Narrate still standing. And he's seen so many bodies. Shin tries to swing back down in. He's down to Martin and Narrate. He's bumped he the rocket. He's trying to. Does he find anyone in time? He absolutely does. Baez goes down. 2v2 now. Both locked down. Look where the spike is. This is now a standoff. Who blinks first? The angle so good for Martin, but Narrate. Bails him out, trying to come back through. All right, digging his heels into that round. That looked close from Gentlemates. Yeah, definitely, but both sides of the coin here. You can see initially, KC up to the challenge. Losing two members, happy to go toe-to-toe -to -toe and kind of equalize that advantage. And then it just comes down to solid fundamentals at the end here. The trading, perfect between Martin and Narrate. Right. And how many times did we kind of lead into that narrative when we're talking about Carmine Core previous to now, right? It's the fundamentals nice! that we really Let's enjoy go! from them. That pumped up, man. And, and again, the fundamentals just mean the, the spacing, the trading. There is so much about how this team approaches this game that gave people that look back on your, you know, your gambits, the, the Eng approach, right? That everyone Chips likes seeing Eng again. Ethos, yeah. <laughs> and it works, right? And you're seeing glimpses of it here. I think a lot of us got a little worried after Madrid and then could they bound back after, you know, having the first real test of faith in the system, right? They faced incredible opponents, didn't quite pass the, the mustard there. And then, okay, could they pick back up? And it looks like they've fallen back into good habits here, but first time out called for Gentlemates and it's early. Existence needs to have a chat with the boys because they are not having the impact they would have wanted. No, they're not, especially with a comp like this. It, it, it's, uh, well, to have a Sky backing up, obviously a Phoenix yeah. and a Jet. You do want to see that kind of frontline success very early on from the get-go, to be honest with you. Only really had one out of these four rounds where it's Takas to open things up. I mean, actually, well, it was Logan actually to open up the, the previous, but Takas to follow up on that. Caution here. But yeah, I haven't necessarily seen them really fully invest towards sending Takas and the tank forwards. There. Slow burn through mid that wasn't Caution's successful. Yeah, need to see an attack get activated. Yet to uh, even get on the board kill-wise, so for him, not the start he'd be hoping for. And it looks like Carmine Core kind of reading this as, you know, once again, maybe one of those mid-pieces that we know that Gentlemates have been running. But actually, it's Martin. Confirms attendance, that's Logan now removed. And they've already responded. You've already seen the players being pulled over. Tomasi starting to lean a little bit closer in towards those vents. 
gun here. My gentlemen, don't want to force the issue just yet. Still some time to play with, but eyes towards mid here as the tank. I'm trying to find something okay. through and well. Where was that crosshair? Because it wasn't on him. It wasn't on Shin, that's for sure. <laughs> hey, if you're in a tank, you take him when you get him. You've not been having the best of starts. Maybe that's a nice little confidence booster. But now they've had a pick kind of in middle. It's, it's, it's left a hole in KC, right? Now, how do they fill this? How do they plug that? We've already seen the response from Magnum to come back over towards heaven. I was going to say, yeah, with this smoke going up, it almost starts to sell a fake, but... 30 seconds left. Magnum. Got to put a body behind it, though. Got to do yeah, I was going to say, the problem being, Bayaz has now slipped in, got this weapon, which won't be confirmed. They still don't have the site. Look how many bodies are here. There's still two bodies on this site. They have nothing to break them away from it. And they've got 14 seconds. I think they've run it a little late. The concept was correct, but Carmine Core unfazed by this. Spike now left towards heaven. It's too late in the day. Narrate and Magnum. Mopping them up. Needs to be quicker on that, Mike. Yeah, chance for Bayas to slip into the back lines here with Narrate still kind of holding down the fort on B, but I guess a little bit of hesitance on his part. We make that rifle work, and it's five unanswered now. I mean, other than this kill, really difficult for Gentle Mace to really find a pressure point. Ten seconds left. Or, or even focus together on a pressure okay. point. Mm. There ain't snappy on the adjustment there. About to satchel. It looked like he was about to satchel. Oh, he's, he's learning where the camera is. But Ultimate's now finally coming online for Gentle Mace in round six. Yeah, but look at the stack. Look how many people are waiting on this side. They've read it. They've read this so well. They've read them like a goddamn book. Magnum. Sends him away, even with all of this. Carmine Core have Gentle Mates' number. The entries are not working out. They've lost out on Takas and the tank again in a blink of an eye. You have to keep an eye on these rounds where they're falling even ahead of where Gentle Mates are getting set up. They even get themselves in a position to choreograph some of these sight hits. Now back into a position where a minute left on the clock. Having to walk back around the map. Try and isolate a player on the side of KC. Yeah, not going to get much here. Tomazzi shouldering. Snakebite will go in, expecting the peak to come through. Yeah, actually does put the first look. Yeah, that's quick for the trade. But even with this pick, there's still two players posted on either side of the yeah. map, and it's going to be very hard to disrupt them. As you highlighted, Bayaz does still have some utility to play with, so maybe could be a little bit more disruptive, but we're down to 30 seconds. And yeah, Tomasi caught enough of a shoulder there just as he came left. back through on the peak. Flashed in, swings. Still playing patiently. Forced off the angle, and he's just playing in his teammate. He's playing in Martin. This is that work in unison. Lovely synergy between the players on Carmine Court. It's stunning. That is absolutely stunning. It just felt unthreatening. Carmine Court never looked pressured there. No. I've no, not seen that really in many rounds, to be honest. Back to the same point once again. Gentle is unable to really find a pressure point. Ooh. Tough now, six unanswered. Already have one timeout through, and it looks as if there's been much of an adjustment or, uh, I mean, much success on the back of that. It looks like we are in a timeout here for Gentle Mates uh, again. Yeah, and whether or not we're going to see much of an adaptation after this, to be honest with you. Because, like I said, this isn't even coming down to, you know, getting the tank set up for an ultimate or get, you know, Takas into a position where, you know, the utility can really set him in motion. It's not even getting to that point in the round. Yeah. The um, slow burns aren't working for gentle mates and that they haven't even been able to get towards the site to explode. Yeah, this, is, this has been a really tough matchup for gentle mates here so far. Not having the beginning they wanted, obviously. And then off the back of that, uh, again, we're seeing a lot of the key elements, those kind of core pillars of what Carmine Core looked good with in kickoff. And a glimpse of it in Madrid, obviously not enough to get them the victories they wanted, but enough that made us kind of get on board the Carmine Core train, right? So how do you disrupt that? You've got Narei popping off, brilliant. You've got Shin, not necessarily over-delivering, but being as solid as he was before. And then you have the mentality and approach. Right, I was wondering if general mates could be disruptive enough. I think so far they have not been. They've not been able to reach that point yet. And I want to see if maybe this is when Carmine could turn the screws themselves. Barely caused a ripple, to yeah. be honest with you. Yeah. I mean, main objectives here early on is to force an adjustment of KC on the defensive side, right? Force them into stacking towards an area of the map, an extremity maybe, but 
they're happy to just kind of rotate through these setups here and the difference this time being a viper's pit over towards b so we'll see that focus shift towards mid maybe towards vents a little bit Tends to may see it much earlier this time around and haven't taken too much damage. I was about to say, first time we've really seen this top mid control gained without losing any player for it. Yeah, and the tank taking a little bit of chip damage, but that's fine. I want to see what happens now to Carmichael. Come They've been pushed go. away from this. The Wraith Satchel opting up. correctly to back away. Doesn't want to entertain what the tank's trying to do, which is take this space. <sighs> trying to close that gap, though, the tank. Couldn't quite make it there in time. Couldn't Didn't quite see anything, the players yeah. either. So they are very nearby on CT. And of course, they do know that Tomasi well, is somewhere that around this ult. They're going to invest their own. So yeah, we'll give them control of sight here. But Fight problem player. being, Martin where's, where's has his safety? ultimate. We'll be able to ping out some players here, potentially, on the inside. Yeah, Takas, though. Going to be on finding Shin. Magnum now under scrutiny, under pressure. Let me close down on. This is really messy here. Dipping between the two alts. Still can't quite identify where they've gone. It's Martin to find a tank. Wailers to respond. And now one of the pits drop. Back and forth. Martin and Narate, the last two standing, trying to close in. They can't quite get there. Narate, the last one alive. And he's been given no entry points to this. No one willing to try and challenge him now. The gentleman's looking to try and evacuate the site. This could be the first step in a long road back. But it is the first step and a necessary one at that. Chaotic to say the least. And it's unfortunate. KC can't get a kill off Martin's ultimate here. I'm not sure if just the sight lines or Gentleman adjusting to be able to break line of sights. I mean, with obstacles in the way to prevent any spam kills coming through. Really well considered. That's yeah, maybe that's the kill that did change that. Because I think I believe Takas was the first to be pinged out in between the two yeah, pits yeah, there. Yeah, he was. Oh. So maybe that is Shin dropping to try and find that open up. Like you said, first on the on a long road back into this half potentially. Burn up some ultimates as well though. TP now from Whalers. Committed into the spawn. Okay. Hello. Now confirmed as well. I don't know if Magnum got caught. He did! Whalers pushing forward, but Martin succeeded on the other side of the map. Over towards that A main. And that spike is deep down towards it. So again, this is still topsy turvy. This game getting very, very volatile. Narate secured the threat towards CT. So they take back control towards A. And again, they've got themselves a man advantage here. Even with all that chaos, Carmichael still come out with numbers. Pacey and decisive though from Casey to remove that backline threat. Especially with Martin. Oh, wow. A bit unconsidered here from Tamazi. Punished That's from a, a creep out of B main here. It's huge as well. It gives them so much more room to work with. Yeah, Martin's still got some kit, but the tank's in a good position here. All right. All the way around the world here. Probably going to see KC hold position for the time being. Here. Yeah. Going to note that TP. Ah, he almost caught him. Not quite close enough, though. Shin gets to keep himself standing. Looking at this flank, though, coming in. The Paranoia got sent. Does Narate get a freebie? No. No one's He's open to this right now. now. As well. I don't know if it's been noted, but it looks kind of like they're looking this way. Yeah, absolutely are, but somehow Narate knows. Takes down Takas, but it's a win on the side for the tank. Flying in, yes, but it doesn't matter. The tank's still standing. Gentlemates, make it to a second. Now they're starting to come online here. The tank get himself on the board, finally with a couple of kills to his name. Bladestorm available, everything else spent so far in the last couple of rounds here. And this is even after actually Whalers finds an open one to Magnum. I guess it's the same sort of thing, right? They're very, very eager to deal with this backline. Oh, the tank the second kill there, beautiful really to shin. Nice. Able to deny the trade coming through. Oh, that little well. smile. Careful now. Wholesome coach camp. You don't get many of them. No, no he did have Barbar, I guess. Yeah, well, I mean. yeah. That's why I miss Mini. Scout destroyed. Mostly because he just seems like upset. That's kind of funny. But uh, Shin. Oh. 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 oh, it's not gone well. How's he alive? <gasps> How's he, How he alive? How did he take down Whalers? What's going on here? Oh, God, right out of the sky. Takas gets put in his grave. This is all going a bit Pete Tong here. Bayaz on the trade out. We're down to a 3v2. The tank and Logan. Logan's position needs to Magnum's be good, but the problem is that Magnum's still here. Now that's just heartbreak. The tank's got to deliver. Show me something special here. The tank get a really nice end to that last round. 
1v3, able to slip away with the spike here. Yeah, so a chance to reset, 45 seconds left on the clock. I was curious if Magnum was going to drift a little further down mid there, maybe catch a footstep, but... Looking like he might just get the plant. It's a lot on the tank, though. I mean, you look at the utility between Magnum left. and Martin, though. Yep. Plenty of obstacles they can, along the way. It'd be so hard to try and get out of this yeah, unscathed I mean, or noted. The tank's noted. got a flash, but... <laughs> the chances of you ever flashing all three on the other side planted. with that. You're praying either that you get a 1v1, right? Which is... I mean, if it's Carmine Core, it's very unlikely. Or you catch him off guard on some ungodly timing. Planted open, so maybe looking to punish, but does he try and subvert expectation by taking a quick fight? He does. Not got what he wanted there. He wanted that clean, and he's not getting it clean. Ah, oh, it was laboured in the end to Massey. Just simply numbers matter there. The tank didn't get the kill he wanted at the start. Couldn't then readjust towards heaven, but I you can maybe, see the yeah, idea. Maybe looking for the reset here so he can molly from heaven as well. Yeah. Maybe just run the clock down on that initial contact, but doesn't come to fruition. How the hell Shin survives initially and still gets a kill? Beyond me. The rate, though, starting to light up the leaderboard. 12 and 5. Yeah, he's a bit of a monster, isn't he? Yeah. No surprise there. <laughs> Kelsey Time to jump. Here. On topic for the day. I say, well done. Oh. <laughs> GCSE level French now. Absolutely exhausted. Um, we do have the ult for the tank, so keep that in your mind. We do have Bayazes and Takas, so it's actually pretty good for once. Looking like they want to high prioritize that mid control. And again, gonna get it here. I'm patiently waiting to say cleanly, because I do see them kind of congregating towards heaven as well. So as it stands, they've got what they wanted initially. Yeah, Spike not committed this time around, so it looks as if gentle mates are back to square one in terms of early round explorations. Do they have... Uh, I mean, Bears has a flash, but are you going to use it this close by? How do they clear close? Well, that's a problem. Because they've already explored over towards B main as well. Yeah. They know what's happening. Confirmation on both sides of the map. Oh, God! It's a blend up! And there's no real escaping it. The tank trying to bail him out, but look at the HP. Look at the damage he just suffered that. He can try and heal himself up for a second or two. I don't know if he's going to get everything he wanted from this, but still... Get numbers advantage, Carmine Core just, they don't give up needless kills. And look at the flank, if you missed it, take a glimpse towards Sewer. Two of them creeping closer. She's just going to leave one to follow along that pathing. Sitting on the off angle towards heaven as well, Magnum here. Yeah, should be good for one time. Down a 10, Stana run real low on time here. They have to commit towards the site and they can't back away because look who backfilled it. Narrate. Read this well, there's no escape, no way out. Four seconds, and the rate wants to let him know, as does Shin. This is Carmine Core's map for a very good reason. Starting to look a little more like a clinic here. Six round gap. Gentleman's clinging to life in terms of this half. Tomazzi, a beautiful open here. Unfortunately, not to find the reset on the running back as well. Yeah. Like you said, in the tank, not even an opportunity to fully nice, heal off boys. that anyway. Back down to Sheriffs for Gentlemates. Ultimate, well, done and dusted for this half, it feels like. Yep. This is, this is a little worrying. It's a little worrying. Oh dear. Tank, yeah, needs a ton of damage. He's already thrown the, the molly in, so he's only got the wall to heal. But he doesn't even have a wall here. Look at the reaction, though. You've got five players willing to brawl in middle. Carmine Core, yeah, they're making it hurt. They're just setting him up for more success. Shin, Narei, they said, all right, you want to play explosive? We'll do the same. We'll run you down middle. You want middle? Take it from us. And they can't. Logan now is a million miles away. But he does have a sheriff, and it is Logan. Yeah. And we've seen something like this before on a map like this. <laughs> yeah. All right, Logan. Mitch somewhere in the studio having heart palpitations right now. Did Enzo come in the camera or something? Okay. Well, KC have completely given this space up. And Logan has to shift walk through it to worry about all these angles. Again, you won't get a clean 1v1 down here in Sushi. 
Oh. Okay, rifle. Oh, well, you're now almost bet against Logan. Oh. 30 seconds oh. left. <laughs> okay. Do they just check on the spike? I'm not sure if Tomasi can actually see that. I think similar to the previous round, they're just happy to, in a 3v1 with the yep. tank previously, happy to give up the plant. I mean, they still have, if it gets real dice, you've got Martin's ult, you've yeah. still got so much kit on Magnum. Close uh, enough to hear this left, now, yeah. so. Spy planted. That's an awkward plant spot as well that Logan settled for. Well, here we go, Logan. If you've got some magic, pull it out now. Not to be Carmine Core again, Mike. These guys, they're not making mistakes here today. No, they're not. There's absolutely zero overheat None. from KC. Almost militant in approach. Yeah, absolutely drilled on this. I just, again, watching them play, I, I kind of love the juxtaposition of this round. You have this incredibly high intensity start, willing. First time we've seen them go for this active challenge in middle yeah, as well. Yeah. First time they've refought this. And then it's Logan in 1v3. They're still not going to overbeat. They're still not going to make any of these undisciplined choices. It's really enjoyable to watch. Very, very good quality Valorant coming out. Can gentlemen scrape a third together is the question, really. On a hope and a prayer. Do we want to make a go of this in the second half? Tank again, forced off that early angle, at least. Is this the Tanked paranoia? Up. Yeah, they were going for the little paranoia and Rightly combo. so. From, yeah, gentle mates to respect this. Completely disconnect from A main. But information game, heavily in favor of KC once again. Yeah, I mean, the second this stuff starts to happen, you, you, you have perfect responses made by these guys. They, they, they instantly put the player who's in addition towards A, leaves that alone. Okay, back towards mid at most. So the correct read from gentle mates is to try and readdress this A site, right? Backfill the space that maybe they feel has been cleared, but there's still going to be Martin with the get out of jail free card, right? We've heard these steps now, and Shin's got his TP, so... Well, actually, Shin doesn't even need to use it here. And one go towards Sirius here in this, being toyed with. How long does he stand on this one? Not too long. Again, doesn't want to give too much away. There's a double stack now towards top ramp as well. Yeah, rotation comes through so early on the back of Martin's deep position. God, they try to... They're reconsidering again. Well, the tank's found a lurk, sure, but... Last round, Bayer's got that freebie, basically, on Tomasi. I don't know if they can do this again. 30 seconds left. Magnum spotted. Yeah, should know now. But look at the time, 25 seconds. They're hoping that they get safe passage, but Carmine Core can catch the cross. They're disrespecting already. Magnum is playing this really well. Ooh, the timing on that is a bit, a bit dangerous, but he, he's reading it correctly, and now there's problems galore. There, they took CT. Yeah, seconds. they had a little bit of space in middle, but they still didn't secure the site. Narrates there. The tank has to come back around and try and apply the pressure from the back. Maybe a plant could be key now. This is huge. Digging their heels in. Martin makes his presence known through heaven. Now it's Martin and Shin trying to build back this round. They've got a paranoia. Chin. It's going to creep through CT. It's going to be the tank on the other side. They heard that. Backs away. Takas keeps his cool. This is going to be hard to break back in. So many angles to play the tag. Tease him up and knocks him down. Shin doesn't have much to do here, really. This is going to be a horrible round. The tank with the heroics. Got to say, that looked almost done there. It almost felt like it should have been. KC were ahead of that. Magnum spots the info in mid at exactly the right time. Even when out here, 10 seconds, spike goes down. But it's Natank who's here very late on this lurk. The one to backstab. Even here, I think the information just not being relayed quick enough to Magnum. Gets punished further on default. So call it what you want, a blessing or a curse. We have our 9-3. Yeah, we do. Uh, but a, a, a very, very tough half for gentle mates. Well, now they're on arguably one of the harder sides to try and make these sort of compositions work, right? Yeah. This is this is when you, you're especially hoping... yeah, especially when KC already demonstrated an ability to really diffuse that front line, or uh, I guess play damage control, mitigate the pressure repeatedly. And whether or not actually gentle mates with three rounds on the board have the confidence to really fully invest behind that sort of play style. A little bit of spam from Magnum. Doesn't connect towards Whalers, but going to be going for the walk in middle. Bring them Shoulder down. peak will confirm. They are going for this. Now, Rake going to try and take that space right away, though, chasing that Prowler all the way through, essentially. Whalers considers it to keep his cool. 
think he, he does. Actually, pulled the no, oh, no, sends he the paranoia, yeah. Okay. yeah. A little surprised, but they're going That's back a big towards win. heaven. I mean, yep. other than the fact they're running into a three stack here. Can Takas and Logan create a nice crossfire? It looks like the answer is yes for now, but they take down one side. Takas falls, and the... Wow, the flood towards the side worked, yeah, but Logan on a pistol, I mean, the guy is actually monstrous. But tank now back to the wall. Careful Three enough. players coming his way. Carmine Core trying to navigate the smokes. He's going to dip inside. He has a little bit of a look for himself, but he only actually finds two. Does so well to bring this to a 1v1. Shin on one side, Whalers on the other. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Despite yeah, everything. Yeah, he absolutely has. Shin, what are you going to do with this one now, though? He's read it. Oh, and he still loses out. Whalers. Critical success for Whalers there. Gets him up to four. He puts them on that comeback trajectory. So we're going to have to try and connect these together, but down to a 1v1, that was still very close. It was, yeah, and Casey kind of entertained getting down and dirty with uh, General Mates on site here. Like I said, they're probably not anticipated. When the paranoia gets invested there, yeah. I think Casey are probably reading there's an extra body or two behind that sort of utility investment, especially in a pistol round. So I don't think they're expecting to find as much resistance on B site here as they do. Cover going up. Nonetheless, General Mates, first tick in the box here for the second half. Just classics on the side of KC here. I think Takas probably playing towards an operator in the next. No shield and a sheriff. <laughs> what oh, on earth down. is that, Takas? Play yourself towards a blade storm, I guess. Yeah, take it all, mate. Bloody hell, what a monstrous round from Takas. There's a little bit of that mechanical capability on display. You're right, Bladestorm, not too many miles away. They has to shut the account down, and they managed to navigate that second round with very few threats. Yep, and get the upgrade for Tak as well, retained rifle, I should say. Mm. Uh, as expected, third round operator in hand for Takas. We know exactly what he's capable of, probably on this map as well, historically. Still remember that A side towards A side from <laughs> Takas. Yep. Certainly one of his... Uh, I don't know, probably the highlight for Takas. I think so. Yeah, it would be a fairly standard, though. We have an opportunity to hold down A main here. Bay has to clear out initially. Confirmation behind that with the flash as well, which is interesting. Bring them down. All right, this is all for the right to take over heaven. And tries to go a little further. No trade available, and Logan going to take the wind out of their sails. Does get spotted down here. I don't know if he can back away from this, but a little bit of stall might help him out. Slow the roll, Watch Seba. Out. So there's aggression, but speaking of it, the tank going to take away B main as well. well nice response. They lose heaven. They prioritize B main. You have to respect these walls from the tank. Shin obviously just eats that flash. Push. Always a possibility. Especially with the Viper in the composition as well, you have to be so conscious that the tank could be in so many different spots like around the map. Now a 3v5. Closed. KC to try and recover. Oh yeah, that's found one off screen. Yeah, this is the main part of it though. Stall comes in. <laughs> they don't want to entertain any of that. Five on the other side. Looks like it's Bayaz who wants to secure left. this. Put the full stop to the sentence, but Carmine caught. They creeping through, trying to get away a little bit. I don't think there's much more they can achieve in this round, so maybe just trying to keep these rifles. This will be a sick for gentle mates, and they've got the alt to boot as well. They've got the tank ready to go on that. You know, the Takas wasn't too far hey, away either. I mean, in my eyes, they've already done the hard work yeah. in terms of coming out. Ten seconds left. Of a first half on a 9-3 deficit. Mm. You get your jet online in the second half. Ooh. Yeah, I can't afford to give one away, but... Going to punish further, but yeah, like I said, early objectives get your jet online, get an operator in hand, yep. slow the game down a little bit, create some obstacles for KC to deal with on the fly. And that's the hard work done already. I think actually, yeah, the respect shown on the other side here from KC to call the timeout now. Yeah, I do want to see what Eng does as a reply to this because gentlemen have come out and actually looked incredibly well prepared here. I think we're seeing a lot of the, uh, let's say, keys that we liked about them actually hitting at this point. I mean, the tank doing very well. And, and considering how he started, that man was struggling to get on the board. He was struggling to get his own going. Six, seven something, or something around he's, that marker. He's breaking even, 12 and 12. Yeah, he's towards the top end of the board, at least for his side. 
So again, the Stasi generate showing a little bit of that capability we were hoping to see. On the other side, Carmichael not getting the beginning, right? Those first three rounds. Enough has happened. Enough has been shown that Eng decides, okay, let's pump the brakes here. Maybe Magnum not coming up with the right options in his mind yet, so gonna get offer a couple forward. This is the sort of thing we're alluding to, right? Yeah, but you play teams like Foot, teams like Gentle Mates, where there are question marks in terms of, you know, how do you prep versus teams that play very loose, play very reactively and yes. unorthodox. When your go-to plan of attack, as well, I say attack, but it's all based around structure and discipline and, you know, expected outcomes from certain situations. Gentle Mates are, are the ones really in the, the driving seat, I guess, in terms Decoy. of the ones to catch the other team off guard, right? Yeah. That's where Magnum will oh, be tested in-game without the support of, you know, potentially in scrims yeah. where you have that sick set of eyes. Okay, operator, check. They know that's on, eh? Satellite. They're going to continue on. Satellite. Carmine Corp try to make a buy out of very little as well. Stinger's a classic, a ghost in here, but the two rifles, one with Martin, one with Narrate. They've got to be key to this success if they want it. Spike on the other side, Gentlemen, starting to clear through the map, clear out what they can. It's, yeah, it's tough though. I mean, Bay has, has no util now for this retake. This retake is basically around the paranoia and the tank's util. Yeah, but look at this stack on pillar. That's madness. On, They're all here, barring Martin. Martin's just been left to do what you can. Try and find something, which he's done, but he was, again, one of the right falls and attack making the right work. And they're trying to keep themselves. They just caught a glimpse of another one towards Pillar. Do they? No chin. But again, it's a classic and it's a stinger. Still hard to make work. Time's on a tick, though. Can they still do more? Maybe. To... What? These are the two that hold on to the round. Takas has an operator. So he's down on just a ghost. Oh, that's obscene from Carmine Corp. Making it count in that sort of scenario just blows my mind. Felt like it was wraps pretty quick. The tank just clears yeah. through, finds like three, one of the rifles gets lost in CT. Oh, don't worry, the Stinger and the Classic's still there. I mean, that's why we saw the stack maybe towards Pillar, where those sorts of weapons do excel. True. Yeah, a tough loss here. <laughs> Tomasi's finding that one to the tank. Let's go, boys. I thought that was another kill coming out of the screen smoke there, but it's in the tank to lose out. Dropping from rafters again after the ultimate. Oof. Operator back in hand, I guess not fully reset financially. Some hope to cling on to here. Flash play out of the smoke here in mid. Dangerous, yeah, yeah, dangerous yeah, yeah, yeah. approach to an early round. <laughs> you saw them Good scarper Lord, away. Yeah. Flee, no one's blind and they're probably around the corner. Absolutely bailed out of there real quick, but yeah, really bold play. Now, I mean, I don't know how much even util that's going to co like cost Carmine Core because they already have the angle. They know one slipped down deep in mid. Yeah, you're probably going to still want to clear top side, but yeah, slow creep up. They're not that fussed by it yet. It's going to be Logan. Oh, you don't go. He's in past 30% now on his toxin. Yeah, he's committed. Oh my God, this works. Well, for one, I. Felt very individual there. I don't know if I like that. Yeah, I mean, it's going to give up some of the mid control and you're going to lose out a ton of utility in terms of denying sight lines towards A site and heaven. 30 now seconds it's going to put Bayaz on, on red alert. Okay. Yeah, information will be garnered from sight as well. So the tank revealed he's not going to have an opportunity to find a surprise flash. Oh dear, Paranoia is connected. He's trying to back away. Play his life. Lovely counter flash, but it doesn't really matter. Bayer's going to only find spike one. Down now, if the spike can make it to the site in time, all good. No harm, no foul. Left. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. And the other two are quite far away. And Takas still with that operator may not be so encouraged to go for nah. this, but. Uh, I mean, he's not. Has he got a. No, there's, there's no rifle for him to upgrade from. This gets tough. And Carmine Court, I mean, they do like to play around that pillar. Happy to sit behind it. Oh, actually, yeah, there is one up here on rafters, but again, you don't want to give away a sound cue just Last yet. We'll swap out. Takas needs to put on his cape. Make himself the hero here. Tries and <laughs> fails to Massey. Two rounds now, he's closed out by just leaping around the corner and it works. Maybe still aware there could have been an operator in play feeding himself up to the trade just in case, but still, 11 to six. Mike, I, I kind of want to roll my mind back to what happened in mid there. Don't like what Logan was up to. No. And I'm normally a Logan fan, so it feels 
a little uncomfortable to see him leaving that I mean, open. like I said, when, when you see the Toxin kind of go past four today, you're thinking he's committing no, towards this. It is, it's a one and done for your Viper very early on. In the, I, I believe oh. around the 50 second remaining mark. Uh, yeah, it's, that's a real roll of the dice that Logan's getting potentially oh, two or three in that situation where it's then going to justify itself. Yeah. The, the, the margin is just so small on yeah. a play like that. And basically, you're banking on KC starting around slow and not having minimum two players outside Sushi. They're walking this. We're going to see the flash from the tank, and there's bodies. The timing is everything. Magnum's got his all in hand. Hello, say What the hell just went on, man? The corpse of Logan confusing enough, but it's going to be Carmine cause open things up. Whalers in no man's land just get swept aside. This has become messy. This is on Takas to try and do something magnificent with assault, but. Right, planted. Hey, it's only with that Guardian. He's been spotted as well by Tomasi there. Dash about to wear down too. Uh, they're both checking on him. There's no fun fights here for the man. No, Magnum's got him dead to rights. Bayaz now. Trying to back away. Gorgeous aim, but oh my Hold god, up. Bayaz! Big Always man Bayaz almost had a round. <laughs> Big but man Bayaz. That's the one. I can't say, you know. Anything else now? I can't think of any other <laughs> bees, you know? It's big man bears. Well, he's still some threat left in that. <laughs> but yeah, really weird exchange here. Another situation where I think the tank's trying to play into. You have to respect all of this kind of control and utility. Yeah. <laughs> a sigh of relief. Yep. And a smirk from Eng. As now KC find themselves map point. Some big ultimates in hand as well. Martin. Nare and Tomazzi. See, so actually, Martin TP straight in here. Seekers invested from very deep. Really aggressive use. It's a wide open site. Yeah, he's got a nice space here. And Nare not hindered at all as well. Gonna close that straight towards CT. Doesn't get the connection he wanted, but again, if you're talking about space, he's got a fair amount of it. I mean, they've done it now because they've secured the space well, for the pit to go down. That's actually going to spread into screens as well. Yeah, that cuts off one avenue. But Genomates are out early. And they clear through this pit. Still a little bit of work for Bayas to do here, potentially. It's Shin to find Takas. Paranoia gets posted in the tank, gets slowed down, but again, they gotta push in towards this one. Start clearing on through. They can't even step in because of that snake bite. Yep, look at the combination on this. Carmine Core. Attackers win. A step ahead and a step above for a moment or two. It looked like we had a game on our hands, but Genoa is just capitulating at the end there. Yeah, I think another example of KC demonstrating their ability to really slow teams down, right? Negate some of the pressure that could potentially come from a composition like this. Now you're on the money. My mind then goes to map two, Icebox. Again, we don't know quite what we're walking into, but I've got to say, Carmine Core looked prepared for split. I wonder if that holds up on Icebox. I know a place that will break you into a thousand pieces. Stay away from them. Stay away from Lorca, Paco, and Picasso. Don't ask about Lola. I, Caballo Grande. I, Lord Nieve. But in spite of everything, it occurs to you to visit Andalusia. Don't say I didn't warn you. Be careful of the Andalusian crush. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin, former professional Counter-Strike player and Valorant coach. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle, you're going to be able to fight this. Red Bull gives you wings. Uh. Too easy. Don't stand too close, I might get hot and start
My sweat is dripping onto the table. Oh, you dirty pig. I have the best French! KC, they're back to their winning <laughs> ways. I'm now joined by Tom, Biz, and uh, Steel. Now, Steel, you were standing in the crowd for the Gentlemates fans, but you switched sides, and I think that was a Traitor. good decision. You dirty pig. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Let's calm down for a second. Yeah, well, like, when I look at how Carmine Core plays, I really like their structure and their system, specifically with their defense side protocols and how proactive they are. Um, I, I think last week they had, like, a really poor showing, but this week, like, we're starting to see why it's so good and so strong. Mm. I, I like balls out Valorant. That's what I enjoy. <laughs> it is the put down a smoke, flash through a smoke, try and get a kill. If you fail, you lose. I think that's what Channel Mates are running in this map. <laughs> that's what it felt like. At is least. the smoke the balls that you're talking about? No, balls it's just risky. No, it's, it's the fireballs risky. from the top. Yeah, oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's what I was yeah. talking about. Oh, what yeah. do you think? Yeah. Um, I'm also, I'm for, I'm for Balls out. Kind of balls. Yeah. Balls out. Yeah. You didn't want to say it again, fire did balls you? Out. <laughs> yeah, fire, the fireballs were definitely out. Uh, but this is the thing, though. Uh, they tried the Phoenix, they bring it in. It seems like they lean into it a lot. Did you guys like it? I didn't like it, so I know that like we're, we're showing that, yeah, he had the most kills and he was MVP, but I feel like it was very hard for them to find actual value with it, and a lot of the what he did was just individual plays. He had his firewall up, he takes his fireball out, throws it through the wall, goes out and catches someone that's kind of like just sitting there, like, why, you see this firewall, okay. 
what, what's happening next? Yeah. They're going to flash through and run through. Like, why are we in positions where we're just standing out in the open, not playing anti-flash or behind a wall? That doesn't make sense why he's able to repeatedly go through his own wall and, and find a kill. And speaking of Natan K, he is in the AIM Labs warm up. Of course, uh, they have Icebox coming up next as well. Tom, you want to see them reprise the Phoenix there? I, I've seen Yedoshe play it. Uh, it definitely wasn't my favorite of all of the agents. I think there's more value that can be brought out, but it's been a long time since we've seen them play this map in general. I think he's going to be a big part either way because of that individual brilliance. Like, the fact is this squad revolves around him and Takas playing risky, playing off of each other. And if he has a quieter match, even with the openers, I think it was one in four in the last map. When you're in a Phoenix, you need to be finding those opening kills. Yeah, I feel like it's going to be hard to find value as Phoenix, though, on Icebox specifically. Uh, yeah, we'll find out in just a moment. But first, we have a special interview with the Gentlemates co-founders, co Squeezy, Brooks, and they're standing by with PM. Hey guys, I'm here with the founders of Gentlemates, Squeezy and Gotar. Gotar, can you start here, bro? Happy to us! That's the anniversary! Happy birthday to us, Gentlemates! Happy birthday to us! <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. Bon anniversaire, Soufbox! So my heart is still blue, but I find pink more and more appealing to me. So guys, how is it going? I know the first map was a little bit of a disappointment, but oh. honestly, you fought, you fought well. It was uh, a good fight. It was a good fight. Uh, I know that KC are really good on split. Uh, they are really... Um, the way they are playing uh, is pretty really special. Uh, they're really stacked, and uh, they like to uh, to give you the, the bomb site and just uh, assume the retake. So. It's really hard to play against them because you have to to take. If you want to beat them, you have to to get uh, early picks. But uh, as I say, they're really stacked. They're really good individually. It's really hard to get a pick and uh, stay alive. So, how was the first year on Varan for you guys? Uh, the first year? Yeah, first. It's been one year. A lot of emotions, and you're now already in VCT. How was it? Man, the first season was amazing. We are so proud of our players. That's why uh, there was no change. Every player here is the same that won the Ascension tournament. And uh, this is all French guys. And we'll support them for forever. Forever. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't want to make a change because we, uh, we assumed that uh, they are... Uh, they, 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 that's, that's, that's a little bit their gift, their present. They, they managed to, to be there. They, they, uh, they deserve it. They, hmm? they deserve it. You made it. You made it. Yeah, they made it. Exactly, exactly. Uh, so, uh, so we didn't make a change. We're happy with that, and uh, we are still uh, working on the, our team, on our team, uh, team play, uh, and uh, maybe I don't know. Hopefully, we will win uh, another trophy with them. Do, do you have a message for Kameto? He's the founder of Casey. Do you have a message for him? If we have a message for him? Yeah. Uh, 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 let's see the second map, Kameto. <laughs> 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 Thank you, guys. It's been a pleasure. So, my heart is still blue, but I find really pink more and more appealing. I, what do you say here? You want us to Take eat a, big a bit bite of the cake? Oh, of the you cake, have to eat I the think. cake. But I have a shrimp gum right now. Go, cake. Go, 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 go for go. it. Go. go. The headset. The headset. The headset. The headset. The headset. The headset. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Les gars du bruit pour Brox! Yeah, they fought very hard to be there, so we hope uh, the next map will be better. And uh, yeah, I'm confident. They work a lot to be there, and they deserve to be there, and they will prove to everyone that they have the level to be in uh, this city. The That's cake is great. great. <laughs> Thank you, to you guys. The cake. To you guys on the desk, in so it's up to you. There is a second map to go on. Oh, I want to say. Yeah. By the made bundle. Oh. <laughs> Obviously. 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 <laughs> oh, thank you so much, PM. And of course, you heard it from Gentlemates. Their first year in this game, they kept the same uh, roster. And they do, they have carved an identity for themselves. They got a sick bundle as well. I'll, I'll be honest, I haven't bought one yet. But if I'm going to buy one, <laughs> it is the Gentlemates one. I think it's the best looking one of the lot. And they also have Whalers. Oh, Whalers. <laughs> Whalers. <laughs> uh, but let's talk about those icebox. You know, they were saying they didn't want to trash talk too much to Casey. They wanted to. Uh, see how it's going to be settled as we take a look at the agent select still how do they come back into this i'm gonna be looking for gentlemates yeah here we go we're just going for like a pretty oh. standard composition here nothing too crazy we're seeing the tank on sage so 
you know, uh, kind of like one of those standard comps. I do like Carmine Core's uh, composition a lot because they get the, the nice plant strat potential with the Sage Wall and the, the Wingman, but then they also have really good retakes with the, the Mosh Pit. We got Jet on defense being able to get the deep op lines as well set up by the get-go. I'm quite surprised if you're going to pick into the map of Icebox that you haven't come in with anything than the same comp they had like a year ago. Like, it really isn't anything crazy, so I don't know. I'm a little bit disappointed, but I hope they have something in the game. Well, Casey, they are already in the lead. Gentlemen, they got to do a lot here to get back into the series. So let's jump back into the series with Hansi and Hype. Ah, thank you, Sue, the desk and PM. I mean, we've got, we've got everyone the diving in now. The cake was great. Did you have some? The, no, well, no, I didn't. <laughs> you mean the uh, moment? I've... Yes, right. yes, the moment in general. But the cake. It looked really good. The cake looked good and it, it was great as well, apparently. <sighs> On to Icebox. Oh, no, no, um, let's, let's dwell on the cake. What should no. we go to? No, I'd like to know. We've got 15 seconds before the game starts. So um, let's talk comps No, here. But, but what about if, you, if it's your birthday, what cake would you want? I mean, a cake like that, that was a cool no, but, cake. But is it a chocolate cake, you know, Red tourist one? Okay. Yeah. Oh, that was quick. That was quick. No hesitation. Not even for a second, but you're right. Speed of seconds. We are now seconds away from map two. Carmine Core claiming map one in quite some fashion. It felt like gentle mates couldn't quite push through enough. To get in their faces, but what do you make of this comp then, head to head? Uh, I mean, if you, you have to scroll back pretty far to see some gentle mace icebox results, this is always the composition they ran. Yeah, it, it just feels a little outdated. You might say antiquated. You, you might, if yes, if you could apply the context correctly for that word and not worry about using it before. But the tax got up pretty close here, but Narrates found the opener. Takas has fallen ahead of contact being taken on site. Not great. If you took it, you know, talk about a checklist of things. Yet. You're not wanting that to really happen. Sending ahead. Things will slow down now yeah. as there's a double lurk out towards B. I'm not sure if the. There we go. Back on map duty. Don't you worry. I got you, folks. Not sure, actually, if uh, the turret was dealt with or Magnum had recalled it. I do see the timer ticking down on his UI, but. Oh, I This like is. A uh, double fade. Yeah. Bit of a double pump, the classic. It's one 30 of my favorites. left. Wall triple's ships, too far. Yeah, triple's too far. And KC now left scratching their heads a little bit, but there is an opportunity for them to catch this rotation back in mid. This is a weird round now. It's gone weird. It's gone weird. Or is it over? Because it feels like they know. It feels like they're a little bit aware of this. Just give up at the last second. Oh. OK, so we are now into a 5v4 post plant. KC still have a little bit of utility. Not a lot. There is Wingman there. Already sent through the tank. We're holding this one down. That wall being invested late. Quite imperative. But Tomasi, this guy just... What? They just swept them. They just swept them. Back-to-back -back flawless pistol rounds to open oh, up the maps here. Bloody hell. What are you meant to do with that? And Andalusia flawless to begin with. Yeah, tough as well, like I said, for gentlemates. I wish there was a camera sometimes. <laughs> just, <laughs> I don't know what she means. You waving hands in front of me. Friendly. But yeah, it just it seems a little. <laughs> it seems a little weird to start the round off like this. Like I said, yeah. Gentleman's ultimately trying to capitalise on two people finding some access towards B. Uh, I mean, credit to Magnum in that regard to be able to sniff that out when he did. And I think they read that as well as that, that's kind of Gentleman's re-exploring as a team back over towards. A, a weird exchange that almost goes down in mid. Yeah, it's Casey on the board first. Takas will throw a scope in the mix for round two. Looks like Tomazzi's already realised that. Yes, it, <laughs> it does seem as that was the case. Um, what can they... I, I, I'm just waiting for what they're redoing it. This could be just kind of fact-finding, kind of getting the lay of the land, seeing what they're up against for the rest of this, what space they can take. Turret will be handled around the minute marker, but that does obviously indicate they've lost that tube control. So, again, for Carmine right Core, they don't need to overly respond, but they do need to be now rather aware. And I actually kind of like what Gentle Mates are doing, kind of, you know, applying a little bit of pressure on some part of the map again, posting one player up in towards Kitchen, and then starting the pressure on the other side. And uh, uh, basically another fake, right? But oh, they're on. doing this with pistols, and actually they've landed two pretty key shots. So Spike should go down uncontested. But the problem is you're looking at the classics to hold this back unless Takas can get there in time. Here. 
you know, the tank has to deliver something here. But it's a headshot, but the rate quickly will trade that out. And actually, the flash will confirm also. Still wait and see when Takas gets around to this. Does he even have line of sight towards the spike plant is what I'm curious about. First tap on it, trying to draw out Takas. I think he's been noted. The shot just got put up towards Belt, but Martin... The drone? Uh, I mean, somehow doesn't get punished on this, but the defuse... Hello? The defuse has been happening. I guess he didn't have line of sight on it. Oh, give up. Uh, maybe. All right, with four, we'll remove the rifle. Yes, and only hold on to the Bulldog. Ultimate on mine now. A very topsy-turvy round. What have we been seeing? This this does feel a little bit... I mean, I'm not going to draw a question mark on the board, but the fact we don't know much about Genomator on this map, it's not something we see them run very often. It leaves us with a lot of questions. I think Carmichael don't know quite where they're facing either. Yeah, I mean, because also with no, I, I guess, no recent time. Again, you have to go back to previously and a long time ago. But, uh, I mean, even from last calendar year, yeah, they yeah, were 8-1 yeah. and one on this map, gentle mates. Uh, do you go back and look at that, especially with this comp? I don't think there's going to be many surprises. There's not really anything that, you know, outside of vanilla Valorant, so to say, that yeah. KC aren't going to be expecting with a comp like this. <laughs> Magnum, so ready for it, Bayaz. And again, Getting in the bullied. round that, yeah, the round that you come out with just one Bulldog in the previous, to be given an opener here to the initiator. And I also want to highlight the positioning coming out from Martin, right, pushing deep in towards middle. He's going to hear if they're going to try and go for these fakes again. He should be able to note this pretty early on. Yeah, he's only got a Sheriff, so it's high risk and hopefully a higher reward for him. Ay, ay, ay. I guess. Straight to down the open, land. yeah. And they've not had the success they wanted. Actually, yeah, turret's disconnected, so Spike's going to get caught here by Martin, potentially. Wow. The tank, sharp to it. Good awareness <laughs> that... Could have been someone. Yeah, obviously, Logan's progressed a little Tax further into the map. Down. Now, this should be a surprise that Wailers is this deep. Okay, Wailers... She doesn't commit to it, yeah. Yeah, I thought he might have gone for a little bit of that. that. Logan gets played in, though. <laughs> Be careful, not be overwhelmed though. He's got support in this as well. This is really nice. There we go, gentlemates. Good recovery. Get on the board. Yeah, really, really nice there. Really good recovery. Because again, you lose somebody in this composition. There's no flashes. There's no kind of. There's nothing to really spur on a reaction other than a, a dry gunfire. Yeah. It requires KC over committing to anything that they do want to yeah. entertain. Sure, here they come in. There's only one bulldog retained. Limited inventory, but. That's the concern with a composition like this. It's that, that mid round. If you lose Bayaz, or if you lose, you know, potentially Logan in the lurk or Takas on the front line, Time for a the odds test. just diminish so quickly for that second wave. Now, we did see Nore get his ult on, I think it was last round, to be fair, but it's very much in the back pocket. First yeah, early, I'd say, Dedicated attempt towards B again, working towards alts. The tank gonna have his. I haven't really seen them test this early, but it's very hard to stack your players out here, right? Unless you go for committed information, fully confirmed information, you can't really bank on anything. Gentlemen, even on map one, they're running around the map, just seeing where they feel like ending at this point. Still a little bit of utility on Bayaz too. As you highlighted, they do lack some of that kind of replenished utility, right? They don't have that ability to go for two, three pumps on the site. If they lose out on one of these key players, they're going to start struggling to find that impact. But he does commit towards this, at I least mean, for now. Yeah, you dig even further than that. You're losing the tank ahead of a site here. You don't have the wall. You don't have that, that kind of safety net that you're really relying on. And like I said, it relies on Casey kind of giving away clean plants. They are running I have fakes. The they yeah. are running fakes. I'm sure it feels too convincing here. The start of Icebox, but we'll see if Gentlemates can tap into this sort of rhythm. But the stall out, he would the. Uh, still the another state fight here, yeah. That's what scares me. If you're going to run the fakes, you're going to be hoping that you're drawing the utility away. Now, Tomasi might be in danger because they're trying to flex towards CT, but actually, he's more than up for the challenge. Oh, dear, and Whalers in no man's land. Welcome to the new compositions. You can see why they're here. And that is the sort of curveball that Gentle Ways could throw with this composition. Takas getting very deep. Try and capitalize on that recon here in Snowman. Well handled by Tamazi, though. Three kills and the support of utility coming through as well. What sort of timeout is this mm. one? It's a mystery. The clock I stopped. reckon. And there was a okay, yeah, okay. I was, was going to say well. it, but then it came up. 
Yeah. When I don't hear music and I see the clock stuff, I'm like, oh, I'm nervous. Oh, uh. Yeah. Oh, sorry, what are you? Oh, uh. oh, uh. No, I'm with you. Uh, Mola. Mola. What's but yeah, it, Pals it's Technica. <laughs> Pals of Technica is my I do, I do want someone in production because I know they, you know, they have the on-screen graphics up running while while we're in a timeout. I'm sure you can make a real point in a moment. But I want them to just have like pan talk timeout. You know what I mean? They we, have, had like, a we had a lower third once. Yeah, but we I did, want it. it I want it integrated in the graphics. Pop. Oh right. I'm not asking for much, am I? On the LED screen. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that we have at every event. <laughs> just running. That's it in. that's fair. Yeah, I don't ask for much. It'd be pretty good, subtle. I guess. Uh, Back to the timeout. Well, I guess we could be. Early yeah. on. Yes. Once again. Uh, I'm curious. Again. It, it's. See, it's it's so difficult now with the meta kind of shifting here and seeing more Gecko Yoru crop up on different maps. That these these sort of protocols change drastically. Yeah. When you get and yes, there's there's very there's very little to compare in terms of the initiator difference here. But uh, like I said, it, it does really change things. Especially right if you have how gentle mates want to approach the attack. Okay. The back again. And I want to see if there's committed fact finding. Now that's a problem though. For you. I don't know if Shin's gonna continue along this. But he does have someone like Martine following up. So uh, and yeah, once you do this, none of these fakes work. No. If he doesn't overextend, that is. He doesn't need to! Oh god! But and he another, wants to. And another. Oh, no. <laughs> just tee him up. Tee him up and drop him down. That's a punish. That's it. Guys, we know what you're doing. These yeah. fakes ain't subtle. I've walked behind you and just cleared three of you. Nearly got Logan, too, down to five HP. In that lockdown, unlikely to see it utilized now. Magnum, I think, might have even just caught a glimpse on the way out. Uh, well, the alarm bot will give it a go away regardless. Now Bayaz, rifle in hand. Well, not for long. Four-one now, and yeah, Casey can start yeah. doing things like this. And um, I don't even want to say keep be getting behind these rotations. They and don't have to. They've no. sent a message with that. Yeah. <laughs> now, unfortunately, <laughs> now unfortunately they can. Kind of brute force some of these engagements. Yep. Gentle ways want to keep playing into this. Well, the, because the, it kind of like spirals into bigger issues, right? Because to stop early aggression, you have to commit utility or bodies behind it, right? You've got to be able to your body check them on that. And it looks like Martin wants to double down. Now that was a bit audacious. Daka sends uh, him away. He's feeling it from the previous <laughs> round, obviously. I've got this. <laughs> Step aside. <laughs> mm. Mm. Well, Tom Assey, though. He's in a weird spot. Oh, it's not yeah, clean. Not nice. Not pretty there. So, two opportunities. Oh. Magnum's found one response. Yeah. Don't oh. necessarily prevent this spike from being planted. Might not even know where this wall is committed, actually. Oh. Yeah. Spike planted. It's just narrate to try and recover this. Narrate doesn't. He doesn't want to be free, like surely. That, no, I, you know what? The tank doesn't have to res this. He, he gets a 1v1 on Logan. It's not pretty. He takes a bit of damage for it, but he gets it. And then he, like, one-taps Takas. That was wild. Um, I don't know if it's this round. But it's definitely not this round. No. So I guess that's how you deal with the aggression. You deal with the jet who's run at you at belt. So that works. But coming back to that initial point, though, that, like KC have to do that for really, if you look at any early round here to go in Gentle Mate's favor, and the rate's got the first, actually. Oh, wow, well, Logan, not even finding line of sight there. Who needs walls? Yeah. We we'll have to keep something on well, that round. Again, Ult's not really committed now, not necessary. Hello. <laughs> Yeah, some interesting engagements to kick this off. I mean, after talking about kind of the discipline that we were enjoying from Casey, I think they need to kind of reel it in a little bit. I mean, if you, I don't mind, I, I like the idea behind it. It's the execution. I'd like to see them a little don't bit more crafted it. on. That's Obviously, mine. hindsight's twenty twenty. That didn't work out. Cool. Maybe you do see Martin hit a, 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 a filthy shot. You're like, cool, fair enough. Oh dear. Oh. God. Did, wait. That, did he just surely that? No, that was the turret. That had to be the turret finding that. Yeah. 
I was about to say. That was like the most ass in a moment ever <laughs> <laughs> on the rope. Uh, Zach ass. I'm gonna try and take this space with him. Okay. So again, a little bit more of a standardized round. Oh, the rates found Takas lingering. And it looks like a pre-take potentially, especially with Dizzy committed, but gentle mates away they go. Again, back to the pendulum swing. They've lost out on Takas, so that's the tip of the spear gone. Yeah, and it's it's deep as well, so unless they're re-clearing. Unless gentle mates want to uh, pivot back this direction, they're not gonna be able to make use of that res. And actually I think that's why we see KC play ahead of it. Do they get caught? Well, Magnums, don't swing this. Oh, oh, yeah, no, swing it, swing it again. Yeah, go, keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, it only, gets, it only gets a little bit. But now Martin is kind of stuck here. Yeah, he doesn't want to give away the sound cue no. with the after after. He's ahead of the wall. It's a weird position, and it actually works out for him. That's, that's filthiness. Poor old Natang just didn't expect it, right? He's there just like, well, surely no one's sat on this corner. And now the problem is that Carmichael have bodies on this side. They've lost the ability to try and get favorable numbers. So Bayaz and Logan would have to do some heavy lifting. And sadly for Bayaz, he's not going to be able to do it. So for Logan, time to try and keep hold of the rifle left. and back away here. That is huge for Magnum, though. Yeah, <laughs> like I said, even with the res in that situation, it's like, yeah, you can go one for one, but they're going to be able to cancel it out anyway. Mm -hmm. Over delivery from him. We'll find KC their fifth. Yep. I think as well, Martin, I believe he was up in Nest previously. He was just about peeling away from that. I think mean, the plan was to leave Magnum posted up a little deeper, but like I said, huge from him to find Bayaz and also find the swing here from Whalers. But yeah, this, this slow burn really not suiting Gentlemates. Once again, we saw a similar approach to start off on map one. Mm where, you know, it's both the duelists losing out repeatedly on the front yes, lines. Right. And like I said, it just, it takes away from kind of that effectiveness that you have when you are grouped and you want to make use of, of the utility. It's, it, we're just not seeing it from Gentlemates. And, and you don't see those rounds that feel like it's like, okay, great, we've, we, we found a part of the map that we can really exploit. We can run away with this, this set piece really works. Yeah. This dart will get us access towards yellow, for example. We're not even seeing it come to that point in the round. No, which is getting a little bit worrying, but it's Carmine Court to actually call the time out here. Um, maybe just wanted to check in on how to kind of approach this comp. Maybe just wanted to make sure they get the timing on how oh, they're back, back place. in place. A little bit. And I think for the last, especially round six and round seven, it was on a knife's edge. Don't there's, get me wrong. There's instances of, um, yeah, getting, I don't want to say complacent, but maybe yeah. going against the grain in terms of... Going uh, against the KC ethos. Yes. Right? Carmine Court known for that composed approach. I think it's a good time to check in for Eng to keep them mentally in the right place here because, uh, hey, maybe you're not used to playing against a comp like this in a minute. So you are looking to maybe lean into those aspects and punish it a little bit more, but keeping their cool and composure is critical. Get now, loads of alts to play with for Gentlemates. Two on deck for Carmine Court. Mm. A bit of an off angle. Utility committed to clearing this earlier on, so he's going to get away with the first. There was a second body here, and Logan's got the trade, so that opens up a chance. A big and actually, we'll be able to reset and find the heal potentially. Yeah, I mean, maybe a little later on in the round, but the tax trade is out now. Shin to double down on that. We will have to play out with 30 HP, and it's not enough. Magnum will remove that threat as well. Takas, Blade Storm. Here we go. Got a 1v3. Gun here. Hello. Oh. Pinging out the weapon to himself. That's good. Blocking sight. <laughs> Michael, it's very serious. Well, yeah, you tried to whisper, but. <laughs> well, there's a wall there. Spike's still accessible for him. 30 seconds, so some time to play I with. I got the spike. Yep. Get away unscathed, actually. I mean, it's a similar approach left. to what we saw on Split. It's yep. give the spike up, force the hand, let the clock run down. Yep. Now stack up and play as three here. Oh. Now, what's interesting is actually if Takas finds a sight line. No. And I think with the time running so low and not seeing any presence towards B, they are going to be very aware left. this could be the AP. So, again, we're going to see so them work together on this. Takas, unsure of what safety he has, Fire really. Planted. So I want to see how he sits for this post-plant, because that plant doesn't look good for him here. No. No, he's kind of got a bank on... Uh, oh, and the rest. Well, Shin will well. respect it enough. He's getting the rate back on his feet. <sighs> I, just, uh, 
I don't see what he's got because Narate's got his full utility. Yeah. He's still got Dizzy, he's still got Wingman. And that plant can be easily diffused with Wingman on it as well. Which is probably what's gonna be happening right now. Yeah, Carmine Core never in real trouble in this round. Takas looks a little threatening, but yeah. But no, yeah, no fourth problems. back on his feet, and actually it's a fifth to find the diffuse as well, yeah. Yep. Tough really for Takas to even get a say in that outcome. Now the scoreline stretching even further. Obviously, he did start map one with a 9-3 half. It might be leaning in that direction. Some key ultimates here for Gentlemates, so have the lockdown and the pit. The Hunter's Fury as well for Bayaz. He's had a stinker to this, so one and nine. Yeah. It's only really Logan to get on the board, to be quite honest. I mean, always enjoy seeing Logan on the kill, Joe. It was always fun initially. A bit split coming through here, though. Yeah, a little bit pacey. Maybe looking to punish in a rate, but again, this guy succeeds. He wants even a bit more. He's got the old two if he fancies it, see what he can achieve with, but his attack has to try and close. Oh. But you don't get to do that in a rate. The backstab as well. Oh no, he's. Yeah, they have to wall him off. <laughs> they stop him from getting any more kills. him out. Oh, Bayer's at least going to find some safety in CT, but Narate closing the gap, hunting him down. They're just dumping Util towards the right. Like, please go away. We don't want this. This is an ace. Oh, no, it's oh not Tom Lassi. Even the crowd's laughing with that. Like, come on, that was nice. Yeah, the pace change not suiting Gentlemates at all here. Narate seals the deal on Tube. The first real pickup in pace we've seen from Gentlemates, to be honest. That's the thing, if you, if you just can't pin down an opening engagement, you lose any of these. <laughs> hmm. Bombastic side eye. <laughs> Criminal offensive side eye. Get off of TikTok, please. God help me. Um, Still sitting on these ultimates as well. Yeah, it's it's not getting to the point where gentlemates can set themselves up to make use of them. Yeah. I'm a little worried this is kind of running out of steam here. Gentlemates need need a round. And, uh, you see what Tomasi's weighing with. Yeah. Make things uh, even harder. Again, the the nano swarm on site is dealt with. Lockdown will basically cancel this out. I mean, there's a chance for Tomasi to get back in this, but it's going to be on a predictable angle to spam. We'll try and throw a, a snake bite in. Ooh, he's actually second guesses himself here. So actually, yeah, we'll have to concede the pit. Yeah, and the counter pit's going to be invested as well. That's going to be a little bit close to the other side, but there's the counter lockdown. That's a little bit bizarre that? to me. They had site control. What? Casey fully not expected to be playing on the site. What is going on? And Martin's just got two? I, 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 I wish I could tell you what's happening. I know it's my job, but right now I don't know. Martin and Tomasi clearing house after what was one of the weirdest rounds I've seen in a minute. Michael, let's have that in half speed so you can really take your time on it. <laughs> Just, I mean, the, usually, we, I, I was saying this yesterday, we see the lockdown on the, on the stairs to heaven more often than not with these sorts of scenarios. Lockdown in the open, I guess, is a total distraction for what's sure. about to happen. Sure. And the race ultimate comes in, it, it finds, uh, I don't know if it's one or two. Here we go. Running it back for your mic. Does it make any more sense? No. This is beautiful for Martin. <laughs> no, it was incredible. Again, just the pace at which KC are able to operate here and follow up on Martin's success. Well, ah, they've decided to challenge the rate again. Mm, God. Oh. Okay. A, it takes a jumping sova to get in there. Ah, but Shin's isolated tack ass on top of you and slowly does it. Magnum creeps in. Finds uh, Bayaz and uh, they've got the res. Bayaz back up. They swing on this. Yeah, yeah Chin Chin is absolutely tearing them apart. It's just Logan and Magnum's got the trade. Uh, Mike, this hasn't been a pretty performance from no, Gentlemates. And, and that sort of round just feels like, a, okay, well, we nearly found through this. Trying to overwhelm the rate again. They managed to this time, but it's basically four people, two under tube, two into tube, Last yeah. round to in try the and hand. find it. And it's, it's throw it out, see if it sticks, sort of thing. We'll at least have a purchase here. Yeah, Magnum swinging through the slow off. <laughs> Shin with a nice catch actually onto Whalers here. Shin had a fantastic round. All teed up for him. I mean, 
He didn't have to work particularly oh, hard for that first shot. Here, here he <laughs> said, I'm back, I'm back. <laughs> nice, Shin. Shin, what are you doing? Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so now looking to improve on Map 1's performance. Yeah, oh, so the 10 2 half. Yeah. Like I said, still rifles here. Two Guardians to round it out. No ultimates in play. Martin. Hello. Spam. Wait, huh? did he think did, he'd killed him? Did Takas think, was he just spamming? I don't know what just happened there. I, I, I hope we get to see that back. If we could just bookmark it. I don't... And then the tank just... I, I don't know what's happening this round, Michael. I mean, he was, he was spamming, but I feel like he's... He must have he seen something. Yeah, you're not just going to shoot that, right? Right? We'll have to see if we do get a replay of it. Wall goes up here. The tank will remove a chunk. Do they commit? Again, fakey boys. Yeah, and it's a fake away. with some utility invested. Yep. Yeah, now they have to wait out for the recon to come back from Bayaz to really find any tangibles. But both jets removed here will well, definitely slow the round mid. down. Maybe hoping for a mid split, but. 30 seconds left. Anglum's still keeping eyes on this. No, he won't. He's going to hear it. Oh, my word. Second time the raid's caught. Yeah. Got a jump peek through that poison orb. And go. Will not be happy. But Tomasi just found Bayas. So they've lost out of some of the safety here. Look at the area the gentlemen have to play with. There's nothing to it. It's only the site itself, really. They don't have CT control. They don't have B long. Very awkward plant to play around as well. We're going to need... Uh, Hopefully, one of these players to find one of the players in CT. No, Magnum out does Logan. It's it's all on Whalers, middle of the open. They've they improved. The, yeah, they find the improvement. 10-2 half. Uh, oh, yeah, it's, uh, it doesn't look any better on the replay, to be honest with you. No. Rough start here. Actually, six on the bounce, five of them being retakes for Carmine, looking very comfortable, set themselves up. To seal the deal on this series, a commanding lead. Yeah. I think this one is... Um... I, I, look, I, I, and here's the thing, right? Content brain goes, yeah, French Derby, how exciting. And it is, there is genuine excitement to that, cool. But the issue is we do have Carmine Core, who's one of the teams who were going through to international events, right? They they made it to Madrid. Yeah, they, they fell a little short, but still, they are a top end team. Gentlemates, they are still new to this level of competition. It's a very stark contrast here. Yeah, I mean, you, you compare both lifespans with, with the new roster here for KC yes. and Gentlemates. We're very early on in both lifespans. Like I said, mm. coming away from their first international, and we see kind of the recovery, the bounce back from yep. what they maybe felt was a little disappointing. And likewise for Gentlemates, still kind of getting a lay of the land here yeah, in VCT. Okay, Takas couldn't quite get the follow-up, but a nice start, but it's Carmine Core to claim two. Flan's gonna be coming down. And Whalers just dives in, isolates Shin. Nice follow-up from Logan, there he is, the pistol arrow himself. Finally seeing a bit of magic out of Logan. But it is the Danger Man to rate. And of all the players... It's above this wall, so the tank might get caught. Clean and... Has he spotted all of them? Yeah. I think he... Oh, oh God. my God. God. He actually adjusted after that first God. headshot as well. It's all good. Three alive. Three rounds. It's a long way back. Like I said, on Split did the hard work, I guess, in terms of getting off the board yeah. in the second half. That's always the tough thing, to bounce back from a half like that, get the pistol around, convert it into some sort of financial buffer. Whether or not they can repeat their success here, the margin a little smaller mm. by a round. Okay. But I, I, I want to see more from Gentlemates on this map. I, it'd be a shame to not see a little bit more of this half, right? Again, I don't know how I feel about the composition, if I'm completely honest, Come or where this is the in their like, map pool comfort, but this was their choice. This was their first pick in this. Stop, stop. This is what they went for. So I'm, I'm hoping there's a method to the madness. As it stands, Magnum being loud about it, trying to draw the attention. It's almost faking that they've forced up here. Mm -hmm. So maybe you want to push 
Gentleman's back Watching into here. a deeper position. Oh, the tank the boat. Side. Down, <laughs> nice. Hang on, I was going to say, Magnum, was he not checked under? I, I mean, the drone went straight over his head. I don't know if they would. They saw him, maybe he clung to the wall close enough they didn't get spotted by it. It looked like he was going to try and make a play on the back of it or just avoid sight lines. But he's got himself a big upgrade here. And he's got himself a weird position. He's got himself a really weird position. He could... Oh. No, okay, there we go, caught. Logan's found him. That's Magnum gone. And now what do they do? Oh my god, they do that. Martin! Uh. Oh, he just <laughs> can't pick it up. So now Tomazzi, 52 HP. Seen the tank conscious to try and police this weapon still. 30 seconds oh, left. We'll give Tomazzi a shot tip. Yeah. Didn't want to risk too much there. He's looking for that pick. You don't really want to see the tank nope. challenge this. No, you don't. No, you don't. Oh, the oh, timing. Well, there we go. Yeah, okay. Well played. Yeah. I was a bit worried there because that is the ideal scenario for Tomasi. Yeah, just because of the space. Yeah, you look at the minimap, then he has a chance for the clean plant Correct. to reset fully and find himself a follow up engagement. Well, like I said, hard work was done on Split. They managed to string yep. it into something feasible to answer back in the second half. First two on the board here for Gentleweights. Operator in hand now for Takas. There we go. This is the first big challenge though. No alts there Stop for Carmichael to bank on to try and be disruptive. But a very quick beginning here. Takas not on the right side of this though. He's going to be on the other side of the map towards B. Out. So he's going to be on the two here to try and hold on to this. And it looks like they're already posturing to kind of sit a little bit deeper. Maybe go for the retake, but... Still willing to challenge... Oh, my... Okay, it was the tank who got that. Otherwise, I was baffled how Bayaz may have connected it. But for now, Carmichael do make it to the site. But, of course, they've lost out on Martin on the way. Women's planting. Plant will come through. No chance of denying that here with the utility. Spike planted. They see, look to dig their heels in, actually. Yeah, they're not sitting deep at all. They're sitting on site, which it looks like Natank wants to clear. Only in a rate to draw blood. It's all on Tomasi in a 1v3. Natank, Whaler's low, but it's not enough. Takas delivers the fatal bullet to this round. There's life in him yet. A great overwhelm here. Natank obviously going to give up the defuse here. Red's already online for him. Not going to see it invested here for the finances that gap down to five. Nice work from the tank, but... That's the, uh, the the phoenix shining through on the sage. The battle sage. Yes, the infamous battle sage. Here. All right, a little bit five. of a... Yeah, a little bit of a reset, but still some investment on the side of Carmine. Some stingers, a guardian and a bulldog. No ultimates just yet, but the right... Only missing one orb. So a chance to make this interesting. It's pacey. A chance to make it pacey, yeah? Yeah. Happy to go for this again. Remember last time around, Genomates did go for the active fight on this. Bayaz and the tank both stuck around to try and find one. I don't know if they're going to do the same again now. Yeah, it looks like they are at least trying to catch one on the cross, perhaps. Dangerous, been spotted. Good damage. Uh, not going to get you much more than that. Needs to fall away. This time they're going to keep five standing here. Well, I say that, Shin, gotta be careful. Gonna be fine now, but... Martin's oh, just so precise. Sorry, just with the yeah. ADS spray onto that pre-fire angle there. Okay. Forced to find a chip of damage. So now looking at the post plant, Tomasi doesn't have util to sit for, you know, the deeper post plant. Narrate has what? Dizzy and... Revealing Wash? area. And they don't have uh, what they had before. Now they do have the Guardian there, they do have the Bulldog, but Tank comes back in and does what he did before. Clears house. That's going to be then Takas on the follow-up. Magnum now, Bulldog ready, but he takes a little chip of damage. It's Tomasi from afar. Oh, All going to go up, and there's the ult, though. Narei going to invest it into this round. Does he get played in off the back? He denies the Diffuse. Hold on, this oh problem's down. What has gone on? He got both of them on the Diffuse, I'm pretty sure. That's really tough because the wall, obviously, a chunk is removed, but it's actually a tight plant into the corner. 
Yeah, like you said, the AOE here of the ultimate coming through pays dividends. This is after Gem Tomates get, like I said, both of them. Great catch on a replay here for the Bulldogs. <laughs> play, yeah. Both of them caught. Beautiful conversion. No! No! <laughs> <laughs> That's just brilliant. Ah, I love these two. You, you couldn't get polar opposites, no, you could you? you? It's couldn't. just perfect. Oh, man. And uh, we do have Takas on an active angle here, so we have been seeing Comic call the running utility to clear up close. I don't know how much they're going to invest here, but um, all of this kind of feign of presence will be red. Back in a way. Well, just how deep a position Whalers is holding here, here towards B as well. Mm. Jones sent through on eight. She will pull the tank into a rotation. Yeah. As well as Logan. See what the plan of attack here is for KC. Is that window of opportunity is closing pretty quickly. Yeah. I mean, I say that, but just knowing how this game's gone, they'll probably just hit like three shots through a wall and they'll be fine, but they're going to get themselves a plant for free. Wall's a little bit of an issue. Narrate's gone down. That was Whalers finding that. Spike planted. Not sure what sort of vision he had on him. Maybe just as the wall broke, catching him. As he tried to slip down towards be long, but they... Oh, shit. You wanted that one. That would have been nice to secure middle a little bit more, but he now notes the pressure's coming his way. Martin has isolated Bayaz, and Shin trying to find her. any bit of comfort, and he's finding nothing, right? Like, he is just surrounded. Finally gets cleared out. Rez comes in. 5v3. Tomasi, Magnum, and, well, I was going to say Martin, but not for long. Sweeping back through. It's all on Magnum, and he has been pushed aside. Gentlemates on the retake. The early read of the aggression, Mike, that paid off. Yeah, and as soon as the Rez comes in, you can even see here the layering. The fact that they're able to get the poison orb up to block that. Uh, I guess to prevent line of sight coming back through the chunk in the yep. hole, uh, the wall, sorry. <laughs> then also, the res comes through, and there's, there's not enough pressure here alongside Shin, who struggles to pin down the first. Then he gets a little overwhelmed because there's so much to worry about. See, so gentle mates, we'll find a fourth in this second half. Five rounds to go, though. Still a big gap to close. Yeah. Timeout called Carmine Cause, I believe. Not too surprising after what this start was. I mean, a flash in the pan round, but because they had such a strong first half, obviously they get the kind of benefit of being so close to 12 anyway, but there's been real resilience here. This is probably why we saw this map being toyed with, because gentlemen look much better here, much more confident. But if there's someone who knows how to deal with a comp like this, it's going to be Eng, right? So relaying that through to Magnum getting them to execute on those ideas and try and keep control of this. Because I feel like we've had a lot of kind of shaky purchases. We haven't seen those kind of full buys coming into effect. I mean, the one they got away with was the Stinger and the ult from Narrate, basically. But still, I, yeah. I want to see composure from Carmine Corp. And I want to see if Genomates continue to kind of get this presence on the map. Because honestly, this half has looked very good for them. I mean, all things considered, you start off as behind as you do. Yeah. Certainly got themselves into a groove here on the second half. Again, finances don't necessarily reflect that just yet. Not a buy or two in hand, so still delicate in that regard. But there's an operator, Sakas, one off the blade storm, so yeah. positive number that, yeah. <laughs> a little nervy then. Um, and uh, now, do they clear this? Do they figure this out? Because they, they didn't clear deep enough or commit utility deep enough to figure out where this operator was, which allowed all of that rotating to come Well, previously, in. yeah, we saw the drone invested behind this. Don't see it invested now. And that was what drew the tank into a rotation. Now it's just attack ass on the Ooh. front line here. He's got to run. Could get run down. Oh, oh, yeah, no they tank. assume it's just one. Yeah, that was really nicely done. The tank in unison there, ready to back him up, make sure he got away safely. And they're looking like they're just trying to pressure this. Magnum and Narrate are the ones with the rifles, the rest on pistols. Still standing tall, the tank tries to go ahead and actually gets punished. The They've opened up a chance. Now, is there a recovered rifle? There is. Shin now gets himself the upgrade. Plant going to come in, and now there's problems. So it's Magnum to Plant as well, so the lockdown Ooh. will be available. Wingman, going to slow them down here, but they're up close and they're personal. This is a dangerous scenario, and they're willing to fight. Carmine caught on the back of Magnum that round. 
punishing the aggression in the end and just continuing to apply that pressure. Technically, the only two successes here come from Thrifties. I'm not sure of the investment yes. last time around on that Stinger round, but they squeeze out a second to bring themselves to series point as Gentle makes to pump the break. Oh, the desperation you can see on the tank trying to swing that, really trying to get them both on the side, but... Nice! Nice! And now it's Genovese on the timeout as well. So they've still got a purchase here. I think uh, maybe Vejas might be struggling. I'm not sure. We'll have to see what they can come up with I'll in the struggling end. in general, yeah. Now, he's sitting yeah. at that. Noted it earlier. It's yeah, he's... not a harp on, but sitting at 3 and 20 right now. Hunter's Fury available, yes, but he's not going to have a weapon but to bring into this round 19 and potentially the final round of the series. And look at the other side too for Carmine Call. They've got one away for yeah. Naretzol coming in. And then you've got one away for Tomasi. You've got two away from the res. They're very close to even a snowball round, right? Mike, this is this is a little bit scary here. So what do Gentlemates do? Because that aggression now gets a little bit identified towards A, right? That's the first time they've had tangible eyes on it of that operator usage. Obviously, that can't come back out, really. Do they slip into more aggression to try and cheat that rotation early? Or what do they do now going forward? The KC read into the fact that they've kind of broken this aggressive A site True. hold. There's not going to be operator right here. You're going to see that from the finances on the other side of the scoreboard. So I guess what's the response in turn from KC? Gentlemates will adjust. Takas will be right there. tasked in mid. And yeah, the, the adjustment will be the pit to be invested. Mm. Off the rip, we'll close off pipes, any access. On the low ground, at least, towards A. Midwalk? Seeing both of them... OK, just going to post up Takas for now, looks like. You should run. Oh, this is scary now. Lockdown yeah. will uh, cancel out. Yeah. Yeah, tank that. That was very bold, but... Be removed. Actually, yeah, didn't, no further tag onto this. Didn't get it. The tag's dead. There's a trade and there's a four up. No! Oh, it couldn't have gone worse for him. Bayaz, you got to do something here. Plants could be coming in. They need this. Logan and Takas are the ones with the weaponry. Oh, but you've just heard it there. Tomasi investing that Viper's pit, smothering the site. Takas looking for an opportunity above, maybe. But they're waiting down below. Any utility to clear? They've still got the outrun with Bayaz. There's nothing on the back lines there all in that pit. And he can confirm it. Here. We've got to clear this now. Here. They're shocked out this Alder. Any any bit of kit needs to be used now. Logan's found Magnum, but they're just trying to Here. slip away between the bullets, but there's still a problem. They still need to clear, and Bayas goes down. Oh, yeah, Takas down. dives in, and just to his death. Logan in a 1v3, and time is against him. A great player, sure, but he can't beat the clock here. Surely not. No, he can't. Tomasi, the one to do it. Carmine Corp, best. The French opponent. Gentle mates here, and in convincing style, 13 to 6. It's tough, really, for Gentle mates. I mean, a very, very tough series overall, yeah. considering the score lines, considering the nature in which these rounds conclude. But yeah, I mean, even in the last year, I think the approach is the Hunter's Fury going to chip away at that lockdown. And maybe within the pit, there was a sideline. They didn't catch exactly I where, it was, where planted, it was planted. But you yeah. see the tank trying to spam out. But that's the one thing that breaks apart that security at the start of the round. Yeah. But again, keep in mind, Carmine Court, as much as, yes, it is the French derby, and a lot of people do look towards that and enjoy, and I don't blame you, but Carmine Court are one of our teams that go to international events. And a much-needed bounce back, actually. If you look at the performance versus foot, some of the question marks that may have arisen over Madrid, this is definitely back on the right track. And there's no better practice than in a live game itself. Seeing gentlemen being put through the paces shouldn't be something to keep their heads down about. They can keep their chin up here and work forward. A great opponent in the form of Carmine Court, who looked better today seeing some of those core pillars that made a lot of EMEA excited for this team. Seeing the right top of the board again, looking absolutely wild, and all those fundamentals we enjoyed back in place. Yeah, positives all round for KC. Again, I, I think you're absolutely right, gentlemen. You should walk away from this, you know. Yeah. Uh, really with any sort of shame, except no. this, is, this is sort of the standard that uh, KC have already set for themselves to keep absolutely. this year off.
Absolutely. Like I said, the ability to, to come back after last week's performance and uh, I don't want to say right their wrongs, but, but no. definitely get themselves back in the same sort of position that we had going into Madrid. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And I think it's the way they approached it. Because, again, if you were being very honest, there wasn't a lot of tape on Gentlemates. So for Carmine Corey, it was, it was a mentality read into them. They prepared for it very well. So if you are wondering where we are going and what we are doing, we're waiting for the interview to get themselves ready. So don't worry. We'll stop waffling soon enough as soon as that is ready to go. But a good game nonetheless. 13-6 on both maps. I just want to see how far can my core go now, I think, is a big question to me. And actually, on the flip side of that, I, I do want to see Gentlemates really progress. So said it's, early on the, it's early on in the lifespan. Obviously, we talk about them coming up into VCT, yeah. having a flourish, obviously, through kickoff. But, you know, it's it, it's we want to see the longevity of Ross Lightness. We want to see what's sustainable and the improvements over time. Nobody's really expecting this team to walk in and hit top three. That's, I don't think that's going to be realistic. It's not no, it's not. It's not. But what we saw today was a very competitive matchup in moments. You've got to hope to see that then extended throughout. However, something else that we're looking forward to is the interview with Lou and Shin. Thank you guys, and I have the opportunity right now to interview Shin, the French survivor of this KC team. Salut Shin, bravo pour ta uh, victoire. Congratulations on the win. The first question I'm going to ask you is this map of Icebox. Were you surprised that Gentlemates brought you on this map because they're well known for bringing some weird strategies and stuff and they came up with a default comp. Ils sont arrivés du coup sur Icebox avec une proposition défaut. Est-ce que tu étais enfin vous étiez étonné en équipe euh, qui vous sortent ça alors qu'ils sont connus justement pour leur explosivité Ouais, plutôt, je pense qu'on s'attendait plus à du double dueliste, même mm -hmm. sur Icebox. Okay. Euh, pour être honnête, quand on a vu la, la compo, on était un peu surpris. Euh, mais bon, ça a bien fini pour nous, mais c'est vrai qu'on s'attendait pas à cette compo. Ouais. Yeah, we weren't expecting this comp at all. Uh, indeed, as you said, we were expecting something more fancy, a bit like double dueliste, even on Icebox. But yeah, surprise. But then we won. Uh, my next question, Shin, is going to be about you. You were facing one of your previous teammates back in the days in KC, that, that roster everyone loved back in the days in France. So how did it feel play against your former teammate, beat him? Can you describe us a little bit the feeling? Uh, pour être honnête, uh, <laughs> je m'arrêtais pas de sourire quand j'étais à l'entrée devant eux, même quand mm -hmm. je les voyais, ça me faisait sourire. Juste parce que uh, voilà, j'ai passé une année uh, sans français, plus ou moins dans la ligue. Ouais. Et uh, maintenant, le fait d'avoir une équipe française, ça fait quand même plaisir, surtout que je connais un peu tous les uh, tous les joueurs là-bas. Donc uh, ouais, c'est pas mal. Et j'aimerais bien les rejouer si possible. Ok, it's a very nice feeling being able to play against him. He's also my friend, and when we were wa waiting for Walkins, I was just smiling at him, and the the mood was wonderful. We spent a year being the only French team in VCT last year. So it's a pleasure having them, and I would really like to face them again. Let's talk a bit about the future, maybe, Shin. In that actual form of VCT and the teams, who do you see uh, in EMEA going to Shanghai? Je pense que tu as compris la question. Qui tu vois uh, à Shanghai, du coup, se qualifier dans la forme actuelle des équipes? Uh, je suis pas le meilleur pronostiqueur. <laughs> pas le meilleur pronostiqueur, mais uh, déjà, bon, ne pas dire nous, ce serait, uh, ce serait pessimiste uh, pour aucune raison. Donc, uh, je dirais nous, c'est trois slots, si je me trompe pas. C'est ça. Euh, je pense que Fnatic ont eu un début un peu, euh, un peu moyen, mais euh, je pense qu'ils vont vite remonter et Navi ont montré de très belles choses, même s'ils si, euh, ont failli perdre contre Liquid, je pense quand même qu'ils sont vachement favoris. Donc euh, je dirais Fnatic, Liquid, et, euh, Fnatic, Navi et nous. Navi, Fnatic, ouais. Navi et vous. Ok, so first, he says that he's very bad at doing predictions, so don't take this as granted, but obviously he's going to say uh, KC. And then, even though Fnatic had a bit of a harsh start, he's still confident in their ability to qualify as well as Navi. Thank you very much, Sin. Congratulations Merci. on the Merci win again. Beaucoup. I'm so happy for you. Merci, mon frère, and back to you guys. Woo! Merci. Merci mon frère, tu gères.
Well, 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 this French derby has ended in Casey's favor. Welcome to Postplant, everybody. I've got Steele with me, and we're joined by Zaysh and uh, Nareed. Congratulations on the win today. Uh, we didn't really get a chance to speak to you guys last week after your loss against Foot. So I wanted to ask you, uh, Zaysh, what was the priority uh, this week in your practice? How did you manage to fix things uh, to get here and have such a dominant win? Um, I think our main issue against foot was not really our game plans or how we play. I think it's more we needed, um, I think, to get hit, like in kickoff. If you remember, we won first match, then we lost against the Retics, and then after we bounced back. And I think this is what happened. Sometimes in rookie teams like this, you need to just like face a hard wall and then you can bounce back on it and I think it helped us to work on some points that we needed to this week I mean this week on one day because we have only we had only one day between those two matches so we managed to do well I think just after it we had some talks we focused on some fundamentals that we missed in this match and yeah that's it I think we are all pretty confident in our game we practice well we it's not on one day that you will change your game you know like it's been six months that we are grinding we know what we are doing it just sometimes as I said you just need to get hit and then you bounce back on it I mean you bounce back for sure and Nare, uh, we haven't again we haven't had a chance to speak to you since before Madrid so I wanted to ask you what was that experience like and what did you learn from going to a land like that I mean Madrid was really cool uh, just because of like the environment is totally different. Like I've always wanted to go to like a really big international place. Like it's like, I come from CS, so it's like a major to me. I mean, it is a major and like it's top eight. So it's like really, really cool to me. Um, unfortunately, obviously we didn't play, like n we played nowhere near to the level that we expected. And I think it was kind of disappointed and I think we could have done way better. But other than that, I think it gave us like a lot to learn on and a lot to grow for and like, it made us more aware of mistakes that could happen that we weren't aware of before. I've played a few of the European ranked games while I've been here. <laughs> so uh, my question up. to you is, is it like smurfing here compared to NA? Because that, that's just my experience. Yes. <laughs> have you, have you so, guys ever played against each other? I You're right? don't think so. I think I, I've played with you one time, for sure. I played Viper, and I, dude, he I, I had no idea what I was doing, and you're like, bro, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm Did sorry. I tell you at least what to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, see? And I ignored you, because I, I, it wasn't my fault. I didn't what, know what I was doing. Was it constructive, at least? Yes, yes. Okay. So one of the things that I like what I see from you guys when you play is it looks like, especially on your defense, you have very, you, you go in with purpose. Like, nobody ha is just going to a certain area and just, like, standing around. It's like, I'm going here for this reason, and when this happens, I know that I'm going to go and do this thing and all my teammates are going to react accordingly. How long did it take to kind of implement the system and is it easy for everyone to buy into that system? Uh, in, my, in my head, it's like not like a system. It's just like if you're a good player and you can read the game well, like you know how rotations work around the map and you know what spaces need to be filled, you know what gaps you need to leave. So I think... Like for me, I, I'm pretty good at recognizing just a situation without any communication. And I don't know if that's from playing with the team a lot, but I think it's just more, I, I look at the map and I know what I need to do. And I think for like other people, it, it just depends. Like it depends on who's communicating the most on defense, who has the most important information. And we just listen to them and everyone has a good voice on the team. So um, a lot of the rotations are just uh, like, just like on the fly. We're not really like, we have setups and then we just kind of branch out and we're just very fluid. Yeah, so one of the rounds, for example, was like your icebox uh, bonus round. And basically what happened was uh, you guys were that's, That's not sweet. it. We but showed it already. We, we showed it, it already? Yeah, okay. Yeah, you it. Oh, okay, so basically what happened was uh, Martin's walking down tube. You have Sage, Gecko. So you guys are like yeah. basically babysitting. The Killjoy's got the setup with the turret watching upper and then is going to go aggressive and break the dart. And then the Viper's like jump spotting B. And it seems like whatever happens, you're going to have a response to whatever happens. The Killjoy's faking like the A push. You're getting the, 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 here it is. You're getting the jet down the tube. And then from that position, you guys know where you're going to rotate to after the that and Martin's getting all the info. Hey, like I'm, I'm gonna flank. And you guys end up losing this round because I feel like you kind of overextend. But it yeah. feels like here everyone knows, like exact, like even this positioning and everything. You know where the enemies are gonna go and how everyone's gonna respond. So that's kind of like what I see 
on every round. And then sometimes you win because you're in a good position. Like that was a winning position, but then you guys end up also losing, like overextending. So tell me about like when you guys overextend like that, what's happening? I think that round was like just miscommunication. Uh, Shin said he was gonna go wide for me, like, and I expected him to go like really wide and just yeah. bait for me because I, I had a rifle and he had a pistol and he didn't go as wide as I expected him to, so I went like really wide and just kind of griefed, and it was uh, devastating in my opinion. But I think like a lot of setups, if you see other teams like doing like one, one, three, or one, three, one, like with yep. one person on the site and then three around like rotational, it's just you, you just float toward the pressure and yep. it depends on like what read you have. Like if you think a team is gonna fake you, maybe you take the space on mid, maybe you go stack A or you go repush A, but you never wanna like just stay in mid and just, Unless you want to like commit to a retake, like you kind of want to just, it's just like a floaty play style. Like, uh, I don't know how to explain it. I, I, I would say most teams are doing it. I got to also <laughs> add because uh, we heard from Magnum Zaysh uh, coming into this uh, split, even though you guys were winning everything in EMEA, uh, you guys also, despite losing, looked great in Madrid. He said, we felt like we still had to innovate because people have seen everything that we have. We still yeah. have to change comms, change strats and so on. How difficult is it to kind of dig that deep and still have more comps and more strats and more setups and more executes and so on? I think there is something that we have in the team is that we have a lot of creative people. It's like Eng and Magnum, most of the things they are doing it. And like about Macro, I'm more like doing specific things. Uh, narrate also like sometimes bring ideas and I think when you have a lot of people thinking and not just like you're a head coach you can bring a lot of ideas sometimes it can be bad but someone will do a comment on it and he will say yeah maybe we can just change this little thing and it will be better you know and like I think what we have in this team is like we have only rookies and as I always say it's like white papers and like you can tell them whatever they will try it and then if it's good it's good because sometimes the strategy can be bad but if your team do it well and together and they trust each other and they trust the thing, it will be well, you know? Like, and I don't think that we win a lot of rounds. Like, there is some rounds that we just outsmart the people, but there is also a lot of rounds that we win just because we believe in our game and we believe in the team, you know? And like, you can see it on the server, everyone is like jumping for each other. Everyone is like not caring about stats or like what people write on VR.gg or like some other you things know, like this. Like it's like, I know nothing like about it, that, what do you mean? And it's the, it's the thing, I think, Whatever happens, we just believe in what we do. And like, even though we are like, sorry, if we want the kickoff, like I think it was not expected from a lot of people, mm -hmm. but I just think that it's because we were ahead of the meta. Like, you know, some people's, like we started with our speed comp, we played Euro race. There was not a lot of people doing it. And then now you can see even if Natik is playing it and like a lot of teams in tier two are doing it. And I said, even the Gecko on Sunset, like our retakes, how we played with the smoke on B main on top of the box, and all, a lot of these things like this, I think it helped us to have a momentum on the kickoff. And then we know the people are trying to find us back and like play the way a bit we played in kickoff from what I see. And like we are a bit ahead since we already done all these kind of things and we can renew our, ourselves. So here's a follow up question then. In the pre-show this morning, we were talking about were you guys kind of like in a honeymoon uh, period, <clears throat> yes or no? And we were thinking like, oh yeah, I feel like the honeymoon period is kind of over and now this is like where you, you're really put to the test to see, it was it just like a, a month of just like, oh, you get to beat every hardship and now it's gonna be much harder. Do you guys feel like you were, were in a honeymoon period and now you're out of it or do you mm. feel like you are still in it? So basically for me, I don't believe in honeymoons. For me, like there is performance things and you cannot be at the top every time like it's of course there will be some weeks and like some moments or some tournaments that you will just lose but it's because a performance track it cannot be like this every time like yep. you will be high and then sometime you will drop and you will have to stay a bit here and then like discover new things work on some things that you missed and like why you lost and like a lot of things like this and then you will have to go up again because you worked on why you lost and you worked on a lot of things like this and for me as I said I don't really believe in honeymoon because you can have a peak of performance and it's how you use it like why you lost and you lost this peak like and you work on it and then you can go back to this peak again and even go higher because you worked on this kind of things so this is why like for me there is no honeymoon it's just work and like being able to understand what you're doing wrong or not. I think the depth you've shown so far definitely backs that up. Uh, 
as well. But if we take a look at the standing after week two, things are going to get pretty interesting. It's going to get pretty competitive uh, as well because uh, a lot of the teams that didn't get uh, end up picking up a win uh, last week did manage to pick up a win uh, this week. Noray, you guys are sitting pretty comfortably up there uh, in your group. Uh, I've, I've also seen people say it's very, very competitive right now. Would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty competitive. Like, Liquid look pretty good. They played Navi like extremely close. I think they, if they were a little bit more composed, they should have won. Um, but like, it shows that like, there are a lot of teams in our group, in our group especially, that are really strong. And they're definitely going to be like teams like Vitality and Fnatic if they, you know, catch it back up to their like real form. And Liquid, like, it's going to be a really hard group for us. I think the other group is a little bit weaker, but I still think like footballists. Uh, Navi and Heretics are still really good, so I, I think it, it's really even throughout the board and I think the our group is just kind of harder, I think. Yeah, it's wide open right now, right? For playoffs, it's going to be a, a great race. Uh, you, you've been here before, so you know. Uh, we're about to show you a question asked by somebody else, so I'll let you have a think about your own question as well, because I'm going to ask you that in a second. Deal. We have uh, Epic, the coach of BBL. Check this out, you had a question. Are you ready for the BBL? Are you ready for BBL? Oh yeah, I can't wait to play them. Yeah. I think it's the team that we played the most in scrims. Like, oh. I mean, I, if I can count them, I, I would just say the number, but maybe we played them like since the beginning of the team, 40 or 50 times. Oh, and what's like, the win-loss rate like? I don't know. Honestly, I don't it's know. probably like 50-50. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, it's even against BBL. Does yeah. that surprise you, Josh? It doesn't surprise me. We talked about this earlier yeah. that, you know, off the back of Turkish uh, Valorant, it's just like you either have those big momentum swings and you win every duel, or you take all these duels and you're losing them and then you just lose the game yeah. off the back of it. All right, I hope that gave you enough of time to think about your own question. It will be for uh, a team that's playing next week. I can't remember who's playing second on day one, but feel free to ask anything. Any question okay. down this camera, you have the floor. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. Uh, <laughs> just be creative. It doesn't even have to be about Valorant. You can ask any question. Uh, are you enjoying Berlin? Because me, not. <laughs> I, have this in the I actually think that's a really, really great question. That's great. Uh, Nerea, are you enjoying it? You, are you having a nice time? I mean, we don't have time yes, to enjoy <laughs> Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, Josh, before we sign everything up, you got a last question for Nerea, and uh, you finally got to sit next to a, a North American player that you've been wanting to this whole well, time. Well, I'll re-ask the ranked question, but I guess the, the other question is, um, where do you guys see yourselves kind of like, you you did really well in, in kickoff. Going into this, you've uh, lost to Vitality. Where do you guys feel like you're ranking if you were to power rank yourself? Uh, we, we, be by, we be Vitality. Oh, Vitality. sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I, I in think... scrims. In Magnum said in scrims. Uh, you oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In yeah, scrims. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> uh, but uh, I think, like, like in our group, uh, just, or just, just in general? Just in general for the, the I don't split, think we're yeah. the best team. I think, like, we still have a lot to work on. Yeah. Like, it, it obviously just depends on how we show up in officials, but I'd say, like, we're top 11, I would say. Somewhere there. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a cop-out, but okay, a, okay, we take that team here. 11-team region, 11-team region for a reason. I, I'd say we're at least top six. Ooh. Playoff team. <laughs> nice, that's what we like to hear. Uh, thank you very much, Steel. Thank you, Azesh and Noray for joining thank us. Thank uh, Congratulations us. for this week and uh, good luck for the next one. That's it. that's it from us here. We will be back next week, starting with Fnatic versus Gentlemates. Have a lovely weekend and we'll see you then. <laughs>
enemy remains. Dirty pig. Doesn't need to. Oh, God. But he wants to. Another. Oh, no. <laughs> just hit him up. He can't beat the clock here, surely not. No, he can't. Taking risks, yeah, I always go all in. Swear to God that I'm deaf to the talking. I can't hear it. See the finish line. I know that I'm near it. Yeah, cut the check and I'ma clear it. Ain't nobody out here that I'm fearing. Hey, easy to see things all run away. Used to think it's hard, now I feel just like a layup. I've been in the gym, yeah, I'm trying to get my weight up. That's just the way it goes. That's just the way it goes. The way it goes. That's just the way it goes. That's just the way it goes. That's just the way it goes. The way it goes. That's just the way it goes. That's just the way it goes. That's just the way it goes. The way it goes. That's just the way it goes. That's just the way it goes. That's just the way it goes. The way it goes. That's just the. Hey, you ain't realist. Like you got a few disguises. Walk in the room, I know I'ma be the flyest. She like me, yeah, it's hard for her to hide it. One on one, ain't nobody like this. Got this far by doing me, I'm everything I knew I'd be. I don't care what we used to be, no, yeah. They try and get close to me, you can't get what you want from me. I got this vision you can't see, no. Easy to see things all run away up. Used to think it's hard, now I feel just like a layup. I've been in the gym, yeah, I'm tryna get my weight up. That's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, the way it goes. That's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, the way it goes. That's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, the way it goes. That's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes. One time for your mind, get rockin'. One time for your mind, we 